Friday Nighters. Welcome back to another episode of Just Another Friday Night. It is, in fact, Just Another Friday Night. Uh, I have our title up prematurely, which I normally don't do, but here goes me screwing things up early on, right? Um, guys, if you don't know, I'm CM Chuck of Just Another Friday Night. Across from me is my partner in podcasting crime, Double A, Adam What's Manchin. up, everyone? What's up? And this lady, you know, as my sometimes partner in podcasting crime, <laughs> Untamable Amy. Uh, What's up, y'all? Our guest fill in the the three time uh, mm-hmm. guest, the three time co host, and like two time guest host. So <laughs> I think you've got the records there, sis, for all the uh, the assists. Yeah, Amy's been like what four four episodes? I think it's five. Five, five, yeah. okay, like, okay. Th- like three solos. I know the Game of Thrones. And okay, then, and then yeah, three. And, now, and then okay, this one. So, that's, so this is her second guest appearance. Five, and five three, times. Yeah. And she, I think, is actually distinctly the only other, one other host besides you that's actually like co-hosted with me. Oh, yeah. I've never had yeah. another one person yeah. just besides you that's that's there. But Amy's been, uh, we, we live in the same house, so it helps out when you need to when you need a guest <laughs> host, right? The, the Titans episode was excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, guys, uh, sorry that we are starting so late tonight. Uh, we were getting used to a lot of new things happening. Double A, got a new... Yeah, I got a new job, so uh, it just kind of uh, beat me up a little bit more. I'm doing the physical work again, so uh, for about four years, I was office job, so now I'm getting my ass punished again. <laughs> hey, but it's, it, we told him it's going to lead to double A bulking up, you know what I mean? He's going to get get back the the, uh, the old gun show, whatever, so, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I just uh, kick my ass a little bit, but uh, I'll be ready next week. So. There we go, there we go. <laughs> and then, it's all good, it's all good. Hey, plus, today is October 1st, so yeah. we're starting, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. spooky season late. It's got to be nighttime, guys, for us to talk Halloween and, and spook stuff. it seems stuff like it's been, people. like, it's been darker in the mornings and getting dark again at night so yeah man for sure yeah. for sure rizzo's getting, in the house getting a little cooler too hey what's up rizzo what what's up, up riz man? yeah, yeah we've uh, had some really nice weather lately yeah amy did you get to meet riz rizzo i did we yeah that's right yeah um says what's been going on with you since we last saw you on was it titans i yeah, think titans. titans was the last one um mm-hmm. <clears throat> well the last time that everybody got to see me on air Nothing really, just um, same old, same old. You know, we're just trying to get through every day, and that's pretty much it. Just work, 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 and yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> no, I was just gonna say, you know, um, Venom's out. You know, uh, uh, we're not gonna say anything. You know, no spoilers. Uh, but man, one hell of an ending scene, uh, credit scene. So yeah. <laughs> we will tell people that part that there is one end credit scene only. I stay, we stay till the very, very mm-hmm. end. I don't know if you stayed. No, the very, no, very, no. I you checked read? it out. I you checked re- out. You read? And, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, no, I didn't read anything cause I didn't want to accidentally gl- glance across any potentials. So I just, yeah, um, uh, right. stayed till the very, very end and it was just yeah. a one. Yeah. Venom, let there be carnage, two of Spider-Man's most iconic villains going at it. So. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool, the yeah. symbiotes. So. I liked it a lot. I said that already on the Friday Night Faithful group. I said that I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. We all three saw it. Mm-hmm. So. Not together, but, well, me and Amy were together. But uh, Where, where did you guys see it? At City Base. Oh, Where'd I was there go? too. Oh, okay. What time did you go? Six. 6.40. Oh, okay. So, so you were at the, the show time. right after us. So <laughs> you were, you were yeah, we must have just... Yeah. Um, and it's sense. funny because, you know, uh, my, my nephew, uh, Amy's son, he wanted to see... He was saying that... So we got, like, like the row right before the row like that you walk in the middle mm-hmm. is like where the mm-hmm. handicap seating would be and he goes man i felt like we were kind of close but we were in a smaller theater mm. so we we're like we were ours, close, though. ours was kind of big because we yeah. had the seats on the side See, yeah that's the biggest theaters, theater yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. okay okay yeah so i think if we were in that one we would have been okay in that row that we were in but in the smaller theater we could have even sat at the yeah, top i hate that i hate those yeah, yeah. The, the little one he even asked he goes can i go see what it's like to sit up he goes oh it would have been fine up here and i was like yeah next time i see it's the small theater <laughs> which i noticed when i was looking at the the buying screen i was like oh it looks like less rows or whatever mm-hmm. but, yeah 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 so uh the new what if came out it yeah. looks like it's going to end next week already so that's going to be the end of that nine parter yeah we we'll um, definitely want to wrap that up man, uh, jeffrey wright man huh? oh man he's killing yeah, it man yeah. he's very cool and that episode it was uh, extremely awesome i think a lot of people were down on the prior episode uh, I was, I was, man. I'm not gonna lie. That's, I hate comic, uh, comedic Thor. Yeah, I don't like comedy Thor. Okay, I hate comedy Thor. Okay, so I mean, 
I guess there were a lot of things going on in it that I was kind of like, okay, well, I guess they weren't. Maybe they. Stupid. I, it was just a stupid episode. I wasn't sure where they were going with the angle on the show itself. Like, is it like some are gonna have you know some of the yeah, issues of the sh of the yeah. comic were like kind of like tongue in cheek, like jokey. Yeah, they were very. You know, yeah. so I was like, oh, maybe this is meant to be one of those or whatever. Yeah. I mean, but then it had that ending <clears throat> that was pretty shocking. You know what I mean? Which I so, was too. I was kind of like, oh, what the hell is going on now? And then this new one came, and I was like, wow. yeah. And that's kind of the <laughs> first time they did that, right? Where the yeah. episode. So prior connects kind of to this episode, so that's a pretty interesting... And then they had a surprise voice actor that came out at the very end, so that was pretty cool. So. Yeah, definitely cool. So uh, uh, Rich in the so house. Watch it yet, so hopefully I can. Yeah, man, I just you watched the get in one on episode that. with you, I think, which is the first. The Captain Carter, right? Yeah, the Captain Carter one, yeah, which you, I thought it was pretty good. So the, I would, this, You like the zombie one. I would uh, <laughs> want to watch it, but I'm involved in some other stuff right now, so... Some other well, I like them because they're only like thirty minutes long. So, and what's really yeah. cool is that it's it's the mainly the main voice actors. That's what's from the cool movies, about it too. So it's like you're yeah. watching a Marvel movie, and yeah. the animation is different. I mean, it's like the, the Captain Carter animation. But you yeah. know, they do a very good job on the guys, but they don't do a good job on the women. <laughs> right, right. Sexist. They're not as <laughs> close. Like you can tell it's Tom Hiddleston. You can tell it's Samuel. You can tell it's like. Uh, General Ross, but you can't tell Captain Marvel. You can't tell like I could tell with uh, Carter. I could tell it was her. her yeah, right? but the then it was like I haven't seen like, any of the other women. Scarlett yet, so. Johansson. I was like, man, that doesn't look like Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the way they draw them or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I get it's you. Weird. I get you. They need to draw the women a little bit tighter. Yeah, what's up, Rich? Uh, appreciate Rich, you being here, what's brother. What's going on with Sorry, the coach, man? Oh. What's going on with the coats? Football talk. You're there. talking shit all some season about the Cowboys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Your Colts are zero three. Rizzo oh, asked me about uh, this uh, uh, Sunday night's game. You know, it's the Patriots versus the Buccaneers. So yeah. Tom Brady goes home, right? And he's like, "Who, who are you gonna pick?" And I was like. I mean, it should just be easy that my team, the Patriots, right? But I was like, damn, but I do uh, really love he's Tom gonna Brady. Him up. He's oh, going to yeah. tear the Patriots up. Hey, we talked about this. We, know, we, we <clears throat> pick them as football together, me and Double Oh, and I won. And it's like, yeah. hey, oh, that's right. Congrats. My first time winning this yeah. season. Um, but, um, you know, it's we've talked about it before it's like hey we're trying to win the the picks so yeah. it's like yeah like you know. even me like like rich don't don't take too offense but even like if, if like when tampa play cowboys i pick tampa <laughs> you know because it's like cm said i'm trying to win the fucking pick right. i'm trying to win the money that we have yeah <laughs> that we're putting in so we put a little bit of money on it so you know we got so it. yeah so even i'm like okay the cowboys aren't gonna win on this one so sorry i love you guys i'm rooting for you guys but <laughs> Shit! If it doesn't happen, it's not gonna happen. So, <laughs> hey, you gotta go. You gotta make the smart investment. You know, I mean, if you were in Vegas, you would bet on the the winning bet. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure. Uh, oh, I thought you were gonna say the Raiders. Let's see. Uh, Rich says, <laughs> oh, wow. "Dude, so sad with the Colts." Uh, yeah, man, tough. Uh, Ray, Ray, in the Ray, house, Ray in the house. He's talking trash. He says, uh, "F bomb." He said, "Fuck the Patriots," pretty much. So. Uh, whatever, Ray. Hey, Rich, man, you know, Carson Wentz, I, I think that was just a bad pick on man. Uh, you know, two sprained angles already and all his injuries. I'm like, golly, you know, so. Um, oh, and he says, uh, congrats. Rich says, man, it's bad as double A. Temple will destroy Patriots. Yeah, yeah, they will. Yeah, I think I currently in my picks, I have it set as the Patriots, but you never know what could happen. Late changes may, may have to come in and, and see, uh, see what happens. Uh, yeah, Ray, good, glad that you're here, man. Love you too. Glad to see you last week. Uh, and then Rich says, I have to agree with that for sure. Uh, what else happened in the world of uh, pop culture this week, guys? Anything that you guys saw or that came out that may have been interesting that well, you want to talk uh, about? You guys have been watching Star Wars Visions, right? How, how's that uh, been? I, I watched it all already. Yeah, I, I finished it. How many? What, what is it? How many? I, I, I think mean? it's 13 episodes, okay. but they're all know. different lengths. So they're like nine know. minutes, 10 minutes. Some are 13. Mm -hmm. I think 13 might be the longest. Holy shit, really? Yeah. 13. Yeah. Okay. So okay. the thing is, is that it's all supposed to be like Japanese uh, yeah. Yeah. animation uh, writers and directors, and it. And from what I watched, there was no characters that we know. It's no. all all new Which people. Which I'm, I'm happy with. I'm good yeah. with that. Yeah. Some of them were pretty cartoony, but then they kind of like, oh, it's that type of Japanese style animation. And some of them were just extremely awesome looking. Like okay. if you were a fan of the Animatrix and you watched that, yeah. or really any anime, I know you're like a Gundam Dragon Ball fan, Double well, A. Well, some of them, like one of them I'm like really excited about is the Cowboy Bebop live action show. Mm -hmm. That one's like, like me and my son are going to be watching that shit. Yeah, right. Uh, I know Juan yeah. was excited about that one too. Yeah, I mean, man, the characters, some of the characters they busted out on that trailer, I was like, oh my goodness. I'm surprised they got that that John Cho to be the Me main too, guy. Me too, because, man, I didn't, realize, I didn't realize how fucking old he was. I was yeah. just watching him in Star Trek, and I was like, 
Damn, that movie's like 12 years old already. Not even that, but he came out in American Pie, which is That's 99. Right. That's 99. That's when I was 17, yeah. six, six, uh, six, 17. <clears throat> Uh, Damn, gonna be 18 exactly, <laughs> and he was that. like an older guy in that movie. I know so, that's why I'm like, fuck. And it's wow. funny because I thought he was getting cast as older guys already because he played that dad in that one. Remember that one horror where it was all like online, that's and it right. was the daughter got kidnapped. Was, what, and, what was it? It was like The Grudge. No, it was no? called something else. Okay, because uh, I, I could have sworn he did like a remake. He where might the, have been where in. it was like a female main character. In this one, what I remember seeing is I was like, oh, wow, they're casting him like as a dad already. And it was like his daughter would get online and then like she goes missing. So he's okay. trying to find her. Okay. But it's kind of like you're seeing it all like this perspective. Like you're seeing the What is it all? The comment. Com? Something like that. <laughs> Something like, I forget what it was called. But somebody out here get, get correct oh. me about it. Rich says, are any of y'all going to watch the Sopranos movie? Uh, yeah, actually, I was spending a little bit of time this week. The Many week. Saints, right? Yeah, The Many Saints of Newark. It came out last night. Um, I am going to watch it, Rich, but I was, I'm waiting because I was watching my way through. They had released a list. You know, they released this list, like, what five episodes yeah. of Sopranos should you watch before watching it? So it was just five episodes. Well, they were showing, like, a whole marathon all this week. Yeah. Well, I've been using HBO Max, so you can stream. I stream okay. specifically yeah. those five ones, and I, <laughs> and I, I just got through the last one, which is the last episode of The Sopranos, so I'm, like, at the end of that as soon as it's over i'm going to watch it so those episodes will be fresh in my mind which is cool because i i realized the episodes they picked as i watched through them they do a lot of they talk it's the ones where tony talks about the past and mm. he flashes back a lot so it'll be neat to kind of see that kind of see, I started that one together. when you were when you had finished watching it, i started watching this panel i didn't get to finish it though so. yeah you do a, a lot of stopping and starting i have a lot of unfinished so. unfinished business it's hard it's hard to do that i mean they're one hour episodes it's like how many episodes can you watch in it's a, not yeah. fair because he yeah, gets to watch at work and... hbo hbo I know. <laughs> i'm like man what kind of I don't, we don't yeah. get to do that. We're HBO, that, so. uh, those shows are like a full hour. Oh, uh, Rich came out. He says the movie you're talking about, TM, is called Searching. That's oh, what the okay. Called. Got you. Yeah, good um, call. Good call there, Rich. Appreciate that. And then Rich says he's already seen it. He says it's really good. Uh, it's okay. a must watch. Okay, awesome. I'm going to check it out, man, for sure. I want to see that. I definitely want to see young Gandolfini man, playing his dad's role. that dude is like spot on. Like yeah. Like James Gandolfini. The look, right? Yeah. The look. And I, well, and I read a... been getting rave reviews, too. So. Yeah. I read a quote, too, that said he would love to play you know, Tony some more. Right. So that's pretty neat. You know that James Gandolfini died. And then, mm -hmm. you know, the when they were on the trip. Yeah. yeah, when yeah. they were taking a vacation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he, I think he's the one that found him, actually. Yeah. His yeah. son. So how, how tragic. Uh, Ray coming up with some big news. He said he's going to the Comic-Con next week. The yeah, Big, big Texas, Texas Comic-Con. Comic really with his daughter Hello. for her birthday. Yeah, he asked me about going. I really want to take I, him. I'm going to go. We're, we're gonna, I'm going to taking Sabrina to meet Doug Jones. I, that's who I want to go meet. Let me know. We should do that all together. Ray, get with us, man. Any of the Friday Nighters want to be at Big Texas Comic-Con. She loves Hocus Pocus. I told her he plays a zombie mm -hmm. in Hocus Pocus. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, she's like, yeah, because I took her to, remember I told you. I think I, I took love her all to, the characters that he's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the surfer is my favorite character. Yeah. The way he, he, he does the body language alone well, I love without H. Lawrence Egan. Fisher's voice but yeah mm -hmm. he makes Lawrence Fishburne the movement you know the movements and, and it's kind of like his face too it like is. That we're kind of seeing like, it. it's like like man you that. know if, if yeah I know Fantastic Four 2 gets a lot of shit but you know that part where like Invisible Woman sneaks in mm -hmm. and he's talking about Galactus man that part is so fucking oh funny. that's a great part yeah. that part you I know, know reminds me of somebody voice. oh it's, it's Lawrence Fishburne that does okay. the voice. Well, now that I'm thinking of it, it yeah. does sound like Lawrence Fisher. But I mean, he, you know, he's that creature really from Pan's too, Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. You know, he's right. the, the pale man. Uh, and, uh, he's Abe Sapien, which is my favorite character. Yeah, that probably. too. Uh, um, Shape of Water. He's Shape of Water. Creature. He's the creature. So he kind of plays the kind of creature from the Black Lagoon in two different ways. And you know what? He's in what I love uh, currently. And I started watching this show on uh, on on Double A's Hulu or whatever. But what we do in the shadows. Uh, <laughs> and it's kind of funny because I wasn't sold on it until about. Maybe episode six. Which is it, funny because I've seen it before you a yeah. long time ago when it first came out and I thought it was... The show or the movie? Uh, I think it was the movie. Okay, so I watched the movie, which is also really funny with Taika Waititi. Uh, and That's it's hilarious. Funny. Yeah, it, the, it, that one, the vampires are in New Zealand. It's it's if, super hilarious. If you guys haven't seen Free Guy, man, that dude is fucking hilarious in Free Guy. He he is <laughs> truly become one of my favorites. And again, if you, if you haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, watch Taika Waititi and Jojo Rabbit as Hitler. And it's almost, he's a pretty hilarious oh Hitler as well. But uh, yeah, so the What We Do in the Shadows, one of the Friday Nighters, but on the Now Watch This group, uh, Jessica. Uh, um, my friend Jessica I used to work with she suggested that uh, movie and show to me started watching the show I actually got uh, uh, 
Je uh, Jess, Friday Nighter Jess, my girlfriend Jess, her uh, brother and his wife, they started watching it based oh, on my nice. suggestion, the, nice. the show, the What We Do in the Shadows. Well, I think in about episode six, Doug Jones comes out as the Baron, oh, and nice. he is fucking hilarious. Nice. Like, like he totally slayed that role. If, if I get the chance to meet him next weekend, I'm definitely going to be like, dude, I love you and everything, but the, What We Do in the Shadows recent stuff is super hilarious. Yeah, so I'm taking my daughter, too, to meet him. So I, I, told her, I took her to meet the co-creator of Howard the Duck, so she was like, nice. all like awesome. in love, so... So Did she's gonna be autograph? exciting. Yeah, on the, on her movie. Oh, on cool. the Howard the Duck movie. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. She she loves Howard the Duck the movie. She loves it. Yeah, so. that's what I, uh, I know. A lot uh, of people yeah, talk shit about it, but uh, I love that movie. Oh, yeah, I love that movie too. But she loves it. She loves Howard. She loves the song. Yeah, that's a great one. A really <laughs> yeah, great one. So. What else we got in there, Double? Uh, Rizzo says I need to watch that show. I guess it's uh. Oh, what we do in the shadows. Yeah, yeah. And, and also if you got Hulu, man. I can't really recommend it enough. But uh, Only Murders in the Building. That is a fucking funny show. Steve Martin, it's Martin Short, and oh, Selena Gomez. Oh, that's the one that we, we've seen. Or I sent you the TikTok, I think. Uh, yeah, that and that's what uh, Double A was saying. We should watch with you. And, uh, and, it, and it's only 30-minute episodes. It's like yeah. uh, they I come out every like Tuesday. One, yeah, I mean, it's Martin Short, yeah. it's Steve Martin, you know. And Selena Gomez is really good in that show. Is she? Show. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Like it's, it's hard for me to sometimes think of her like as, like, you know, I she's know. like a grown woman now. You know what I mean? So <laughs> well, not like, just that, know, but it looks funny because, like, she's playing, you know, like, with these dudes. Like, yeah. They're actually older. Yeah, and they're like friends, friends, like, in the show. <laughs> like she likes hanging out with these guys you know it's fucking funny pretty awesome man yeah hulu i gotta say man they've been killing it yeah, or whatever man. i was like because i hadn't got it for i forgot what reason i think it was for why mm -hmm. why the last man uh and then i forgot it's like it's an abc streaming right. so it's got like so many abc shows uh old and new and they got a lot of pretty interesting like streaming only yeah. shows that are coming on like the handmaiden's tales on there mm -hmm. uh i've heard that good one got things. nominated for a lot yeah, of i've heard good things about yeah. it. i've never seen it but i mean i've heard good things about mm -hmm. it so, so cm chuck's been giving me shit because i started watching the crown oh the crown well, uh, i yeah. give her shit because no, i remember you told me that last <laughs> yeah time. she yeah. doesn't finish <laughs> stuff that like like we just said I'm not i can't ask I'm you horrible you know i unfinished we bring you back <laughs> on the show and people are like oh she's gonna talk more titans and tell us where she's we're at. not doing a titan show today today though no so. but this is like recap time in the beginning <laughs> part i'll be like oh are you done yet and you're like no i can't and i'm uh, like oh sopranos no, i haven't seen this i'm show. a busy woman <laughs> rich came in and he says i need a new show to watch rich here's a shitload of shows to watch yeah, on hulu if, right now if you do hulu rich like we said why the last man what we do in the shadows the crown uh <laughs> that is that on who is it uh, i thought no, it was on netflix no, no it's actually netflix. netflix yeah uh my girlfriend's watching bridgerton i do not suggest it because from what i've seen i was like wow snooze fest uh wow. but uh never gives anything a chance that oh, we man. suggest now watch this uh host lucky suggested reservation dogs on hulu also i oh, really love right. that are good. you are you keeping up with why are you caught up the, the, what, the what why the oh why? i missed the last two episodes but i will watch it you should watch that i started I I one, the first episode the first one me, okay but i was at work so i couldn't oh and this one's for you cm rich said that he finished watching uh superman and lewis, lewis. oh uh, yeah it was a good show he really liked yeah. it it's uh it's on hbo max right now right uh rich i believe yeah i'm really glad that you like that man and i would suggest that to both of you as well i know how you feel about it double a but <laughs> Uh, I would well, love to. Well, I know that's the reason why you want to go as celebrity fan for this. Yeah, it really was to meet him, him and her together, and I would have bought photo op and yeah. autograph from yeah. him because it was a decent price for both. I remember uh, you said that. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Rizzo says, "Did you say Sleaze Fest? <laughs> celebrity Fan Fest, dude? I want to go to uh, no Riz. Snooze Fest on what Jessica's watching. Yeah, uh, oh, Snooze Fest, oh. Snooze <laughs> Fest. No, uh, man, we Richard should start Jim. our own con though, Riz, called Sleaze Fest." <laughs> Uh, we can get a couple of uh, real scumbags we know to come out and be on. Oh, oh my God. Geez. <laughs> I just mean, uh, you know, Sleaze Fest sounds like it'd be awesome. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, his Snooze Fest. I, I, she was watching Bridgerton and I was like, what the fuck? I don't know. Yeah, and then uh, today, uh, our good cousin, family member, uh, I know he listens to the show, Alex. He just had his new oh, baby. Yeah. So congratulations, congratulations, congratulations Alex. Alex. You know, I think that calls for a drink. What do y'all yeah. think? Yeah, yeah. So. You know, beautiful oh, baby. Alex? It looks just like him. Well, the baby looks just like Alex. Yeah, so. super cute, man. Yeah, so. Super cute. Always, so always. Congrats, awesome. Alex. A Another new member. Friday night. Yeah, a, new a new member, member in the, the family. Friday night faithful. So. One of these? Or this. For you? I don't care. I got some Stella Artois in there as well. Oh. If you prefer. Yeah, I'll take that one. There you go. Give me a Stella, sis. Oh, uh, that's for me, then. And, and grandmother, Stella. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 
So, uh, guys, if you're having a cold one tonight, uh, take one down, pass it around. These are twisties, actually. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was I was hanging with your brother the other day, Double A, and he says even if they are twisties, he uses the bottle opener anyway. Oh, okay. I have a really he says cool he doesn't want to cut his out. hand. You know. Oh, nice. Uh, cozy here that we nice. went uh, went to see them, and they had a really good show, and we waited a very long time for, it, and it was so fucking worth. Yeah, it. over a year, waited over a year to see them. Speaking of the, the dead. Um, I saw on Sci-Fi that uh, there's a new Day of the Dead series coming out this month on Sci-Fi. Really? Yeah, based on the George Romero stuff. So. Okay, so we're getting more zombies. Yeah, but it's Sci-Fi, so I'm not really like holding my breath on that one. So, <laughs> all right. Um, oh, Rizzo says, "Ooh, I need a Stella." There you go. There you go. Rizzo, get yourself one. Uh, and Rich and Rizzo said, "Congratulations to you, Alex. I know you will be listening later." So, yeah, congrats, Alex. Just you. Oh man, guys! I want to say Ooh. something real quick. Uh, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I got some feedback from one of the Friday Nighters who said, uh, "Man, I was listening to our episode that we did um, on uh, what if, and the, in the beginning of that episode, we ah. do a really visual heavy segment where uh, Mario Delgado guys of our Authority Comics lend us these items. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were showing them off, and I don't know. I probably didn't do a great job of describing them, but I wanted this is for any of our audio listeners that are hearing us only on audio, whether you're in a truck, maybe you're like Alex, you listen while you're driving. If you ever want to see any of those visuals, go to youtube.com, search just another Friday night. We're there. We put every show uh out out on and YouTube. It's always well. in the beginning, always. Yeah. And we the always visual try to heavy stuff. do that in the beginning. Um and if not, I try to do my best to describe it. But if you want to say, man, I really want to see what he was talking about, go check it out. I, I do this all the time. I listen to audio podcasts too at work. Um, mainly is what I'm listening to is just audio stuff. But I know certain guys like Joe Rogan, Kevin Smith, they have a visual portion as well. So when they're saying something or when the you know, a lot of times Joe Rogan is like, bring that up on the monitor to be some like crazy mm. knockout or whatever. I'm like, oh man, I want to go see that. So I'll go just look up the visual version of the show so that I can see that, yeah. that portion. So that is there for anyone that wants to see any of the visual heavy stuff we talk about. Sometimes we show comic book covers or, you know, book covers. We may do that tonight, uh, show some things. And so, but please go check us out on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the little bell so you get notifications. We release one video a week, which is the video that we do well right now. Uh, it's there on Facebook Live, but it doesn't live forever on Facebook Live. Eventually, Facebook throws your videos off, but Walkers. they do live on oh. YouTube. So, yeah, you can see, you guys can go way back to our catalog from when we were like doing just pre shows and there was no full show. Uh, it was like a 30 minute pre show we would do. Um, that's when he was there. Just a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, way back when we weren't doing the whole thing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so. Um, I'll ask you guys about something. So kind of some big news that dropped, and I'd love to hear what the Friday Nighters out there think about it, is uh, the Super Bowl halftime got announced, right? Oh, yeah. And it's kind of going to yeah. be like a classic hip-hop, like Dr. Dre. I think they said Snoop. Uh, do you know who uh, else was It was there? Eminem. Eminem. Uh, it was Dr. Dre. It was Snoop. It was Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Blige, yeah. And someone's named um, something Rock. Um, um, like R-O-C. Um, Oh, that might have just be like that's like some of the Jay Z stuff, maybe. He's got, I don't know. No, he wasn't there. No, he wasn't that. there. I don't remember who the full. It's a hip hop uh, heavy halftime. Yeah, a hip hop so. heavy heavy one. Yeah, well, so it'll be good. Oh, Rich says Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick oh, Lamar. Oh, that's a that's a big one. Yeah, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. They uh, had what's his name last year? Um, the uh, weekend. The weekend. Yeah, yeah. And what's he was you think about that I, I like that one. I thought it was fine or whatever. That it was you know, that's what weird, you got to you know? be now. Right. It's got to be like a show now. Yes. Yeah. Super Bowl. I mean. I feel like every year it gets complaints. I loved the J Lo Shakira every one. Every year it gets complaints. <laughs> yeah, every fucking I know, year. I know. J Lo is too old to shake her ass. No, definitely Shakira not. Shakira was shaking her ass mm -mm. too much. No, definitely and, not enough. And Rolling Stones were too was old. Was that women complaining? Yeah. Everybody. Think any you know, I think the only one that University was like love was like the Prince one. The Prince, and which, I think because you know, he died, and now they look right, back on they, it. Yeah, you can't like, really say. Oh, it was Prince, and it was raining while he was doing Purple Rain. Yeah, it was beautiful. I mean. My my wife loves him, and she actually and watch it. she actually got me into Prince. So someone's I mean, always gonna have something to say. Yeah, about it's always so. someone. ACDC was too old, and blah blah blah. I for one think it's a bold choice by the NFL, and I'm excited for it. You know what I mean? Gonna, like, I mean, they're yeah. gonna keep it clean. You know? Oh I mean, yeah. They're paying them too much. Oh know? yeah, yeah. And, man, but what a what a show! I mean, especially if you get Dr. Dre, Eminem, and Snoop Dogg on the stage for sure. I mean, because you know that whole NWA rumor was going around for a long time yeah. that uh, Eminem was gonna. 
replace fill in uh, for Eze. Or, yeah, he was going to fill in for yeah. Eze. Can you imagine? How Can you that imagine how been? that lineup would have been? So that was. Yeah, Joe's in the house. What's up, Joe? Uh, no game tonight, Joe. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not up on the schedule, but let us know. Rizzo says J Lo and Shakira were amazing. <laughs> See, and Rich Agreed. says uh, I think it's going to be a good. Uh, I think it's going to be good. Finally, a good classic rap show. I think so, too. Very awesome. Yeah, I think exactly the same thing, Rich. I'm looking forward to it. In fact, I needed to post that article on the Friday Night Faithful. I haven't done it yet. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it'll be cool. I mean, Eminem's obviously going to be probably the one that gets the the most. He's been doing really good, I think. Like, yeah. 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 I heard he just did a pop-up uh, restaurant, I mm. think, in Detroit called... Something about spaghetti. Mom's like, spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti. Yeah. yeah. And he was serving the first few that came well, in. Well, I think he did a, a song or two in the new Carnage, the Venom movie. Oh, very cool. At the end, yeah. I think awesome. That was him. Joe, what are you... You guys are going live, too, on Fridays? Oh, oh all right. All right. All right. Head to head. All right. Let's see. Yeah. We'll fight for the ratings. Um, <laughs> yeah, Joe. I don't want to hurt me. I mean, I could, we could just start trash talking, but Man, I'm not going to do it. You're stabbing me it. in the heart, Joe. Joe's not a fan of our show anymore. He's a, only a fan of the Now Watch This. Hey, now, he's a, now he's a fucking podcaster. So he's like, yeah. fuck you guys. Wow. Uh, how the mighty have uh, got mightier, I guess. I don't know. Damn, Joe. Uh, I will say this, Joe. I did see that Jerry D just guested on a new 80s podcast, and they're talking all about the Monster Squad. So it sounds Ooh. like you've got another competition to worry about. You might not want to focus too much and on Joe just says, the Friday night. Starting the Friday night wars. All of WCW, WWE. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Joe says he's actually wearing his uh, our shirt tonight. Aww. All right, how to oh, go, there Joe? You go. So, so double A. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, well, you know, if we never know when double A might descend from the rafters at Lucky's house Damn. with a bat and sting makeup, Damn. crow makeup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. By the way, Joe said he loves Greece but does not like the crow. Whoa. Well, I, I like Greece I like too. But God, that's why we have two different audiences. I feel Joe. like Beetlejuice when he's like, You guys oh, got your peeps. Sandworms. We've got our peeps. Right? <laughs> that's what right? I feel like right now. Rich says, Do you think they'll bring out a guest like Ice Cube? For the oh, they, I heard that they outside. didn't announce him. That would be like a, that would be like a maybe a surprise. Can you imagine that? Oh, I don't man. know why on earth. That guy's a huge football fan, Ice Cube. Especially with why the Why would you say no? Why it, it's going to be at uh, Las Vegas or Super Bowl? No, no, no. But you know how Ice Cube was like huge. Oh, LA right. Raider yeah, fan, yeah. He kind of know? popularized like that. He did. All cap. He the boys in the hood and all yeah. that. So where is Super Bowl? Does anybody know? Where's it going to be this year? I, I, I hate paying attention. To it. I don't know. Uh, Rizzo says, dude, when the Red Hot Chili Peppers did theirs, they weren't even plugged in. That's <laughs> wow. so lame. I don't even remember. Usually, I don't really ha watch the halftime show. I usually go out and drink. And <laughs> I don't have and, a lot of And then I'm like, you, like, I always tell my wife or all the females that are still waiting in there, I'm like, tell me when the football is back on. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the Chili Peppers, so it's hard for me to just shit on them. So, and know. we saw but a really good Rizzo show. Rizzo says so. that they weren't even plugged in, though. Wow. So that's kind of... There's a great Sarah Silverman bit where she's like, they were telling her like one day, like, plug it in. And she's like, yeah, rock on, right? And she's like, no, no, plug it in. Your guitar's not plugged in. And she's like, oh, like, okay. <laughs> Joe says, I do love Greece. And Joe loves that you said sandworms. <laughs> Hate them, right? I do too. Mm -hmm. uh, man, Rich, Rich says he's wrong. not a fan of the crow either. Damn, Rich. What? Yeah. Rich, you know about the crow? Y'all are breaking my heart. Yeah, I know. I have a big ass poster I know. I was right looking there. At earlier, I was like, man, I want that one. They might have room. those two paintings. It's a ghost story. It's a Halloween. We did it's it last Halloween story. Story. at the end of our, at the end of of our Halloween Devil's run night. last week, you know that's why I'm uh, glad. It's like one of my favorite movies. Uh, he goes, uh, "We all know who won't be at the Super Bowl. Damn. Cowboys. There it is. Damn, Rich. Man, you guys are breaking my heart tonight. <laughs> oh, I thought that was directed at Joe. And, and then Rich goes, and yes, the Colts won't be there either. <laughs> uh Probably my Patriots not either. You know what I mean? Oh but fuck no. I get to watch, maybe <laughs> I get to watch no. Tom Brady again. This is like, who is in the Super Bowl? This, this is, we, is like we don't know yet. But this right is now. like when Jordan left the Bulls after you know the, all those championships, and it was kind of like. Yeah. Well, I don't know if Mac Jones is the Derrick Rose of the Patriots yet, but I'm oh, just like, uh, Riz says uh, it wasn't their choice since the wardrobe malfunction. They are controlling everything. That's right. The That's Timberlake true. and uh, yeah, Janet. the boob, the boob that that uh, that, that, that uh, undid it all. Yeah. The boob heard round the world. Well, yeah, for real, seriously. Way to go, Janet. <laughs> Either way, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be oh, a yeah. great show. Yeah. I'm gonna and I'm really hoping they make that uh, Super Bowl Monday a holiday. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. I know they awesome. keep talking about it, but damn it, it's like it's pretty obvious that that many people watching the Super Bowl. That would be the absolute. You know, best. you're you're only drinking. You know, come on now. You know, it's going to be on a Monday. No, but, Sunday, everyone, but everybody, oh, always wants, everybody like, always wants like everybody always wants Monday off the Monday off the next day because I mean everyone's having a good Isn't time. Isn't it crazy that everybody wants to get hammered for Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I, I, that's why I was saying uh, 
Friday Night Boy, I was like, that's like the one sport where it doesn't matter who's in the last mm-hmm. game. Everybody watches. It's crazy. Yeah. I always tell Jess, if my team's not in there, we can go because I'm not under the stress of watching my I'm team. We can that, go to a party. Just, <laughs> you know, in baseball, it's like the Yankees have to be in there. And, mm-hmm. and you know, basketball is kind of like, eh, whatever. It's not my team. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. click. You that's know, why it's Super still Bowl, exciting. It's like, man, everyone's got to come. You know? And the, and the, the thing heck? there with football, too, yeah. is that, like, injuries can happen every single week. So it's like yeah. you don't know who's yeah. going to be at the top <laughs> by the end. Uh, but, guys, we're approaching quickly the first 30-minute mark of this. Uh, and that will do a little quick pause for the cause, as they say. And then we'll come back and we'll begin talking about our show's topic for the night. Uh, we're going to read some comments during the break, and then we'll be right back. Man, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Keep uh, it. And uh, you guys know we don't have a commercial anymore because they took our commercial they took away. took our fucking ad off, makes man. Makes us sad. I did work really hard on that little ad. Yeah, he did. Uh, we, we tried, like, I don't know how many takes if I didn't get that one right. Yeah, a lot of takes. <laughs> I do a lot of takes. So. <laughs> he was like, nope, nope, I fucked that one up. You're right. now. Mm-hmm. He was like, nope, nope, it wasn't right. But uh, maybe we'll get it back if we get some more ratings, guys. We did a little bit of a ratings dip, but, you know, it's really weird because I think just, like, but life it's is coming back around. YouTube is kind of, like, up. Mm -hmm. a lot for us and our listenership on the anchor app is kind of down i don't know maybe people are watching the visual heavy stuff maybe so maybe so because like i said our twilight zone episode far outweighs our listens right on youtube what about what about our audio version of party like it's 1999 and that's weird too we got like almost like 700 listens on that episode. So we may weird. just do a bunch of 1989. It's going become a 1989 And it's not podcast. even about Prince. I love the 80s. Yeah. So. It's not even about Prince. It's about the year of movies in 1999. So. Jason in the house. What's up, Jason? He says, sorry, you're late. No worries. You're brother. never you're, late. You're never it's late. Friday you, night. You know what? When you when you get here, Jason, you're right on time. Yeah. Uh, just like uh, Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Hey. All right. <laughs> Guys, if oh, you... Hey, speaking of that real quick. So, mm-hmm. you know how Applebee's has that fucking commercial with that song? How does it sound good? Uh, oh, it's like a country baby. song. Oh, yeah. That's Chili's, you goof. <laughs> well, I didn't know, but like, there's I like a like song in that too. some country dude made for his love of Applebee's because apparently when he was poor, that was like a big thing when they would go. So I didn't know there is like, because I watch Forensic Files and I guess, you know, it, it comes out a lot. <laughs> so this song comes out and it's like an Applebee's, just all Applebee's. Well, this song is like a real song. And okay. it's like moving up on the charts and I saw an article about it. And I was like, hell? what the fuck? And it's just like all about Applebee's. I was like, wow. You see how we've been in the wrong game, double A? We need yeah, to write a song about Apparently he made like a TikTok. And so that blew up. And so you have like all these people like dancing to this Applebee's song. So, you know, I was like, wow. wow. Uh, and then I heard it on the radio this week at work like about four or five times. I was like, no shit. It's a real fucking song. I was okay, like, okay, I wow. gotta hear this. The it's Applebee's all song. about Applebee's. Has anybody, have any of the Friday Nighters heard this song? Do you know what Double A is talking about? Because I think me and Friday Nighter Amy are like, I know. I was what? gonna Google it. I have not oh, heard that. Rich I'm says, just, I'm it's a country song by Walker Hayes. Walker Hayes. I don't even listen Walker, to Walker, Texas of... Ranger? No. <laughs> Jared? See? Jared Padalecki? Oh, Jared. Yeah, Jared. I know his mom. Uh, she talked about oh, And look at Jason coming in. How about them cowgirls? Damn. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm it's not... you Wait, didn't y'all win last week? Yes, we did. <laughs> Why are they giving you hell? Like, wow. I was like, y'all won. I was... And we've been, I mean, the Cowboys have well, actually. We, we lost. The Cowboys have actually playing, have been playing really well. Yeah. I mean, they went toe to toe with Tampa for as long as they could. And we, we like they beat you guys. the shit it's, out of the Eagles, just, which yeah. I love. I yeah. fucking hate the Eagles. Fuck I always Eagles. pick against. The Cowboys, because because <sighs> when I pick them, they fuck me over and they lose. So it actually benefits you, Double A, for me not to pick y'all. Because, I know, it really does when you and Albert yeah. uh, refuse to pick the Cowboys on games that you should know that they're going to win. When I so. know they're going to win, though, I pick them and they lose. Huh. It's like when a guarantee. Goes, I'm you got like, it? I got it. I think I got yeah, it. Play, play real quick so you guys can hear it. We don't want to get banned, guys, from the on-air a little bit here, but we're here like, we hear give it like less than six <sighs> seconds. We don't own rights to it. We just want to hear it. We do not own the rights to it. it Catchy, but I was like, wow. Right. Kind of dig it. I have heard it before. Okay, it sounds kind of familiar. Don't play too much because Facebook will kick you off. And that's kind yeah. of like the tone that it has. It's just kind of that, that whole it's tone. Pretty, it's a pretty good beat. It's kind of twangy. I it like is. That. No, it is. It is. So. Uh, I think I have heard it before, but I don't know if I've ever... Oh, heard Rich! The commercial. Rich is asking you, how's the fantasy going? Uh, fantasy is not going well, oh, Rich. Uh, I had got my ass kicked again last <clears> week <throat> in two leagues. I'm only playing in two, and it's been rough because I have been, I have not. 
the guys on my bench have been blowing up and uh, they're on the bench, so it doesn't do me any good. And then guys <laughs> have been underproducing. I even have I have Alvin Kamara in one uh, uh, in one league, and he underproduced for me one week with like five points, and he was expected to do twenty. So when I have that, but I have Brady in both leagues, and he's been doing his job, which is Tom Brady for you. So that's been great, but. <laughs> Otherwise, Rich, uh, Rich says it's a good song. Oh, it's Rich, good for dancing. Rich, you a country western dancer. I like country too, music too. For a long time, back really? in yeah, back I don't like think in, I knew that. Well, mm-hmm. it's funny because like back in like oh seven oh eight, I used to go with this old white guy. I always used to deliver windows, and he just mm-hmm. had the country station on all the time. So like, uh, McGraw became one of my favorites. Billy Currington was one of my favorites. I love Tim McGraw. Uh, it, shit, even Taylor Swift when she was country, you know, all mm-hmm. her songs mm-hmm. and all that shit. So I like Taylor Swift stuff. I was listening to yeah. country. Yeah, well, before she went pop. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, when she was all she country went, and she, she had, had one or two pop ones I liked too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I liked, I liked some of her songs. Well, you're not alone. I mean, you're not alone. I mean, <laughs> she, she's the yeah. biggest fucking oh, yeah. artist out there. Yeah. yeah. No, I, uh, a tall drink too. I just saw a video. She's tall. Yeah, she is. She's really she tall. looks tall. <laughs> Might just be heels. I don't know how tall she no, is. Somebody she's... get me Taylor Swift's height. I saw this video <laughs> recently where I there was no audio, or at least I couldn't hear the audio. But like, she walks by this little boy. She's walking into a thing or whatever, and I guess somebody says something because you see her kind of turn around real quick, and she turns around. She sees a little boy, and he actually like walks out on the red carpet. She signs this thing or whatever. Mm. I thought it was pretty. And then he walks away real quick. Like he doesn't like ask for more, like a picture or try right. to hug her or something like that. Like I would have done that, but, uh, I thought that was pretty cool of her to be kind of like, Oh, what you're somebody just like, oh I got something. <laughs> yeah. But that's pretty neat for her to like have already walked by. And I guess maybe somebody said, I'm imagining one of the paparazzi is like, Oh, you can ignore that kid. And she probably was like, what kid? And then was like, Oh shit, let me yeah. sign that for him, which is pretty cool. Uh, Rich says that sucks. Yeah. I think this year, a lot of players that we didn't expect to do good are blowing up. You can never tell, man. Let me tell you. Like I said, I have like uh, uh, James White from uh, the Patriots. Is like he like had like a huge week. I had him on my bench, and I was like, and then the next week he's like hurt. So it's like you know, just you always have to kind of just keep watching. And I think you have to play the matchups. So I'm just gonna see. Like the other day, you know who I had? I had I, I picked up off Buffalo was Beasley, your old mm-hmm. guy from the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, I had him in my lineup, and then I was like, last minute, I was like, let me take him out. This guy blows up for twenty points, mm. and I was like, "Why did I sit Beasley? Why did I?" Well, and you know, I'm sure the Aaron Rodgers shit went up like crazy. Oh yeah, I mean now he's you know back doing his thing or whatever. But six touchdowns, no interceptions in the last two games. So so he's silencing them critics, right? Number one, you know, it was nice to see, but don't count him out, right? You know what I mean? So uh, Jason wants to know what's going on this weekend. Jason, this weekend coming up is going to be amazing. You got to take yourself down to the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center, Big well, Texas next Comic Con. Friday, not this Friday. Oh shit, next Friday. Yeah, not today. Not oh. So what is there anything going on this weekend? No, I don't know anything. You know what? I did weekend. see something was going to be at Traders. Tr- the voice of Charlie Brown. <laughs> I think. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, but I thought they were doing corn maze. Or yeah, that's too. Corn that's maze it. would be oh, over yeah. at the, uh, Trader's, at the Village. Trader's Village. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to a really neat thing uh, in Austin, a pumpkin thing. It's called Pumpkin Nights. Oh, like, nice. Like Pumpkin Very Nights nice. Fest. Very so nice. it's basically everything pumpkins, but in every type of different way. And I, I'm assuming they're carved in certain, they have but, certain areas. That are different so they have like a, a, a wonderland one and nice. but everything is pumpkins and it's lit up it's at nighttime and all the pumpkins are lit up so it's gonna be really but awesome. that's gonna be in austin that they have it in austin and okay. houston but we chose to go to the austin one i really wanted to take kello which is my son and i invited uh my brother cm and uh, jessica and then we're actually going to meet up with uh some of my cousins over there that is, so that is but I'll put up pictures. <laughs> but it this weekend, cool. though, is pretty quiet, I believe. Yeah, I think so, yeah, too. Nothing else that I know really going on. No, uh, not the card show, right? That's not for a couple of while. Maybe a couple seances. That was back in September, last weekend. Yeah. Okay. The card show. Oh, okay, so we missed that one. Making yeah. the dead rise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just uh, spooky season is upon us, man. So. Regular um, Saturday night. Shit. One last comment from <laughs> Rich. He says, yes, I do love country music. <laughs> and Jason goes go cowgirls. But damn, good shit, good shit, <laughs> brutal. All right, guys, uh, we want to get into this topic tonight. Uh, we say we're gonna try to keep it tight, but you know, it's it, free it never form. Happened, so it's free form. So we're just gonna we're just gonna <laughs> let it roll. But let's get it going. 
All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. I used to say during that quick break, but there's no break anymore. So, no you just, break, so we just have to break every 30 minutes to allow for the audio sucks. to load. So yeah. uh, during that time, we read comments from you, the Friday Night Faithful, during our Facebook Live show. Remember, if you're ever available or free on a Friday night and you want to join us live and join the conversation. It's fun, man. Well, it's like you guys are here. So. Yeah, come on out. Every, you know, we've got some regulars. They come and hang out. It's like, mm, it's like yeah, going into your, awesome. your local dive bar. You yeah, come, really you hang is. out. Yeah. You know, like I said earlier, it's like the Olive Garden. You hear your family, right? Yeah. So get a beer. And, and come hang out yeah, it's funny because like i've never really met like like i never met rich face to face but yet i feel like i know, know him. him yeah me too you know? same so, thing yeah yeah so yeah. like when i see him pop up I'm like hey man rich is here you know i'm like cool and some people we have met just from doing this show like you know we've met jason we've yeah. met uh yeah. you know uh chris rizzo you mm -hmm. know we've met you know mm -hmm. lucky we've met the door dad we've met yeah, we've had uh the now watch this podcast guys here so. yeah we've met jerry d joe, joe isn't it right? awesome joe, to meet yeah, others that share your likes and yeah it's awesome it really yeah, is, is, for all yeah. this it really is. You know? Trash um, talking with strangers, even yeah. though totally. not strangers anymore. Totally. Yeah. And speaking of Jerry D and his podcast, Totally Rad Christmas, he just dropped an episode recently that was all about 80s wrestling. Uh, and he focused on some Christmas segments they did in the 80s with Roddy Piper. Awesome. Yes. Uh, yes. I am a guest on that episode. If you guys want to go out there and give that a listen. Back uh, when people believed wrestling was real, Christmas thing was like huge for them. It was Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Like the Von mm -hmm. Erics always had something on Christmas Day. So it was kind oh, of like, wow. cool, bring the family. Come I watched the Don Eric kick just, some ass, you know? I so. think I just sent CM check a video of uh, Eddie Guerrero oh. and Batista. He looks so young. Uh, oh yeah yeah there's a big uh piece in the episode that we did in the 80s although you know uh eddie guerrero not famous from that era but you know years later but some of the guys that jerry d had on were younger guys it was a big round table uh great guys all these guys are mainly christmas podcasters which is funny that's weird you know yeah. like uh, I mean, that's awesome that's <laughs> awesome jerry but yeah you know, it's just weird it's, that it's yeah. like you guys can talk of. about that that's these like, guys year long. these guys were so versed in wrestling though more modern not so much 80s they didn't you know they didn't stay on on topic with the 80s but they were very well versed in wrestling period that i thought that most of them were wrestling podcasters i thought jerry got a group of wrestling podcasters which didn't make now that i think about it <laughs> It doesn't make a lot of sense. Jerry does a Christmas podcast. Why would he go get wrestling guys? He went and got Christmas podcasters right. that liked wrestling. Either way, uh, man, there was like a pretty like big consensus of love of Eddie Guerrero uh, in there. And they talked uh, pretty deeply and passionately about their love for Eddie Guerrero to the point where I was like kind of like, man, getting teary eyed. I liked like, him. I liked him. He was great. But I was I don't think I was like I was more Mysterio Malenko. Really? Okay. Those guys than I was Guerrero. You know, we didn't bring up Benoit at all or whatever, but and I mean, it's like, kind of, it's hard. Yeah, it's it hard. is. Uh, but the moment uh, that one of the uh, uh, guests on there, CJ, uh, talked about from uh, Christmas Conversations is that he brought up was, uh, you know, when Eddie won that title, I think that no matter what, any wrestling fan, 20. yeah, yes. against Brock, man, it was oh, man. pretty, honestly, you just watch that moment and it's pretty yeah. amazing. Honestly, I mean, that moment would have been lived on still mm -hmm. if Benoit hadn't done what he did. Right. Uh, man, because that was an all-time great moment. Yeah, you know? it really so, was, and I loved it, that. And I, I always loved the. It was, you know, the I mean, the we, got, we got it. I, were you with me? I, I think so. I think WrestleMania I 20 that, because yeah. that was the return of Undertaker. Remember? Probably a lot of wrestlings all seen uh, together. Probably. Yeah, but that was <laughs> a big fight. One. Who was his return? It, it was someone. It was. I think it was Kane, but it was the okay. return of the the Dead Man Undertaker mm. because he had been the American, American badass. badass. So yeah, you know, he had been kept on TV for a while. He tried growing his hair. It didn't grow that long. It was like right here but it was like the return of the undertaker i think i do remember watching that yeah he, he might have been here for that one it's so hard when you see so much wrestling like it kind of like especially you know, 20 because 20 is already like oh yeah yeah oh four oh five i think that's where, where that one's at no but like uh uh manny uh was one of the guests from uh i'm gonna i don't want to mess up the title of his show but i believe it <laughs> i believe it's uh uh feliz Merry Feliz mm. Navidad Christmas. It's 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 hilarious. Uh, but Manny's great, but he's from Puerto Rico and like you know he's obviously oh, familiar with the, the colognes. colognes. Yep. And that stuff and you know that he, he lived there. And territory. So, yeah, Damn. so we we had uh, uh blood bats over there. I already mentioned CJ once, I've mentioned it before, but he's like lives in Canada, so it's like yeah, I can he loves the hearts. So it's like Damn. Jerry had a great little collection of people there. I would have liked to have been there just to see like because they say Canada is split. Mm -hmm. Like there's the heart section, mm -hmm. but then there's a Rougeau section, right? And then there's a section where like Dino Bravo is like the top shit. Yeah, you know, so it, it's interesting to see like you have the hearts, but then there's people over here that say Rougeau. Uh -huh. You know that Rougeaus are the more um, uh, celebrated name 
in Canada than the hearts are. Definitely. So, like, I think we bring yeah. up the Rougeos, I think. And, and, uh, it, it's interesting because, like, when you're watching, but him. when you're watching, you're like, you're like, ah, oh, the Rougeos, they blow. Right. But, you know, like, until, <laughs> until you, like, start seeing, like, the history and you start, like, man, these guys are really fucking huge in Canada. Yeah. Like, Kevin Steen, like, goes on and on about how Rougeau is, like, huge right, in right. that part of Canada, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And then, Definitely. like I said, Dino Bravo. Um, if you guys haven't seen Dark Side of the Ring, there's, like, an episode of The Murder of Dino Bravo. But they're saying that there was a time where they wanted him and Hogan to go at it. And they said that would easily have put 60,000 people in the, wow. in the Canada. Yeah. The only thing was that Vince didn't want people cheering for Bravo ah. over Hogan. So that match yeah. never happened. So, But, man, I was like, God, Lee, you passed That's up a 60,000 event, though? I, was like, I mean, just the money, the draw God, alone, Lee. the money on the merch. And I believe it or not, I think Americans would have traveled for Hogan. Yeah. I think yeah, so. I, think so. I don't yeah. think they're going to let Hogan get booed. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. But he was always afraid, of, I guess, of Hogan getting booed. Yeah. So, I don't know. Okay, well. Uh, anyway, let's get into it. Anyway. Guys, so it is October 1st, right? And if you guys remember last month, the way we did things is that we kicked off October with, I think we had, did we have two full moons? We had uh, or, Roxanne moons, but a here full, on our a first moon episode. A blue moon. Yes. yes. Yes, it was. It was a rare night. Yes. Mm -hmm. We had a guest that night. It was Foxy Roxy. Uh, was, and she came to talk about werewolves. werewolves. Yes. And we started off kind of like last uh our first halloween uh as a podcast mm -hmm. and we wanted to do something big for halloween in guala we're going to kind of continue that tradition and, and talk about spooky stuff and spooky season and uh you know halloween is things we didn't do monsters all month long no, we kind of did no we did like the crow we did like werewolves we did um, vampires vampires and we did uh stephen king stephen king with, with john with, with uh yeah. Hunter, john so. and we haven't fully talked about what we're gonna do the rest of the month whatever but if we have any suggestions out there from the friday night faithful please let us know because we've not really touched on like slasher flicks or slasher but, franchises but today we are talking about probably one of the most famous serial killers yeah in movie history in movie, movie history, history. Uh, also, just one of my all-around favorite characters, um, film, TV, uh, and book form, um, but none other than Dr. Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter himself. Um, guys, uh, 1991, I believe, is Science of the Lambs, right? Double A? Valentine's Day. <laughs> and, Which I was surprised to learn that it yeah, came out on that day. Jonathan Demi directs. Uh, is that right? Jonathan yeah. Demi? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and making sure, making sure got let's check my source here, Double A. Um, it is an outstanding movie. Uh, Jodie Foster, it wins Best Picture. Excellent. It won Best uh, Actress. Won best, best, actress best, actor. best Actor. I think he won Best Director, in fact, as yes, well. Yes, he did. I, think I he mean, did. man, that was just like a total fucking The soundtrack scene. is amazing. The soundtrack's amazing. I love that uh, score. Uh, you get this line from my shirt. One more thing. Love your suit. <laughs> um, it is easily one of my favorite movies of all time, probably top five. Um, I mean, it's one of those movies where you're just watching it and you get hooked right away. You're just like, oh, it's this part. Mm -hmm. Oh, this part's coming mm -hmm. up. You know, it's just kind of like, damn. Like, you love the back and forth between Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster. Yes. You just love that back and forth that they do. I feel yeah. like it's a movie that you can watch over and over again. You can. Absolutely. It's weird. You know? It's Absolutely. weird. It has the two factors that I talk about, which is A, rewatchability, and B, uh, um, that you'll would you would you buy this? This is what I always say. Like, would you buy that movie? And then you know, would you? How many times would you oh, watch yeah. it? It has both those things, like you know, in spades. I I know I probably I know I own at least one copy, uh, but I've probably bought it multiple times in in different forms. If and there's did, like so many. It's one yeah. of those movies where they keep releasing it because it keeps selling. If know, they did so. like some steel box next week, I'd probably buy it or whatever for whatever anniversary. Um, but that's that's we're we're not talking just about the movies and just about Science of the Lambs guys, but we're talking about the character Hannibal Lecter himself. Now he's been portrayed on screen several times. Uh, I believe four, four different five actors. Times, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, so, we've had one from uh, Manhunter, all my from boys. the Silence of the Lambs, <laughs> from uh, the Hannibal <laughs> show. Um, yeah, Double A showed his. I have my collection here. I wanted to show guys what I'm showing right now is my Blu-ray trilogy. Which So that one only comes with the three too, huh? huh? Yeah, but actually it comes with the three that I like. The the Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal, and Red Dragon. But okay. you see this weird badging on there. It's got this weird badging. The yeah. reason, the reason right, why right, right. is because this isn't an American version. And when I first put this in my Blu-ray player, it, it did not oh, play. Because no. I, yeah, because they only sold this version, I think, overseas. But then I was able to, uh, 
get it to play on the PlayStation, they will oh, play. That blows. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's cool say because I wanted cool these three, and I like <laughs> this cover. Yeah. yeah, I did like this cover, which has the classic mask. Yeah, it's weird because like mine has like Manhunter, Silence, and Hannibal, and mm-hmm. I had to get Red Dragon. Red Dragon separate, right? Yeah, and I liked this one the best because it was the three Anthony Hopkins ones are in in here or whatever. You can check that out, Double A, if you want. But uh, yeah, again, it was some foreign version. And a lot of times, if you look up these foreign versions, you can find like they've got like better covers, better stuff like that. Foreigners. But it'll only play in uh, yeah in a, in a in a foreign machine. So um, is PlayStation foreign? Well, I guess maybe now the technology <laughs> has like gotten more modern. I said that it mm. will work in there. But uh, until well, Amy, tell us your your thoughts about the character and your where do you stand on Hannibal Lecter as as you know I mean I know you know but um I absolutely mm-hmm. love Hannibal Lecter um just him as a character well, I love Anthony Hopkins just as a person and actor um especially as this character um I mean sophisticated you know, he, smart yes mm-hmm. and you he's, know you mm-hmm. People are like, he's a serial killer. Yeah, like, <laughs> he's a serial killer, but, <laughs> but man, he's like so charming. Him. Right. So absolutely. smart. And he had a specific type of person that he was murdering. So I'm not sure if those people deserved it or not, but, you know, if they were rude, I'd... <laughs> oh, I mean, man, him. just the way he killed him, though, is brutal. I mean, I mean it just, he's, him. he's a fascinating <laughs> character. He's and you, super fascinating. I'm immediately drawn to him because of all the things that you said. He's yeah. charming and... And smart, intelligent, and yeah, and you want him to be the good guy, even though we know he's the <laughs> bad guy. Like right. you know, you're you're the good guy. You're my guy. You're my guy. But I, the I first love... time he comes on screen, he's like smiling, and you're just like you get you get this mm-hmm. real uneasy feel about him. But then he starts talking, you're like, oh okay, well this ain't like Michael Myers. Right. This ain't like Jason. Like you're you're <laughs> you're you fear him, but you're not yeah. scared. Like. I'm scared if Michael Myers is coming after me. But exactly. Hannibal comes like I'm. I am scared, but it's more of a fear. Like, like, like we got. You don't Freddy, know what kind of shit's coming. Like Michael Myers, he's gonna stab you. We know that. We got like, Freddy Krueger. That's like you know the the horror Spider Man that lets you talk shit <laughs> while he's killing you. Right. You know. Right. Like, this guy is like, here, come to dinner. Let me serve you some food. That yeah. you don't know what yeah, it is. That it's... you don't know what body part that I just carved this out mm-hmm. of. You know. <laughs> yeah, just I mean, I think we can all he say likes that we're just fine drawn lines. to him. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And, and then when you find out too that he was a a, a, for, a forensic psychologist for right. the police. That's right. Know? Yeah, it was, was kind of like with wow. Them. You know. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I agree with you guys, all those things. And, and um, that's just, you know, seeing it from, like, Silence of the Lambs. We only get, like, what? What's the, it's like, oh, it's famous, like, 15 minutes, right? Yeah, it's a like very small there. amount of on-screen time he had. Yeah. But, again, I mean, he literally, like, just chewed up chews that up. scenery <laughs> where you're like, man, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, right, ironically, he's chewing the scenery, literally. Like, you don't want to miss those parts in Silence when right. he's on the screen. Cause, definitely, definitely. Because he's a, the one that's. He's a mastermind in that movie. Yeah, and it's a great story, you know, in itself, you know what I mean, with the Buffalo Bill story and all that. You know, of course, again, scary highly quotable, too. too. It is. Very scary. Definitely you know, scary. You know, you know, the Ted Bundy, the Ed Gein mm-hmm. kind of all rode into one they with use the Buffalo those Bill character. Yeah. You know, it's, he's a fucking scary killer, yeah. too. That's a killer that you're afraid of. Just like the in way the he 80s. even looks. Like... Yeah. Yeah. The van, you know, when he gets, you know, when they show him, like, hey, can you help me? You know? Uh-huh. Buffalo Bill. Like, his, the shape like, of oh, his shame. face is very, like, it's very defined. And yeah. And he's just like, he's like, a scary man. Like, all these memes <laughs> come out, you know, like, like CM posted one, too, you know, about being at Bed and Body, work, body Works for, like, two hours. Right. And <laughs> like, you tell your girlfriend, put the lotion in the fucking vest. <laughs> yeah. But, for I mean, sure. when you're first seeing this movie, it's terrifying. He's He's a terrifying dude himself. Yeah. And it's kind of like you know what do they do you get a serial killer to get inside the mind of a serial right. killer you right. know and that's what's kind of <clears throat> cool about this whole thing is like he's giving them information he's reading he's still kind of doing it because he's interested in the killer mm-hmm. aspects of buffalo bill you know like he likes to get in the mind of him and you know that's what's kind of cool about silence of the lambs the back and forth with him and jody foster just about that case right you know you tell me some stuff about you and I will tell you more about Buffalo Bill. It's it's an interesting dynamic that I didn't see in the movies before. You know, yeah, no, this totally. This bad guy, you know, he's fucking with her too in oh, a lot yeah. of ways. You know, he's yeah. making her open up to a lot of emotions that she doesn't want to open up to. But do and you see how just? Own... I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Do you see how he he 
was just merely talking to her to get her to open up. I mean, he's behind the glass. Like, but she didn't have to so do that. he's so charming. He has a, such right. a soothing like, voice. Like, she's like, I'm right. feeling a magnetic force, even though you're behind this, you're in this yeah. cage. And, and she yeah. knows all about him. She's read all about right. him. Mm-hmm. She's had all the files about what this guy do. Because remember, Jack was played great by Scott Glenn. Mm-hmm. Oh, the fantastic. He's like, don't Jack give him any information about yourself. You know, yeah. he will use that against you. Mm-hmm. He will bend you to his will. You know, right, <clears throat> right. She, he, they warn her, or whatever. You know Which, what by mean? the way, Scott Glenn is my favorite Jack Crawford. Okay. Out of all of them that I've seen. He's, okay. He's fucking awesome. There is one I think that can rival him. You haven't seen him yet, but I will. We'll what, get to what's that. crazy, real quick, is that you know I was reading uh, some tidbits about that and. You know he he shadowed the this the the actual FBI like boss. Oh wow, okay. And the boss played him some real bad like audio mm-hmm. uh, stuff of some serial killers, like real serial killers that were like raping and doing all this stuff to women, like on the recording. Mm-hmm. And it said it really fucked him up, and that's why he didn't come back for Hannibal. Wow, really? And he even asked him, he's like, "Why do you play that for me?" For he was like, "Because I, I want you to know this is what I have to listen to every yeah. day." Yeah, I have to listen to this kind of stuff every day, you know. Yeah. So I want you to know what the fuck I'm doing every day. Scott, I have to hear yeah. this. Scott Glenn is excellent as Jack Crawford. He he plays him. He's wonderfully. strong. Like you can tell, he has a presence too. Yes. and I wish that we could yes. have had a scene with them too because of the history that you, you kind of piece right. together from Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, like he's like Jack Crawford sent a trainee to me. Right, like, like wow, like yeah, you know, like he hates Jack Crawford. You can tell, mm-hmm. you know, Jack hates him just as much. Mm-hmm. You know, I really, I'd like to see Scott. That Gordon would have been amazing. And Anthony Hopkins that's go great, face that's to a face. Great pull. I never thought about that, but that that would have been amazing. Uh, I'll talk to you in a little bit about the other Jack okay. Crawford that I really love. But yeah, um, so for you, Double A, you'd say your first introduction to Hannibal Lecter is, is oh, Silence of the Lambs. I didn't you know nothing too? about him. I believe so. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think myself as well. Uh, again, it's a movie that's probably my top five. Watch it. Does we've probably all seen it like how many times? I mean, yeah. just, like, I, mean I saw it like <laughs> as a little boy, and it, it just it's there's nothing it. scary, like mm-hmm. really scary about it, like the way other horror movies are. But mm-hmm. it creeped me out. That, yeah, and the music is kind of creepy. The, the soundtrack is kind of creepy. But I get it where it's not like necessarily traditionally scary, like a like a slasher flick, because uh, it's not. It's see, it's that's what's so good about it. It's not. Yeah, it's scary. dispensable. It's like a thriller. But, like, like it kind of keeps. But you then wanting. you start putting yourself into these characters, right. and you're kind of like, damn, that's scary. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it's like a fear thing. It's yeah. Like, well, the like, scene with the officers when he escapes is pretty scary. I yeah, mean, it like, is. You know, when he's yeah. strung up like yeah. that and they see him. And... Well, not just that, but even like the ending of the movie that you know he's out. Right. He's out there. <laughs> you know, this fucking serial killer is out there and he knows how to disappear. That's yeah. fucking scary too. But it's know? funny because they they include him now. Like, like you can get Hannibal merchandise on like yeah. on horror yeah. stuff. They, they made him part of like the movie Monsters <laughs> collection. Like he's considered like one of these. And it's always the famous, you know, with the mask. Yeah, with the mask, the orange yeah, one or whatever. Like uh, that, mm-hmm. that's that's where he has been risen to, where he gets talked about amongst you know the the kind of great you know killers. And he's whatever. always right up there, like almost yeah. the top five. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I, I've uh, heard I've heard him before on lists <clears throat> where it's like greatest on screen villains, and it's like usually him and Darth Vader are number yeah. one and two. Yeah, it's weird. You know yeah, what I mean? And yeah. I have to say for myself, they're probably pretty interchangeable as far as on screen presence. And I I am hard pressed to think of a greater on screen villain than either one of those two you know what i mean like they just are that uh imposing um so obviously with the anthony hopkins series you know we get you know okay so i want to talk quickly about like the order of like the books i believe the books come out in order it is red, red dragon, dragon. Yeah. uh then silence of the lambs then it's hannibal and then uh now was that written though because of the success silence had of the movie of and the, everything, the Hannibal book. Yeah, did, did he write that afterwards? You know, I'm not sure, and it's hard to find a lot of stuff about Thomas Harris. So Thomas Harris is the writer and creator of Hannibal Lecter. Uh, I'm showing right now uh, my first edition of the book, Red Dragon, whatever. There's some of my prized possessions, these books, because I, I love them. I believe they are all first editions. I have them all here. Oh, nice. I'll, I'll show them. Very nice. I need to but read some um, of those. They're fantastic. In the in the Red Dragon book, it's cool because the uh, the the main uh, protagonists they come to San Antonio. They talk about it. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, nice. he does some work here at, at okay. the the Brooks base, whatever. Uh, like, and that's the other thing too is that Thomas Harris is such a fantastic writer that like you know. It, the only thing is, is that these movies are mainly so well done that it's like it's not a case of like the book is necessarily better than the movie. It's almost like they're different. Um, 
but equally good. It's like because mm. like Hannibal, the movie ends way different than the book. It, yeah, a great cliff different. notes of, of Hannibal, and I'm like, wow, this is a lot darker than yeah. what the movie is showing. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty different, whatever. But they're both, you know, again, like equally awesome. You can enjoy them without the other or or together and it's still fine or whatever you know what i mean like i don't feel like yeah i don't feel like like i'm glad to have had them all you know what i mean yeah but um obviously the next one the next in the movie version we all saw science of the lambs first but uh let's talk a little bit about the movie that came before that where hannibal lecter was first on screen and it was lec lector yeah directed by michael mann mm -hmm. you know he um Shit, he's done some more movies that came in. Uh, Michael, Mann, Michael Mann, I mean, is I think huge. we know he's Collateral, huge, right? Is it, collateral. We love Collateral. collateral. You and I are yes. big Collateral fans. <laughs> yes, I do love it. And Manhunter, man, that movie blew me away. Um, <clears throat> that's where I fell in love with Will Graham. And Brian Cox is actually a really good Hannibal Lecter. Mm -hmm. And his their meeting is pretty unsettling as well <clears throat> because of what happens to Will. Which you don't see in this movie, but you do see in the in Red Dragon. Mm -hmm. You don't see what he does to Will, you know, like they do here. Right. <clears throat> but William Peterson, you know, from CSI, he's an excellent Will Graham. I liked his a lot. I say him and Jody are like right there together. Okay. Interesting. It's just that Hannibal respects the hell out of the Will Graham character. Like he sees him like as his absolute rival. Yeah. You know, like he he's like he he keeps asking him, How did you catch me? Yeah. How did you catch me? You know, you think you're better than me, you think you're smarter than me? He's like, No, I don't think I'm smart. Then how'd you do it, Will? Yeah. He's like, I you had a disadvantage. Yeah. You know, like what what disadvantage? <laughs> you're, like, you're insane. insane. <laughs> you know? And I love that line. Like the Will Graham character is so interesting because the way they say it is like he gets so into the mind of the serial killer mm -hmm. that it's kind of like he can almost see how the serial killer is doing it, where he's coming from, like how who he is he gonna attack next. Yeah. yeah. And it drives him pretty much like to retire because he was already he was like he was getting too deep into the minds of here. Mm -hmm. Dennis Farina is Jack uh, here. Mm -hmm. He was an ex-cop who became an actor, so it's pretty cool seeing yeah. that. You know, kind of like oh, well, this is cool because he already knows how to the body language of a cop. Yeah, you know. So I love uh, him in uh, um, uh, Out of Sight. He's an Out of yeah. Sight. He plays yeah. J Lo's uh, yeah. dad. So it was cool that you know after finding out he was an ex-cop himself. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was good. He was really good. Uh, I, I'd still say Scott Glenn was way better than his, but not by a whole lot. Gotcha. I mean, Dennis was good in his own. They don't make that psychiatrist like too much of an asshole. Uh, what's Chilton. Chilton, mm -hmm. like in Manhunter. He he has like a, an important role, but it's not like the asshole I've like they show him. Manhunter. It's really good. It's one. really good. Have you seen it, Charlie? Yes, I have. Uh, yeah. Okay. I can't remember his name, CM. But That's the, the only one I haven't seen. <laughs> but the villain from Robocop 2, Kane. Uh huh. Okay. He's a tooth fairy. Oh. Ah. Okay. He's like oh, a Ralph yes, 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 yes. Uh huh. I know who you're talking about. He's and, kind of balding. Yes. He's, gonna, he's then, good. He's the, uh, good. The Ike Clanning actor. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, man, I for Scott Lang. Okay. Or not Scott Lang. That's I know, that's the other one. Uh, Scott. I mean, he, it's Lang. escaping me. Yeah. Well, you know, the he plays Ike from Tombstone. Is it on here? He uh -huh. he's the he's the Philip Seymour Hoffman character. Man, he's just as oh, annoying. Gotcha. Yeah. As fucking okay. maybe even worse than Philip he's Philip Seymour Freddy, Hoffman. Freddy yes. Freddy yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. There you go. Yeah. So it's a really good movie. Um, uh, the no, only yeah. thing, the only thing I think that hurts it for me is the music is too yeah, much. Stephen Lang and Tom. Stephen Newton. Lang. Yeah, you were uh, right. the the only thing that kind of like dates it is the music. Okay. But I mean, you can get past that real easy. William Peterson does a, such a great job. I think he will like it too. Might the way he. That cat and watch it yeah, the way <laughs> the way he portrays Will Graham. You would have really loved to have seen his Will go up against Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins. Because Will Peterson does such a great job of he is fantastic and and there's this great moment too where he's kind of like Lecter is really getting on him about some stuff mm -hmm. like he's starting to smell like his his cologne like he smells his aftershave he's like that's kind of aftershave that like a kid gets their dad yeah. because at the time Will I guess didn't have a family mm -hmm. and so like Will starts like really panicking he's like okay I'm done okay I'm done you know yeah. and, and he's like your hands smell like kind of like you've been working with wood like yeah. like almost like you're in like in a in a summer kind of state, you know, like it's a so sunny state. Got, like, that keen yeah. Smell. And, yeah. And the cop lets him out and like 
he kind of like calls ass and he has like this massive panic attack. And, and William Peterson does a great job. He's like, like, like where he's like, fuck, you know, like he almost got into my head, you yeah. know, like, like that's what kind of like Jack was kind of warning Clarice. Right. Right. You kind of get that feeling like after you watch Manhunter, like, holy shit, this is what he was trying to warn Clarice about. Like, kind of like, don't let him get in your head. Kind of like the way he, he did with Will Graham. He's like yeah. feeling you, even though he's not yeah. physically touching you. Yeah, because exactly. he's like, man, the last thing he needs is Lecter knowing that about he has a family. About my personal life, yeah. yeah. and where he may be, you know. You know, when he breaks down <laughs> Clarice in silence, you know, when he's like, you know, you're standing there with, you know, with, with your... Uh, your good bag and your cheap shoes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he can hear the twang in her voice, like, yeah. Oh, your country, yeah. like Yeah, like, like you're from like, Kentucky or Tennessee right. somewhere. And then he just starts to spin this scene, right? You know, like, oh, you know, like these uh clumsy gropings in the backseat of cars. It's like, damn, you know, you're like you know, if even that thing happened to you once, you're feeling like How do you fuck, know? you know what I mean? Like he just is already broken you down, you know what it's I mean? It's funny because I told CM like Manhunter and Red Dragon are almost shot for shot yeah but it's just william peterson does so much better job and i'm kind of surprised i even said this but he does so much a better job than edward norton does mm -hmm. i love edward norton mm -hmm. but man william edward peterson norton. just seemed like he was a better will graham than than, yeah. will, than edward norton was yeah and i mean again you know he goes to lecter you know he's i need you to analyze this i have a hunch mm -hmm. but i need you to look at this to see if i'm right and you know it's like you you feel that respect there, but also that hatred for each other, right? Like deep, deep fucking hatred, but the <laughs> deep respect. He hates Will so much because he's the one that got him. Yeah. He's the one that figured him out. You know that and makes him feel that like fucking, he lost. Yeah, like he lost. Like, like, and you know that's why he's like, you think you're better than me? You think you're smarter than me? You know? Yeah. The Manhunter is just a really great movie. I really mm -hmm. it needs to be put there more mm -hmm. with Silence of the Lambs. Like that's just a great prequel to Silence of the Lambs, because then you, you feel like you know Lecter a little bit better. You feel like why Jack hates him so much, Yeah. why he warns Clarice, yeah. you know, the Lecter, I mean, and he doesn't even come out that much either, yeah. <laughs> Brian Cox right. and Manhunter. Yeah, yeah so he's not that much in Red So Dragon it's kind of like, again, you're getting just like a little taste, but he, like, he so encapsulates you. He's yeah. present just, even though you yeah. don't physically, you can't see him visually. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what's worse. I don't know what prison is worse that they put him in the one in Manhunter or the one in, in Silent Little <laughs> Lives. It's, it's just a fucking four room, you know, cell where he has like no windows. Like in Manhunter, it's all white. Right. Where in Silent Little Lives, room, it's like all rocks, yeah. you know, with the fucking window glass. So yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, you um, know. I, I like Manhunter. Yeah, I'll take one. I like Manhunter. I love Manhunter. And this is everyone which says this is like the first on screen appearance of Hannibal Lecter, but it, in that movie it's spelled different. It's L E C K. Yeah, it's one of those weird changes that yeah, versus you don't know why they do. L E C T E R, which is the book spelling, and that's how it's it's spelled. And again, they didn't call it Red Dragon, they called it Manhunter. Uh, I don't know if there was like rights issues or what at that time. I, or I don't know either. Um I've heard the explanation before, but I'm not. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But uh, I'm sure we can easily someone can easily look it up too and tell us you know the real reason why they did it that way in that one. So I think that you definitely should watch it, sis. Like I'd watch it with you. Again, I haven't seen that one in a while. You need to because I, I think just I don't to, think we have it. Right? We don't have no, it. No, I don't. Yeah, have I, I have it right here, yeah, so you guys can see it. it. I I uh, I prefer Red Dragon, but only because I love the Anthony Hopkins. He is, in my opinion, the definitive. I do too, but uh, since he's not really yeah. there that much, it's right. kind of like yeah. you're being led by Will. Yeah, which you know he plays very heavily into the Hannibal series. Oh yeah, you know? definitely. And I think yeah. you would get a better respect for him watching Manhunter than you probably would watching Red Dragon. I um the reason I think that the way I saw it was I saw Red Dragon and then I uh, read the book. Then I saw the um, the Manhunter version or whatever. And I and what I gathered from it. And again, they're both fine independently. You can watch them each and enjoy them both in their own way. Uh, but what if I were going to take something from it, it would be that I felt like the Edward Norton version was a little bit more like the book version. So that's why oh, I was like, I see, what I loved about that one is just that beginning, man. Oh, no, yeah. That beginning was awesome that they put in Red Dragon. Right. The of scene. how he figured it out. Yeah. That know? scene, right? That extra stuff in there. That's what, like, I was like, damn. And, it, and right there, it, like, it put Lecter up there again for me, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like. I haven't seen it in a minute. It, that, it shows like where he's he's um, entertaining a group, 
and uh, he's okay. feeding them yeah, yeah and he's feeding them you know i guess parts of okay. like a human and oh yes and I they're know. like oh this is so delicious what I is remember, it and he's like now. i haven't if seen I it told in, you. in a minute <laughs> you're like i told you and then I'm, i love red dragon but it wasn't my favorite out of the but they yeah. will go to him like late at night he's like you know I, I feel like i'm really on the urge of capturing this killer but it's something i'm missing and he's mm -hmm. like i'm really surprised you haven't figured it out yet right you know so that's kind of really neat too yeah. uh guys we're right up against our next break so we'll take this really quick we're going to continue the conversation about dr hannibal lecter what are your thoughts on him right now uh give a second we'll be right back all right guys you know we don't go anywhere we stay here with you hanging out live uh that 30 minutes went quick right we see some it comments sure rolled in yeah. so let's uh get to it uh what do we have here i think uh, you need to go up a i gotta go little up bit. a little bit well, quite a few comments rolled in here uh they'll let us know Let's maybe see. a little oh, bit more oh shoot oh i've got a few comments guys thank y'all for okay, hanging yeah. okay, joining okay. us here all right slow down <laughs> go down, <laughs> down a little bit tell me when to stop Just keep going keep going tell me when to stop sorry guys we're finding your comments we want to make sure oh, okay right there right everyone Rich in uh rich says likewise guys it's always fun coming on here and supporting the show and just having fun yeah i mean that's what me and cm were you know when we put this show together man me and him were just so burnt out with with so much stuff going in our lives that we we're just like man you know let's just get our frustration out you know a bit. <laughs> and uh man meeting you guys has been really cool so yeah man if anybody can come on and, and like i said make a new friend and hang out then you know we're all for that you know what i mean so uh amy this next comments for you uh, uh oh it's, what does it say there? Uh, from Audrey uh, Hardy. Oh, Audrey? what's up, Audrey? She says, I'm Tamable Amy. Love it. What's up, Audrey? Thank is you, Is that boo. the thumbs up emoji? Yeah. That is a mm -hmm. thumbs up emoji. I can probably pull that up right so here. There we go. Cool. There you go. There we go. There you Forgot go. I could do that, guys. Sorry, I forget <laughs> the powers that be here. Uh, Rich uh, says, it's a very good movie. Silence okay. of the Okay, there you go. Uh, Christopher Hernandez said, it's timeless. Totally timeless. Chris, welcome, man. I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> Long time no see. Uh, me and Chris, old, old friends. Uh, just reconnected actually through Mario's comment. So us both writing a good really? comment for Mario. Yeah, guys. So anyone here too in the Friday Night Faithful, if you've seen Mario on this show and you loved and enjoyed him being a guest on here, which by the way, Chris, there's two episodes with Mario you can go check out uh, mm. from the past two? catalog. Uh, go a watch those or listen to those on YouTube. We or might be to having a, another big third one with That's him too. Yeah, we, we, we think we might have another big third episode coming up with Mario Delgado. But uh, guys, he's looking for right now Go on his web page, his uh, uh, Facebook page for Authority Comics, and write a little review. If you had an interaction or an experience with Mario that you enjoyed, uh, write that and uh, and and tell him that. Give him some kudos and, and thumbs up on his Facebook page. It helps him uh, big time. Aaron B in the house. Aaron B in the house. What up, Aaron B? Uh, That's me. Let's see. She said you should be putting lotion on your skin. Yeah, yeah. 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 I wanted us to have some fava beans and a nice Chianti, but. <laughs> Uh, he says, uh, Mike, Aaron says, Michael Myers ain't shit compared to Hannibal Lecter. I do love Michael Myers, by the way, though. Double A's, uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron says, how the hell did Hannibal Lecter get to where, where he was eating people? What happened in his life? You gotta we'll, watch the origins. We'll movie. get to that. We'll definitely get to that, Aaron. I, I, I hope you'll stick around to hear us talk more about that for sure. Uh, Rich says Buffalo Bill was a crazy character. Yeah, just a whole bunch of serial killers rode into one. Totally, yeah. man. To I think the skin suit, the, the Ed Gain stuff. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Tough into nipples, doesn't it? <laughs> Get this thing away from Get, me. Take this thing back to Baltimore. <laughs> Rich says it's crazy and goes to show you have to fight fire with fire getting another serial killer to catch a serial killer. Yeah, totally. And from what I read, that's like something the FBI did do with Ted Bundy. Yeah. They asked him to... Look, you know, profile, other, profile, profile yeah. other other uh, other characters. I believe it, man. Because he, he was so smart, like that. Yeah, because yeah. he was a smart fucking. Yeah, dude. it was pretty clever. I watched some the, of the Bundy files or whatever, and then I watched the one that Zac Efron played him. Oh, okay. Also, okay. interesting. Was, I have not heard this before, but yeah. Rich says uh, that they originally wanted Sean Connery to play wow. Hannibal, but he turned it down. How do we think that would have <sighs> went? I don't think that would have been good. I don't, I don't know Sean either. Connery is, I don't know, man. I, I don't. Sometimes Sean Connery's too Sean Connery. Yeah. And so you needed somebody new to yeah. kind of like, uh, and I don't think this was by any means uh, Anthony Hopkins' first role, but it definitely was his he breakout role. He has the role. charm part, obviously, mm -hmm. Sean Connery. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can see that, but I, I think it's the... It's that presence, right, that Anthony Hopkins just He's gives more off. like 007 to me. 
Yeah. And he was like 007, his, so that's okay, why. Okay, well, there you go. His, <laughs> more like, his persona, like the yeah. way it is. Like you know what? Like, I probably wouldn't need to see the Alfred Hitchcock movies he did. Maybe oh, interesting. Maybe that's where people oh, got the idea those. for maybe him being Hitchcock. Okay. I mean, uh, Hannibal. You know, I never seen any of the. Yeah, he comes out like. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Out, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, we got to make a date for the new one. Well, you got to start watching it. Oh, the the new one, the new movie though. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, thinking Austin for sure. Um, Taking who? Austin. Oh, okay. He oh. fell in love. Like his favorite uh, chapter is a Sean Connery. Nice. Uh, chapter because he loves all the '60s shit. I just remember me, you, and your brother <laughs> Friday Night at Will would have that little tradition of going to watch the new one. It was so. nice, but you know what, cool. man? I was like, I I hit myself in the ass because I never I didn't see Goldeneye. And then wow. I refused to see Casino Royale until everyone kept, you know, saying how good that movie was. Right, right. I was like, fuck, that's the one movie I should have seen and at the like theater. It? I love Casino <laughs> Royale. Yeah. Yeah. Now, his other movies I've been up and down with. Daniel Craig I, is great. Yeah, I've had, I haven't been big on Spectre, and I wasn't big on Quantum. So, I was kind of like, mm. I got you. I got, this new one looks fantastic. I just saw the trailer. Well, I'm sure you saw it, too. During, yeah, from like, what, two years ago already? Uh, yeah, I know. We've been seeing it. <laughs> Uh, Scott Lang, yeah, my family's watching that man right now. I know it's Stephen Lang. Lang. Stephen Lang, Lang, yeah. <laughs> uh, Scott Lang also fantastic as Ant Man and uh, Paul Rudd. Shout out to Paul Rudd who's been doing a fantastic. We job just on saw him at Clueless. So we lo love Paul <laughs> oh, Rudd, guys. It. Great stuff, guys. Great stuff. Great comments. We're going to continue talking some more about Hannibal Lecter right now. Uh, we want to hear you guys' thoughts. Uh, what was your introduction to the character? Uh, what do you think of the character now? Does he rank up there with the all-time horror greats? I mean, is that uh, do you put him uh, up there with the Freddies and the Jasons? Uh, and if you don't, uh, why not? Uh, does he belong in another category? And if, if who else is in that category? If so, yeah. uh, you guys ready to keep it going here? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys. So you might have just heard a quick little drop out there. During that time, we read the comments from our Facebook Live audience. Uh, which, if you ever want to hear what those comments are and what the conversation we have during that time, go check us out on YouTube for the complete and unabridged version of this show. But if you're listening on Spotify, we cut that part out just so that you can make it a little bit uh, tighter show for your commute or however you listen, maybe during your bath time. I don't know if anybody's listening to us like that. Sometimes. That's right. I used to listen to podcasts when I'm showering. I was going to say, I listen to podcasts when I'm showering sometimes. <laughs> or if I take a bubble bath. Which is weird, but you know, I do that sometimes. Wow. Shit, you know what I'm doing restroom time. I'm... Yeah, <laughs> taking getting a some dump. <laughs> getting some podcasting in. Yeah. Uh, guys, so where were we at uh, in the so conversation? So we, we just kind of finished out Manhunter, kind of like yeah. the Will Graham character. Wow. It's really great character that they really don't talk about, which I was happy you told me that they kind of expanded his role Big more time. in Hannibal. Because yes. the Will Graham character to me is a more interesting character than what Clarice ended up becoming. Okay. You okay. know, I didn't like where they went with Clarice. In the Hannibal movie. Yeah. So, so again, we talked kind of briefly about science. It went from like a respected adversary to kind of like a, a lover. Right. You know, it went from, you know, respected adversary and Will Graham to... Let me see if I can twist this woman. Yeah. You know, because he ended up, like, but I think falling it was, in love it with was, her. Yeah, but I think that was something that we thought that Hannibal was incapable of doing. Exactly. Of, Maybe of so. loving not only a, a woman, but, like, another human being in that way. Do you say a woman because... Because I think there felt... was some controversy about whether he liked men or women, or if he preferred, hmm. or just... I feel like I Hannibal was... I think at that was... point, I, I think it's like you said... He became so engrossed with the killer part of himself that it was like... I think that he... Yeah. yeah there's that. And then I do think that he, he didn't have a preference because I think a lot of things about just humans His serial in general, killer would just yeah, come like, out of him. A lot of things much. about human I think so too. beings in general were just disgusting to him. And yeah. not up to his, I guess, standards. I think it was and, just rare that he encountered a person that he had that admiration or respect for because right. he hadn't had that. So he Almost, saw that in Will Graham. He saw that in Clarice. Where well, with like, Clarice, you know, it felt like, it seemed like he tutored her. Like he made her into what she became. You yeah, know? And maybe there's kind some of, of like, that too. Well, yeah, because I think he felt like she was enclosed and he, he opened her up and he... Like teacher student, right? Kind of. Like with Will Graham, I think maybe he hated him so much oh, he because hated he Will. felt like yeah. he was an equal. Almost. Yeah, yeah. And and this is where the you know, and we'll talk a little bit about the show in a, in a few minutes here. But this is where the show kind of diverges from that because see, like you know, in the in the now I don't know how you guys felt about in the Red Dragon movie, but I didn't. And, and and what you're saying about Manhunter Double A, it's kind of they make that the clear. It's rivals. It's clear that there's a, a hatred yeah, there. Yeah. You know, you put me here in this yeah. cage. I mean, I don't know that if I I feel as though there's a definite 
you know, obviously he tries to kill Will also in Red Dragon. But I would I wouldn't say that it's so much is it is it hate or is it just a a uh, uh, no you can tell in Manhunter right there's hate. But do you feel that way in Red Dragon? Yeah, you can almost see it, like in that part where he's like chained up when they're like talking. I almost think it's a little bit more like there's hate there, but it's almost. Like it's it, almost it, like, envy. It's yeah, envy because, because you, you outsmarted me. Like and, you made and, me okay. look bad. And I don't think he sees Will like as smarter right. than him. You know, and I think right. that well, really, I think that really. But that's pisses something that we off. would never pick up on because they would never, they never led, led any the audience to believe yeah. that Hannibal thought that somebody was smarter than him. But what if he did? What if he was like? But it's like this man caught me. Well, like, that's why he questions him. Ordinary, that lines in Red yeah, Dragon. And, and also. I was going to say, that's why William Peterson, like he, the Will Graham, tells him, you know, you had a disadvantage, and he like for right. Lecter, yeah. he doesn't even see that. That yeah, you know, he's like, you're insane. You're that's fucking like, serial killer that when, eats people. And how boy when the right. the guys like. You have flaws, and he's like, "What's my flaw?" Yeah. Like, what's great yeah. about that Red Dragon scene is like when Will kind of realizes it, it's frightening, it's scary when he's opening that book and he's seeing, you know, the drawings. what you can do with mm-hmm. this piece of meat from the or, organ, what you can do with the this sweet organ, breads. Mm-hmm. and it's kind of like, man, it's real chilling. It's a real chilling scene, and then all of nowhere he comes out and you know stabs Will. You know, yeah. And it's like, and that, that's I mean, that's those are the parts of those movies that are stark and startling it's like where he's like suddenly there you know what i mean so uh and just quickly guys i want to show you because we talked briefly earlier about science of the lambs but uh i'm going to show quickly for anyone that's watching the visual version the my edition of uh that's thomas nice. harris's the science nice. of the lambs yeah uh the books guys are amazing uh just as good as the movies and you can enjoy them and they're pretty easy reads uh, there are parts where it's like you know thomas harris goes into a lot of detail or whatever but it's not anything that anybody couldn't get through so let's move forward. Let's go. We, we've talked Manhunter. We've talked uh, Red Dragon, Silence of the Lambs. Uh, I'll always quickly touch on Silence of the Lambs, but let's go to Hannibal. So this is the, uh, and this would be the third, it was the third book that came out, but it was also the, uh, se- it was the second movie because they did Silence of the Lambs, then they did Hannibal. Then they went back and did the Red Dragon prequel. But Manhunter was already out. And maybe they waited because they felt like Manhunter stood on its own. It was good. But no, no, it wasn't. Like, it's barely coming alive again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. What recent praise. Well, yeah, because I didn't, I didn't even, I've never even yeah. seen it, so. Yeah. yeah. Like, so, it's not I even mentioned, it. like, in Michael Mann's, you know, filmography a really? lot of times. It's oh, wow. so recently again, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's got so, a great cast. It, is a it great does. Cast. Yeah, it's a really good cast. So with Hannibal, uh, we get a new Clarice Starling. Um, Jodie Foster, what I understand is that she originally wanted to direct, uh, and they were not going to let her direct. Uh, I don't know if they had already had. Um, yeah. I mean, um, it's uh, Ridley Scott, right? Ridley Scott, that's right. So it's that's hard right. to, you yeah. know, if you've already got Ridley Scott, it's hard to be like, you know, we're not going to not let Ridley Scott do it. I mean, you know yeah, I mean? he just had, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, don't say no. obviously Scott. Gladiator fame, you know what I mean? And Ridley Scott is fantastic. And I, I know from what I know of Ridley Scott, he's a great director, uh, especially from what I've seen of his work that I, that I love. Yeah, Gladiator. Yeah. yeah, so you get him, uh, obviously, you know, Blade Runner. Yeah. Uh, science is super high profile, right? It won all these Oscars, so it's like, yeah, there's got to be a sequel, right? And plus, we saw Hannibal get away at the end of Silence. Mm-hmm. You know, what are they going to do next? You know, so, you know. And, you know, I, I think what it was, though, I love Julianne Moore, but golly, she she didn't do a good job of following up Jodie Foster. See, okay. and I loved both of them. I, yeah, I, I liked but her, But there too. is so much missing what Jodie Foster brought to the character that she didn't. It's she, hard to, it's hard to not, I guess, compare. Because sure. You have two, well, yeah. There's two Clarices. I, I really, well, now more, but yeah. I really... I really like both of them. And, and because I they think, brought something different. I think what helps her her out, Julianne Moore, is that what well, a you know Ridley Scott's directing is great, but also that the movie uh, has a lot of other interesting characters too. Plus, you're getting like in a sense more Hannibal now. Yeah, you know what I mean. You, you know, you've got these big scenes of him in Italy, which is awesome because it's like you know, I mean he's got this love for that place you know what i mean and like you know you don't know that just as a movie watcher but i mean it's clear that you know that there's well, this man's culture it, it's you like know? you know we we me and amy talked about he's sophisticated he's right. smart 
So right. he loves all that shit. He loves art. Yeah. You know, he, he appreciates... Like he knows so much about so He many appreciates the, the beauty of Italy, yeah. you know, and all that stuff. It's just he's a serial killer. Right. <laughs> you know, when, you know, your, people. when your brother went for the first time, I Italian. asked him... Yeah. I said, did, did you go to Florence? Because that's what I thought about was I thought about animals. Yeah. I said, no, I didn't get to go that first time. But I think he went on his he second did. time. He did. And he, he has a picture of him with that pig. Yeah. And he brought he brought me a magnet <laughs> of that that's pig. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's very cool because, you know, we both enjoy yeah. uh, that character... Yeah. Uh, immensely so this is kind of you getting like you know more Hannibal Lecter you know what I mean then you've got it's the a whole... big time more Hannibal Lecter yeah 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 then the whole Mason Verger story played right? by Gary Oldman Gary Oldman Gary right Oldman, man. who I heard originally did not want his name in the credits because Why? he uh liked that he was unrecognizable I didn't know it was him no until... it was him yeah I didn't know yeah and he was yeah. like no no I don't want to be in the credits because I want you know you're so immersed in the character that yeah. you know, it isn't he doesn't want that credit which i thought was like wow that's pretty amazing. Read, i don't know if that's true from but. what i understand the book it's a much more deranged oh, fucking yeah. character i'm yes. glad they didn't really didn't show too much of that yeah in hannibal you yeah know, it's just in the book sounds like a very sick motherfucker yeah in the book he's i mean he seemed pretty sick. deranged like, no but in the book it. i think it sounds oh, even oh, worse oh yeah oh yeah. in the book well, like, yeah but yeah which i'm glad the they movie, didn't show if you haven't read the book like i haven't read the book right he does seem like that's some weird shit he's doing you know like it's bad shit it's weird that who even does that as revenge yeah, exactly. You know, like, what the hell? But apparently, but, uh, CM or a uh, Amy, like, the whole thing with Mason Berger is that he went to Hannibal, up. right? Uh-huh. He was a patient of his, That's right? right. Mm -hmm. That's where kind of, like, the whole plot of Hannibal is, right? Kind of? Yeah. Or a side plot is that he wants revenge on yeah. Hannibal Lecter because of what Hannibal kind of made him do made without him do. kind of forcing him to do yeah. in a weird way which is really think, mason's fault but and like again, he was I like think... in love with hannibal lecter right. right 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 he became totally like enthralled with him and he wanted you know i guess a sexual relationship with him and hannibal was just like well i think see it's kind of what you know until when you were saying earlier is like i think he knew like this guy is really a sick piece of shit and hannibal knew and that. he's like okay well i'm gonna make you punish yourself uh -huh. or whatever and Gets him drugged up, and obviously... Anyway, when he goes, he, Mason invites him over, obviously, and he goes with the... In intention, right? He's got intentions, but, you know what I mean? I'm not, I don't know what intentions mm -hmm. yet, but obviously because Mason, he knows Mason wants him over there for a sexual relationship, right. you know? And, right, You know, then um, he's got these poppers, and... Uh, yeah, and then that... What did you guys think about that, that graphic scene? It's a pretty violent scene. Because, see, this is where it, maybe... There's the Mason Verger character. If you haven't seen Hannibal, like I could handle the scene, but then he started feeding his flesh to the dogs. And yeah, I was, I was like, like I'm out. I was like, he's no Gary Oldman. <laughs> Put it that way. His face is just horribly scarred. Yeah, bad. Yeah, and he's like in a wheelchair. And like he's not a dumb like, guy though. He's no, a pretty intelligent he's just, he's character really himself. Yeah. Fucking nuts. And you know? wealthy. Yeah, he's a sick fucking character. Yeah, yeah, he's extremely wealthy, and he's been driven more mad. It by makes you wonder what why he was seeing Hannibal. Yeah. Oh, I think that guy had a ton of issues or whatever, and it's probably in the book. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but he has like a sister in the in the book, and she's like on steroids. Uh, like he, that's he, right. Yeah, he makes almost, her. Yeah, you almost get the impression that she maybe was going to uh, try to maybe become male. Um, that's right. I forgot but I don't know that. if the, it really that was the case, or mm -hmm. she was just you know like like enjoyed using steroids and the testosterone well, from that, that was making because all the shit know. that Mason put her through. Right. I mean. Yeah, that too. Like he was a pretty. See, now I really up. want to read the book. Individual. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about it. but okay. Majorly, yeah. Um, but, anywho. So, um, Hannibal comes out. I don't know. Was it well-received? I think people... It was okay. It made money. Uh, yeah. It made money, but it's just, obviously... You're comparing it to Silence of the Lambs, and that's probably the worst thing that you could do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, like, I, I, it's hard for me to see Julianne Moore after Jodie Foster. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was... Um, I don't know the the plot. I don't know. Maybe you know, yeah. I mean, you, you're introduced. I don't know the tone. Do you go back to it at all? Uh, Sometimes I do because right? I mean, I liked Ray Liotta. Yeah, as Paul Crandall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I see okay. it. You know, um, the Gary Oldman character is just like a sick fuck, and it's funny what happens to him. Yeah, you know, at the end. Yeah, you know? we always, like, we we always that. joke yeah. about that. But <laughs> again, it's always fucking funny. See, we feel like you know, and I know for me and Untamed, like, we feel like they're all three. Uh, incredibly quotable, incredibly rewatchable. But like, do you think it was you? too much Hannibal? Like, that's always the thing about Hannibal Lecter. It's kind do... of like he's teased. You yeah. Know? Like, 
but right. you fall in love with him. You think it was too much Hannibal? Um, I don't think it was too much only because it's the only movie we really get that much. You know what I mean? It's like there's not really, you know, it's Hannibal and it's the book. It's kind of like about, you know, him. Um, and even then without even the history. Well, it's funny it's because like it's kind of like you feel like the movie is him and then 50 is like them. But the in the movie, line. you kind of feel like you're rooting for him a little bit. Right. Until the end scene where you're kind of like you're scared again of him. Yes. You know, because of what he does to Ray Liotta and what he's trying to do with Clarice. Oh, you yeah. Krindler deserved it. I, I get the he was, he, was, he didn't yeah. deserve that. He was an yeah. asshole. But he deserves some ass whipping. Nah, he deserved I think he deserved it. Nah, he, he, he took yeah. some of his brain. Hey, that guy was not using it, obviously, the way I he was will. talking. Yeah. What did you guys think about the Barney character? The Barney character I like the Barney character. I'm I love the Barney you character. I brought that up because yeah. I was hoping you were going to bring that up. I like the Barney character. I'm glad they've used him. I think it's been the same actor in mm -hmm. all three of them. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, I remember he came out in Hannibal. I remember he's in Silence, and I think they used him again. I in think Red he just came out in Red Dragon. They show him like in a quick. It's like a quick maybe. Okay. When uh, again, Will is going, Red Dragon in a while. I think so. Yeah, when Will okay. goes to see him. Yeah, I like him. I, I I think it's really cool, and I think there's like a scene in the book of Silence that I read where he sees Lecter or something, and he like gets scared and like. Kind of goes the other way. I can't remember. It's I been think a there's like a scene a that was supposed to be like yeah. in silence where he's on vacation. Ah, nice. You know, or some shit like that. You know, and but I I read that uh, the little tidbits that you know Lecter was actually likes Barney. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's right. I guess that's he treats right. him okay. You know, then he's like, yeah, Barney's fine. And those, well, are damn, the, those if are... I was a security guard for him, I'd be treating him nice too. Oh uh, yeah. Well, those are like, again <laughs> some more of the parts where like I, I do find uh you know Julianne Moore as as uh, as uh, Clarice Starling very you know there are these things about her that I do like whatever you know obviously Jodie Foster's the standard but uh you know when she's sharing those moments and he's letting her hear the tapes and he's like you know that's where we get you know uh our title uh for the episode which i don't know why i haven't thrown up yet but uh <laughs> you know eat the rude you know that's what he says you know he says dr lecter would call him free range rude you know what i mean <laughs> which is funny because it's kind of a little bit hypocritical because there are moments in in silence you know of the lambs as well where he's being kind of rude you know what i mean there's moments where he comes across where i'm like wait a minute but Who's that? uh elector Oh yeah, Where, you know, well, he, yeah. He, but you know, I don't think Lecter sees it as being rude. I think he's he to him he's pointing out the truth. Interesting. That's an interesting way of, of putting it. You know what I mean? You think he's going to think of himself as a rude man? Well, I would not <laughs> think that he would think of himself as rude. And I think that he would think acting rudely was beneath him or whatever. You know what I mean? But again, like you said, he doesn't see it as that way. I think although he's like, I'm pointing out the obvious. Yeah. His so thing. I love when Clarice in Science of the Lambs tells him, you know, turn that high powered perspective on yourself. You know what I mean? Which was kind of like, to me, like, shit, she's kind of clutching at straws right now. She's got nothing else. And it's like, you know, it's almost like, oh, it's almost like saying to somebody, well, what about you? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, fuck, well, what else does she really have, you know? So, uh, yeah. So I, how do you feel about the dynamic between Clarice and Lecter? We kind of talked a little bit about Will and Lecter, but mm -hmm. how do you feel about the Clarice Lecter? Between both actresses or just in general? No, no, the just, two characters? just the characters themselves. Um. I like it. I like I it. I do okay. like it. I love that uh, he saw something in her in Silence of the Lambs. You know, he he you know thinks of her fondly. You know what I mean? Like, but he's he not doesn't see go... her in Silence. At least he doesn't see her as like someone to go one on one with him. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? But I feel like as though he sees she has potential. Potential. Okay. He, he, you know, he sees that in her or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that, hey, you're willing to come down. You've got ambition. You're willing to come it's down like I here. Said, there's a different look when he sees Will and when he sees Clarice. Right. Like he's yeah. holding back with her. She's holding back and he wants her to open up. She's like yeah. a delicate flower yeah. that hasn't bloomed. And I, and I also think too that, uh, we know, when she gives him the story of the lambs, I think the story does touch him or whatever, where he's like, here is a person that is you know, in a way, um, has an innocence about her or whatever, maybe that he feels uh, doesn't gonna, exist. I was going to ask you guys, like, how do you feel like how she kind of opens up, like, just naturally, after Jack told her, don't open up about your personal Well, because life. he's already, he's doing the guessing game with her. You think but maybe he's not he really wanted guessing. to talk he's... to her? Do you think maybe she wanted to open up to someone to tell him about? Oh, well, I'm sure at some point <clears throat> she did. I mean. I think even, so. Yeah, because, you know, Hannibal... Tells her, you know, her father was a cop. Yeah. Here she is, yeah, a cop, a woman. Scene, you but know? you're so 
you're so enclosed and you're so held back and, and then, no one knows anything about yeah. you because you're you're keeping all that in and, and then with that story you. you know we find out what the silence of the lambs is you know right. that story that she tells mm-hmm. him you know right yeah, and you know that face he makes you know too where he's just like thank you like thank you for that yeah like, like he was like oh, it's that's so good. it's yeah. so <laughs> intimate and it's so it, but, it tells him so much about her in that moment you but know do you what guys I mean? like where it went in hannibal um i do i'm okay with it okay. I, I like the ending of because the book because the book's different better. right than what it is in yeah hannibal. The, the ending of the book is different you know what i mean they like you go know, off together. together yeah yeah, oh, and then he's, not, read it. he's not on a plane. Yeah, he's not on a plane by himself. No. They're off together, yeah. enjoying life together. Yeah, and, and they like, wow. pretty much like you know at the the very end, it's like you know like they it's you were highly under the impression that they sleep together. They're gonna go uh, to bed yeah. together. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's I pretty. Like, wow. It's I'm pretty like intense. happy about it, but it's weird. It is weird. <laughs> and I was kind of like I didn't like I keep seeing the Jodie Foster character. I'm kind of like wow. I don't think she would do that. Yeah. I don't think she would enter into a relationship but see, with the. And, and this is why I think it's hard because we didn't get to see Jodie Foster in the movie version. We, you know, when you're reading the books, well, you see, I always do this. I do it backwards. I always read, watch the movies, then I read the books. Mm-hmm. I did that with Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. So it's like when I'm doing that, I'm like, I'm hearing their voices, everybody. seeing their faces, which is probably bad because I hear people right. that they're like that read it first. They're like, oh, well, you get to imagine it your own way, you know, in your own head. And I'm like, maybe I'm just not that the creative. Way, the way, so. no, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like you. I, I hear the voices, and then when I'm reading something like new, I'm kind of like, okay, this is like a deleted scene. Yeah, I was like, oh, it would have been cool if it was in a movie, you know. Yeah, but, you know. So I had someone ask me. It might have been one of our guests. I'm not sure, but they said like, when you read like Wolverine comics, do you hear Hugh Jackman? And I was like, no, right. I always hear like the, the 90s version. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I still yeah. hear his voice. <laughs> Even like when yeah. I read Sabretooth stuff, I hear that, that version. One, yeah, which makes me think though, like I'm sure we read Wolverine before that. What did we hear then? You know what I mean? Like the way they really always think, describe but... it was just gruff. So it's like a yeah, gruff, yeah, you know, older <laughs> and 40s I, man. Like I can remember thinking for the longest time, like if. If he was younger, Clint Eastwood would have been the ideal yeah, Wolverine been, yeah. or whatever. Except that he's tall. Yeah, he's tall, real tall. But um, off topic. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. New shit. Side topic. But, but um, yeah, I know, right? Uh, as Jerry says, it wouldn't be a podcast if you didn't go off on tangents. But but when you're reading Silence, I mean, who do you hear when you're reading Clarice? Uh, we well, yeah, Jodie Foster. I think for sure. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't really like necessarily but, when you're reading you the know, books you don't change their faces it's like it stays but it's only because you have it. something to compare to but right see, like, i think right. what pisses me off though is just like i said just finding out the ending i was kind of like that should have really always been that cat mouse they shouldn't have gotten together like i think that's what kind of pisses you me mean off knowing that. about how the book ended yeah because i'm like no clary shouldn't <laughs> be that she's a cop but you got through. your ending in the movie yeah, yeah, which I'm so happy the with other, that. The other half. But see, that, that's what I hate about the movie is the that he loses of... his fucking hand. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, he loses his hand? But you don't about. know if he's going to lose it. You think he's going to cut her hand off. Right, but you see him in the that's movie. That's what I, yes, but that's stone. what I was like, oh, he's going to cut her hand off. Well, right, but that's what I mean. I was like, I didn't like that. Well, I was then like, you I see the... I mean, what, what do you feel like? Uh, forget about the movie, like the book, the ending, them two going off into the sunset again. I mean, well, like a, I said, I haven't FBI read the and, books, but just what y'all told me yeah, right now, it's I think just, I a don't part like of that me is like, a happy ending. I don't like that. I, I like the way I saw it is, is that he was already telling her she was being shat on by the FBI. Mm-hmm. She was already kind of like, you know, uh, I know, Sam, but it's like the dude is such a horrific serial killer. Yes. You know, and, and like, that's where I try to stay on course. Like, we had this debate with Negan. Yes, we did. You yeah. know, and I was like, <laughs> She no. agrees with you, I but not like, in no. this case, I don't think. I was like, no, Negan is a bad fucking dude. I don't care what you, yeah. how he reforms. It's the same way. You got to think, if this was real life, like the way they charged him, mm-hmm. he's one of the worst serial killers in history. You probably imagine all these documentaries would be about... Oh, Doctor yeah. Hannibal I'm Lecter, sure. you know the can- yeah. Hannibal the Cannibal, you know, like that's why I liked about the news clippings in Red Dragon too. Yeah, after Will catches him, all the news clippings that come out, you know, all the stuff that he did. I was like, you gotta imagine he. This is a very ser- bad serial killer. He eats people, kills mm-hmm. people, eats them. Mm-hmm. You know, and he gets this kind of idea where he runs off with the FBI agent that was hunting him. I was like, mm, yeah, um, I don't know. I didn't like it. That. Definitely is out there. I mean, I can only. I guess the only thing I could say to that would be like, you know, not like to be cliche and be like, love is blind or whatever. For me, it's I mean, just I'm, I'm such a I'm I'm such a believer of the good bad. I no, think you're I, like I agree. More realistic. Uh, yeah, and I'm like, and no, you can't. 
Realistically, takeaway. it's not a real. This guy story, was put. So. But this, this guy was put in apart. that. Yeah. See, he was put in that prison, that special prison yeah. for him because of how heinous he was. Right. Yeah. You know? This is where me and Double A like we we have like that the Darth Vader, the because, Negan. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's because, I think in every on every coin, there's a you know two sides of a coin. So yeah, like, I mean, like you could almost say this, like if she's like <laughs> if 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 he makes if she makes him stop killing. Like, let's just say she's the only thing or whatever. It's, like, unforgiving. You know what I mean? Like, Will Money, right? He meets the broad, and then, like, he stops. He stops, <laughs> yeah. he stops becoming his wife. <laughs> he stops becoming this, like, yes. you know, Gettysburg. Like, well, one... I'm thinking of the saint now. Uh, the saint of, yeah, yeah, pretty much if you same story. It's the same yeah, story. It's the same story. Like, right? there's almost one person for the other. It's, like... Like, she keeps the, the monster same. in the cage. It's, like, two sides of the same Look, one. if he ended up with a different woman, I would be like, okay, fine. Yeah, but he ended up with the Clarice character. But that's character. just it. I'm exactly. just like, no, right. you're. She's not an ordinary woman though, and he would never be with an ordinary and woman. It's just you, you gotta think too, like, man, what would Jack think? Like, what would Jack? That's true. You know, like, man, really, like this. Well, even him, like, knows. even even in silence, you know, he tells her, like, you know, I was just, you know, did all that talk for show. Or oh, whatever. for the for all the guys. So even right. him, like, yeah. even though she looked up to but, him as someone, he was still like, well, you're beneath me. But so, so it's like you know, Jack has that deep history with. Lecter, mm -hmm. what he did, you know, and he was making them chase their tails. But I'm saying, like to her, she was probably like, Pfft. and not only that, but he's not, he's not a president. But she that. seems like very, like she admires him. Like at the ending, like when yeah. he does a handshake, I agree. they, they slowed you that. You know, I mean, I'm talking about with Jack though. Oh, with Jack, yeah, yeah like where she's like, you know, cool. Like I, I got like, oh, she almost like saw Jack like as a father figure. Yeah, I thought, that's what silent, I always, right? that's what I gather. You know, and when he went to when shake I his thought. hand, you're like, your father would be proud. You know, they have that, they show that moment that where moment. both of them are shaking yeah. hands. Yeah. Where it's kind of like, oh, look, he got, I finally got his respect now. You know, the yeah. way he kind of was seeing Will. And so I was kind of like, man, you know, after everything that he told her about Hannibal, probably about Will, all in history too, and she still goes, you know, and she, I mean, she's read all the files. She she knows what he's done to all these victims. I mean, it, it wasn't like he was just killing bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Do no. they say all his victims are? I mean, men no, or women? because they say that they say that. I, I gotta look back on Ray Dragon because they show like a whole bunch of the clippings. Yeah, and in Science of the, in Science of the Lambs, they say it like he kills the one guy from the orchestra because he thought that the guy was a terrible player. He did it so that the, the orchestra would sound better. Like he was See, like, I mean, it was like it, come on. It was yeah. when he determined to be like Well, he, he was being rude. He was playing badly. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and double Eat A double A is right. Okay, so let's let's I move. paid money for these seats, okay? It, it's like like CM like loves that, you know, Darth Vader helps his son, but I'm like, what about all the fucking Jedi's and all the kids that he killed? That's the past. In, in, <laughs> in Revenge of the Sith. I'm like, this you bastard went... Stop living in the past, you know, instead, of, instead of fighting <laughs> Obi-Wan, this guy goes to where the kids are. Yeah. I'm like, fuck that. She, she just fuck has... She, there's only certain characters she'll agree with you on, because she'll agree with you 100% on Negan, because she does not feel the way I feel about him. But, uh... Hey, that, I, that I'm indifferent kid, with Master him. Master Skywalker, See, what are we gonna do? Man, they're yeah. looking for him to protect them. That was Hawk was. And then, then this bastard, you know, room. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was killing yinglings, not younglings. <laughs> oh but um, but I okay, that's just for me though. No, I no, didn't no. like the way the book ended. I preferred the Hannibal movie ending. Yeah, I'm gonna read the book. Both, but I didn't like where they they them. that's where they put the Clarice character. I I I thought they had more respect for the Clarice character to be still you know this. She wanted to advance, you know. Yeah. And maybe you're right. Maybe because it's like that's uh, the the jumping off point for it. It's like, you know, like Silence really blew it up to make it kind of like, man, we love this Hannibal Lecter character. Then maybe you're right. I'm not sure if the book was inspired, you know, came out because. And that's why I'm like, I wonder the if he wrote it. And he's kind of like, oh, let me put these two characters together. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, you know, that's pretty much the last we've seen when you're writing. The books. I mean, obviously he's seen his characters different than when I'm seeing his characters, you know? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, not even that. I mean, maybe he just felt like, oh, well, this is like a, this would be the ending people didn't expect. Maybe people expect what you thought. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that, and I wonder if there was another ending shot for well, Hannibal. Obviously, not really. This is the whole Game of Thrones. There was 50% of people that hated it, and then there was 50% that 
Well, obviously, were, Ridley Scott wasn't a fan. That were uh, that yeah, because so he changed it. He changed you know what I mean? ending, and yeah. this is, uh, you know, I mean, I know that like with True Romance, you know what I mean, and that's his brother Tony yeah, Scott. Tony but Scott. he didn't like Tarantino's end yeah. where that. And I you know, agree Clarence, with Tony on that one. Clarence yeah. dies. He yeah. was like, no, this character. I love these characters. Like, can, can he please live? And Tarantino was like, you know, I guess. Which a director normally would just be like, well, I'm not even going to ask the writer. I'll just do whatever Especially I want. Especially when he was like no name. You know, yeah. You know? And and uh, it seems like you know, like you said, Ridley Scott maybe didn't like that. Like maybe. He didn't feel as though Clarice hey, maybe he felt the way him. I did too. Like, yeah. no, there's not. This should not be the way the serial killer <laughs> should go out. I wonder what you Thomas know? Harris thought of it. The writer, maybe he, maybe I don't know if he's one of these writers where he saw it as like, uh, like, yeah, that's fine for the movies or whatever, you know. But I have I mean, my book think version. About real you know? life serial killers, like we talked about Ted Bundy, and they're they loved all, all had, the time. They all had women at the end Even until their death. Gross Richard Ramirez. I mean, they said there yeah. were chicks riding well, yeah, Manson. I mean, yeah, you know what. what it's and weird. those are real but, life ones. But Devil A's right. So his, is, his point is, is that like this is like FBI Clarice. Yeah, and, I, and I, she's I, supposed it's to weird. be. I, I hate that people celebrate. I hate that they're serial killers on T-shirts. Honestly, I do. Yeah. Because you know what these people did is very awful. Yeah. What the Manson family did to those poor people oh, was terrible. I, I would be you know? embarrassed if I ran across. Imagine I that you're never... out somewhere and you have that on, and some victim's yeah. family sees you at Disneyland. Yeah. Exactly. They'd be like, I'm never what wearing a Manson shirt. I will never wear a bunny shirt. I'm never gonna wear any that killed someone. Yeah, that hurt someone's family like that. Like no, I'm, I'm I, gonna... I would think that about myself. But I have a koozie that has their names on it. But it's but because it's... it's for the band, not for them. But their names are on it. But I mean, you're never gonna see me wear a shirt with their Got face you. on it. You yeah, know what I mean, like supporting I, what they did. Yeah, I'm like no, right. because what they did was terrible. And yeah. this is what I would imagine. If the real Hannibal Lecter, if there was a real Hannibal Lecter, you know, damn well there'd be fucking. Oh, you know, docu series on, yeah. on him, yeah. and he right would day. be on shirts. Yeah. And again, I think that we like the character until Amy and myself is because through. Oh, I love the character. Yeah, yeah. Through, because through the, the movies, everything we see yeah. the charming side. Yes. We see yes. the things that no, I think. How can you he know? Fucking top notch. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like I think even Bundy didn't he have that one lady that he lived with or whatever that was like, no, he never did nothing. Yeah. To me. he never hurt me. He mm -hmm. never. And, and he that's was why just she never a, suspected. He was just a, a nice guy or whatever. He just had a it, preference. You know what I mean? I've even heard about serial killers that the kids, their kids are like, he was nothing but a great oh, dad. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah. man, it must be hard for them to, someone to be like, man, you should um, fucking hate him. He's a murderer. It's like, yeah, Richard yeah, Klutzky, whatever. There, oh, there's man. multiple. Yeah. yeah, there's multiple. Yeah. And they're like, all he ever was to me was a good dad. Right. So how can you tell them, oh, I hate this guy. He's a fucking murderer or whatever. It's like, I know and I feel for those people, but... He was my dad. He was my dad. You know I what I mean. So that's got to that's got to suck. Uh, guys, we're fastly uh, approaching the next break, uh, and then we'll get into um, comments. Yeah, we'll get into and, some, some comments, yeah. and we'll probably talk after that. We're still uh, rolling on Hannibal. We're still rolling so. on Hannibal, guys. Uh, we want to hear October your October first. Let's go, man. First Friday. Spooky season is in effect. We'll be right back. It's not so funny to say that when there's really no coming back if you're hearing the show on and I have to use it again. on audio. Okay. And Untamable Amy's got to go to the okay. ladies' room. So let's hit up the comments here, Double A, to see if we missed anything. Uh, Jason says, do you think the new Halloween movie will be any good? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, but when he said there was going to be a trilogy of the new one, I was like, okay. So I guess. But this the first... is the, first, the third one, right? Already? No, this is going to be the second one. Ah, the second one. And they're bringing Anthony Michael Hall as Tommy. You remember the the two kids that they babysit in the very oh, first movie? Wow. So I think Michael Hall is coming back okay. as Tommy. So okay. I don't know. When he said trilogy, I was like, okay, so Michael's not going to die in the first one, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not going to die in the second one. So, I mean, yeah, I like. I like Halloween. I like the when it came out, and I'll probably be watching the new one when it comes out. I'll, I'll check it out. Um, I think that it'd be worth the watch. It's you know, it's, it's a, horror. It's Halloween. It's, it's you know, Michael yeah. Myers. Um, Double A, what do you think about like these? And I just saw this. You know, again, thanks to the boys over at Now Watch This, but uh, I believe Lucky put up a post about the um, uh, the different timelines. Right? There's like a there's a there's a oh yeah so everything starts with so, Halloween but okay. then it branches off yeah right? so like this new one doesn't even follow part two okay this one is just this is the Michael Myers that Carpenter did where he had no relation to Jamie Lee Curtis it was just this creature this ah. killing creature this killing machine that has no other purpose than just killing okay and so this new one is a sequel to Halloween part one. Oh, interesting. Okay. After they did Halloween 1 and 2, 3 was supposed to be a whole new story. It was supposed to be an anthology, which I right. thought would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been cool. 
so three is kind of not even like seen as part of the Halloween. Right. Then there's like four, five, and six, which is it's the Loomis, it's Michael, it's the niece of Michael now. Yeah. With Daniel Harris. Yeah. And then the one with Paul Rudd, there's that one where he's part of a cult. Michael, That's right. you know, so those movies aren't even like really below. Those are kind of like thrown out. The, okay. Those are always being ignored. Then the Michael, the Rob Zombie one, I think is supposed to be a sequel of Halloween part one and two. <laughs> And it kind of shows a more backstory, which I hated. I hated that he gave Michael an origin. You okay. know, he's a loving brother to Jamie, and yeah. he comes from this dysfunctional family. You know, the whole redneck thing trailer. Yeah, you know, he's killing the animals. Yeah, kind of like traditional yeah, serial killer like, stuff. Oh, you're just kind of I'm making a- it. You're just kind of making it like the the obvious. You know. Yeah. Uh, I did like how Tyler Maine was big. Yeah, that was pretty is fucking it, scary. Is he still doing the? No, it was only the Halloween one and two, the okay. Rob Zombie movies, okay. and then now this new series kind of just ignores. It's funny though; they always ignore though that middle part, that four, five, and six, you know, and the curse of Michael. And then H uh, two O, that one's even kind of like, that one was supposed to be a, a direct sequel of Halloween one and two, H two O, and that was ignoring four, five, and six. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like. This one ignores these movies. This one ignores this movie. So it's kind of like the, the Halloween franchise. It's really fucked up and hard to understand. If, okay. If you just get it, but I would just recommend seeing the first one. Okay. <laughs> Part two is good. Uh, I don't like the zombie movies. I don't like the Rob Zombie movies. Ah, oh, at all. Because like I said, they just, just gave them an origin. Okay. I don't think so either. I didn't really care for yeah. the Rob Zombie. Uh, the one with Daniel Harris, I really don't care about those either. I, I tried like the, seeing the them. one and two. The Carpenter ones were good. Uh, I never caught that third one, so I the third one's good. It's actually it, good. Like, don't even think about it like as a Halloween, as a Halloween movie. movie. It's just a really good yeah. movie. It's a good horror movie. And I remember that uh, some of the later ones. I mean, I guess they were like I just I don't remember them specifically. Yeah, and whatever, they're not really you know, any but... good either. The mask looks terrible. Yeah, that hmm. mask is horrible. Okay, <laughs> okay. They got to get back to the old Shatner mask. Huh? The yeah, old Shatner go back mask. to the Captain Kirk. Uh, Rizzo's in the house and he says uh, trailer looked good at least yeah I agree uh, it says hopefully better than the last one yeah and it's called uh, Rick, Rick Conning Rick Conning <laughs> as of yeah I mean there's, as it's as funny exists, that might yeah. be the only franchise that really is just like oh forget about these movies forget about these movies because right. I think Nightmare kind of went on like they it, they ignore part two in Nightmare like it's like Dream Warriors is supposed to be a direct sequel of part one yeah and then it's like Dream child dream yeah. master <laughs> they just went they went for it on and then the party of 13 movies i mean they're just like one big All, story yeah it's like yeah that one's hard to kind of follow the too, solid one too it's solid is actually pretty cool because it is actually one big story now that's me yeah, i like i like that yeah and i, it, I do think the saw yeah. it's gruesome but there actually is like a whole story of With, why he yeah. does it and i was like oh wow that's okay. actually pretty interesting that you have to kind of watch all of them to see why he's doing it to these people. I dig that. Yeah, I and so that. like it's really one big story. I was right. kind of like, oh wow, that's cool. That's pretty cool. They're yeah. all connected, right? Yeah, because very connected. Yes, yeah. yes. I think I only seen the first, maybe second one. Saw. Saw. Yeah. Yeah, the first ones are really awesome. I haven't seen that Spyro. No, the I Chris haven't Rock seen that one. That was supposed to be a yet. spinoff. A, so. a spinoff, right? But yeah. uh, your man, Sean Patrick Finery, comes out yeah. with about two or three of them. Is that right? Yeah. Check him out. Check those out. I mean, those are okay. I, I dig Saw. I mean, I'll watch it. You know, and like I said, if you're, if you're in the story, that's a, that was a pretty unique one. You know? Okay. Check those some of those later ones out. I know we and uh, your brother watched one at the theaters, and I was like, sometimes I feel like I'm watching those movies, like Halloween and all that, and it just they all run together. I'm like, I'm like I don't know what happened. I'm here for oh, like, the I'm, killing I'm, and like yeah. the, the scares and be like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know, well, but, that's why I kind of thought the Saw one was interesting because it was like for the first time, it was like, oh, wow, this horror franchise actually has a story to tell. Okay, <laughs> you know, no, that is you cool. know, that I was like, cool. oh wow, okay. I did the detective stuff and all that for sure. Play a game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, this is the month for it, right? Guys? That guy was super nice, too. I got to meet him once, super nice. Who's that? Tobin. Oh, Tobin really? No. no kidding. When uh, we met Elvira, oh. he was there. The guy who played Jigsaw? Yeah, oh, shit. yeah, he was real nice. Yeah. Did he sign anything for you? Yeah, well, I didn't have like a big salt thing. I had like this Blu ray that had like movies one through eight. I think okay. at the time, so he signed that. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah nice. An autograph is an autograph. An autograph. Mm-hmm. And he's in a lot of stuff too. He's yeah, in, he's, he's in, like he's so much stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's stuff. where I would look back, and I'm like, oh shit, it's Tobin. Yeah, so, yeah <laughs> he's known for that now. Right? You know, like I was watching a line of fire. 
And he comes out like in the beginning of that movie. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, wow, shit. Damn, like, no shit. Know, Pretty know? cool. Where's everybody at tonight? What's going on? It's Friday, sis, and it's... Uh, it's is everybody getting their party on? Yeah. People think that uh, COVID is over. Watching Venom. So, yeah, they might be oh, watching, well, yeah, watching yeah, Venom. Right, watching Adam's that. family, Venom. Oh, they're all yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, that streaming, too, it. so we might watch it tomorrow night. Wait, is it already out? Mm-hmm. Is, 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 okay. Mm-hmm. On HBO was, Max? Or? What is it streaming to? On HBO? I believe so. Kayla hmm. was telling me about it yesterday. So we might. We, we watched might, the first one together in the theaters. We might do popcorn so. pizza here. Uh, nice. Watch it tomorrow. Nice. So. That'll be a, a, a good, a good uh, hangout, hang in the house. Good family night. time. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jason says, good night, bros. Jason, good, night, good night, Jason. We appreciate you being here, brother. Um, all right, guys. Let's get back into the conversation here. Uh, maybe, I don't know if we're going to wrap it up, but we'll definitely... Keep it going. And see well, what I want to hear about this from you guys because I know you just definitely love this next part. Definitely, that we're probably going to be talking about. So. Yeah. All right. Let's get to it then. Right now. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out uh, there during our break. Uh, we do to read through the comments from the Friday nighters that are out in the audience, commenting, Ooh. listening along as we go along here on Facebook Live, and we invite you to come and do the same thing. Come and hang with us. Come and uh, give us your comments on the topic that we're talking about live and in person. If you ever want to hear those comments. Check it out on YouTube or on Facebook where you, uh, as long as this video exists up there, it'll be there and you can watch it. Uh, but eventually they boot it off, but it's still available on YouTube and you can hear the full uncut and unabridged version of the show, yeah. uh, including uh, Friday Night uh, Faithful members' comments uh, that decide they want to tell us what they think about what we're talking about or ask about other stuff and then we end up talking about that. Like we talked about Halloween, the new one right now, <laughs> and if we're going to watch it. So... Uh, but the next thing we want to talk about, guys, I wanted to bring up is that, you know, we've talked about the movies and we've talked about some of the books quite extensively. Um, no, I'm not going to lie, though. I never saw that Rising. last movie they did. The yeah. Hannibal Rising. <clears throat> okay, well, before we get to the show, then let's talk about that one. because i never seen it. I don't know if you guys have. Yeah. That's we, actually one we, of my favorite ones. We both oh, awesome. Seen it. She really okay. likes awesome. that I want to hear yeah. this one. And I've got the book, I've I got the book here, too. So, uh, since I'll let you take it away, but uh, Hannibal Rising um, is the... Uh, and I'm showing the book here for the uh, um, the uh, visual watchers right now that are like on YouTube. And if you ever want to see that, go on YouTube and check it out. But this is the fourth book, and it is a telling of the history of Hannibal, like how he came up, in a sense, how he became who he is, you know, how he became a doctor, <laughs> how he became, you know, why he is this way. Earlier, Aaron B. asked the question in the comments, you know, what, what happened in Hannibal's life led him to be this way? Well, this is the book that you will get that story from. And they also made a movie of it, which was uh, Hannibal Rising. You know, I don't have a copy of that with me. I don't, I don't bring that with me. Either. I, I think, think we I have, have a copy one. of the movie at home, but we, did, we didn't bring it. Um, now, I've known for a long time that this is one of Untamable Amy's favorite uh, awesome. of the movie. Okay. Uh, of all the stuff we've talked about, uh, not the book. The book is fantastic, uh, but the the movie is my least favorite of the movies and of the uh, amongst the show and all that. It doesn't mean that I don't like it. I think it's a fine movie. Uh, again, in the book, I love the book is vastly better in my opinion. Uh, but it's it's I still think it's an okay movie. I think it's worth a watch, especially now during like Halloween season and that we've talked about the character and like if you want like. You know a little bit extra now i don't know uh the actor or anything sister are you pulling that stuff up to, yeah so i believe if i'm correct i think i remember a guy from somewhere is it uh, from something else um i think I it's it gaspard. gaspard gaspard okay gaspard, i cannot pronounce his last name it's u-l-l-i-e-l gillian you gaspard yulio okay yuli yulio Okay. Yes, he's actually young, obviously, because he plays young Hannibal Lecter. Right. And when was that movie made? Um, two thousand seven. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Um, so, damn, that movie is already old too. Now. Yeah, that one's pretty old too. But um, basically, basically, it gives you Hannibal Lecter when he's a child. Um. Yeah. So it starts like where he's so, growing up in the country he's in, and right. So he he witnesses his, his the death of his parents. It's like at the end of World War Two. I'm actually reading here, so you guys can just get it. Well, you, mm-hmm. well, tell movie. me why why you like the movie. So much. I, why I really is, like, like this movie favorites? because it tells you kind of just what Aaron B asked. Why is he the way that he is, and what happened to him in his life to make him that way? Kind of that missing and, origin story, the what you didn't like about the Michael Myers thing, you know what I mean? Well, because I like John Carpenter's description. Yeah. It's just supposed to be a force of nature. I agree. It? You know, that's so, cool. but this one is kind of like, well, why was he so? If he had such a brilliant career, in the career field that he did chose, choose, why is he the way he is though? Because he could he not suppress that 
killer instinct in him. So, so I'm wondering, is, does the movie kind of show that? Like, does it show him where, it like, does. I think it's it, just yeah. the overwhelming it has a lot to feeling? Do when he was younger, so yeah, his witnesses the death of his parents and at the end of World War II. So he has no home. It's him, and he has a sister. It's him and his ah, younger sister. sister. Okay. His name is her name is Misha. And um, these see they never even come close to right. mentioning that in the movies <clears throat> at all. So at all, I don't think at all they mentioned no. no. his sister. <laughs> Anything about someone. his yeah. family, you know. Um, but these uh, I I don't know these men these aren't these uh, servicemen find him. I don't know what side they're on in the world. They're on the bat. They're like the Germans. The Germans. Okay, okay. So they're they, Nazis. they okay. find him yeah. and, and the, he's his like sisters. in like Lithuania. Like he's like yeah. Lithuanian. That's his like real origin. Kind of in the Soviet territory. So yeah. They find mm -hmm. them and you know they have no home, no family, and everything. And it's cold as fuck. It's that snowing. Soviets, yeah. They're going hungry. Basically. And they're they're wealthy. His family was wealthy. Hannibal's yeah. family because it's like a big. House like well, that shit didn't matter when yeah. Stalin no. and Hitler yeah. came, yeah. and they're like bombed out and all that. So they come there and like they're like we're gonna hold up here or whatever. Especially if they're supporters, or were they supposed to be supporters of the the czars? I think so. I'm not Probably. sure they say exactly or whatever, but I know Stalin goes after a lot of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. um but it's you that know, classic case, like, they've been beaten, they've run out, and they've got nowhere to go, and they're trying to get away. Or yeah, whatever. and they're These going soldiers. hungry because they're hiding out. They're going hungry, mm -hmm. you know, and they, I guess, there's no wildlife or anything because it's fucking freezing. It's winter. Yeah, they're all yeah. hibernating. And, um, well, you know, Hannibal's young. He's maybe, like, 10. I think oh, so. Oh, shit. And Misha's, yeah. like, five. Damn. Five? Yeah. Well, she starts getting sick because it's so cold. And they're, and like... the soldiers are basically, like... She's gonna die anyway, so let's just let's just eat damn, it. damn. So they cannibalize. So they soldiers do are doing the cannibalize. So they do that to survive. Oof. But kind cannibals like getting sick too, so he eats not knowing. Ugh, so damn. then That's he, enough. you know, they survive. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't talk about her. Yeah, either. they survive. <laughs> he grows up, and um, he's already like he's in his teens, and um, he goes to find his uncle. That's the only like survivor that he has left. Uncle. Um, okay. he, mm -hmm. he finds uh, um, <clears throat> that his uncle's dead, and that he was living with this Asian woman, the uncle, mm -hmm. and they because they were in a relationship together, and she's obviously he stays there with her, and you know um, that's his home, and then they end up falling in love. Oh shit! Yeah, because okay. she's young. She's young, and his uncle was older, oh. so she's a young <laughs> yeah. Asian woman, okay. and then uh, her and. Hannibal kind of you, you see that they're involved and but his goal is revenge he wants revenge on the men he's like obsessed, with he's obsessed okay so he's kind of still he's instead of embracing his new life maybe see because I right. think he knows but that they like, killed the his, his sister but he doesn't know that, that they fed her the, to him right Oof. so he's like I'm gonna fucking find these guys so his whole life is all about revenge and he's going to school to um, be a doctor. He's, he's a brilliant school. surgeon. He's in the morgue student. and he's doing all this stuff. And, and that's mm -hmm. the one thing they pointed out too, remember that the surgical techniques that he uses to kill his victims. Yeah. Right. right. Because yeah. he studied all that when yeah. he was young. Like, you know, being there at that home and he has all this money from his family and everything. So he has the ability to go to school and he's learning. And Excuse me. But during this whole time, he's, he's hunting these men and learning about them and their daily lives and routines because his plan is to kill them. And how is that actor's portrayal of Hannibal? I really loved him. I don't know him from anything what else. What do you think, Sam? Uh, he's fine. I mean, he, he's got really nothing to base his performance on. He can't be Anthony Hopkins. No. Because obviously that's a more sophisticated right. actor. So he's got to portray but he's, this. he's a young Hannibal actor. So that's what not, I mean. Yeah. So he's got to portray him he's kind of with developed. all these emotions. Right. Yeah. Something that you really don't see Lecter. I think the he Anthony did Hopkins, a magnificent job. Like Anthony Hopkins does a great job of not showing anything emotions. of Lecter. Yeah. Anything. Especially facial expressions. Exactly. And I think it's, that this It's like a guy, poker game with this dude, right. right? I you really know? think that this guy right. portrayed those so that's got to be kind of hard don't you think you kind of like oh you yeah you kind of have to come up with your own yeah version of Lecter. i don't think that the movie i don't know I mean, if maybe it, it again you the... can't it can't be this Lecter that we yeah. know obviously no like he's not going to be mads mickelson he's not going to be Anthony no. hopkins no. you know that's just a, a far advanced Lecter. yeah this know? is by far the youngest version of him as we right. see where there is probably some still raw emotions him developing but, into what we of what he becomes he, right. he's also really like 
deadened himself in a ways already. After his sister, it was like that was kind of it. Like, but this 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 uh, uncle's wife does she, is she kind of responsible for kind of making him kind of like the lover of kind of like. I think these she's fine taste she's almost Japanese. Lady Murasaka. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So but she's... is it because of her that maybe he likes art or maybe he appreciates I think that she did opera. have I think she did have a lot to do with it because she so was too. a very f- yeah. sophisticated woman mm-hmm. and I don't think that the uncle and her were were married not, but just arm candy. I think right? that was his his <laughs> I don't know the proper term the sophisticated word but that was like his his lady, you know, like they his lived trophy together. wife. Yeah, yeah, you know like so... it, it it wasn't and... a wife back then because she was not Ah, they okay. she wasn't from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. She's okay. a foreigner, yeah, she's you know. Foreigner. And okay. like a mistress, but yeah, because when guess, he when or... he gets there and he goes into it, like it's very like Japanese, and she even has like mm-hmm. um, uh, samurai oh, really? armor, all that stuff, and you okay. see the mask. Okay. So that's really awesome that she gets that. The mask is is damn really. It's input into that. Yeah, like they kind of incorporate that. I don't know if that's really in the book or whatever, but like that's yeah, that's I really they're like trying that to incorporate that at one point. Movie, he, yeah. you know, takes on and, and wears that. So maybe <laughs> things like that people found kind of like campy or you know, I it, it's a gang. Was awesome. It's a gang. You're trying to do something to connect back to silence, right? You know, it's like the Godfather three. Why that one's not really talked about, like as far as Godfather one and two. Yeah, keep going back to. Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. Now you're judging this guy yeah. to Anthony Hopkins. He's silenced to Hannibal. And it's kind of like, well, we're not used to seeing Lecter this way, right? right, right. We're not used to seeing him being vulnerable. Right. You know? no. <laughs> right. And this kid has to kind of do a job yeah. of portraying this other kind of Lecter that we see where he be, you know, this is like a wild Lecter, you know? And I think people maybe didn't like it too, maybe doubly because of the reasons, like you said, with the Michael Myers thing during the break was that, you know, like, well, it's better when there is no origin, when it's just like, just madness out of nowhere. Like, you know, that's kind of it's more a frightening. That just became a serial killer. I snapped yeah. him. But, but yeah. I agree with, you know, until maybe that, you know, and in reading the book, and I like the movie fine. I like it just fine. It's like, I could go watch it. You know what I mean? And it's I, a short movie, right? It's not longer. It's pretty short. Yeah, yeah. I think I own a copy. And I was engaged enough by the story that the guy's portrayal, which is not bad. Uh, again, it's he's up against, you know, b- really big. And again, you big can't. Boots, but this you is can't, like the rise. Of right, and, and, right. I was going to say, Hannibal, again, you can't, you can't even look to them for your portrayal because you got to do something brand new. Exactly. You know, you got to exactly. show this other kind of Lecter that we've and, never seen before. It made me admire Hannibal Lecter more because everything he did and the way that he was and what he became, I really liked the brother and sister story, the aspect. Kind because of sounds you like a little Magneto. Because, yeah, because you yeah. don't know that. Yeah. See, and CM always gives me shit about wanting an origin story because I'm all about, like, <laughs> I want to know what, like, I want to know who the Joker was before he was the Joker, you know? Like, I always love an origin story. Like, I'd rather watch an origin story on a character rather than watch just a movie. But I think and, I like what Double A is saying about that, is that it's like, okay, well, here it is. It's like, now you humanize this monster. And so it's like, it, what what people do is they tend to sympathize and be like, oh well, that's why he did it. That makes it okay. Well, His no. sister got fed to him. It's okay that he murdered all these people. <laughs> think about think about what your mind becomes if that happened to you. Yeah, I agree. But does that make it okay? No, that's it's not okay. But and see, Double A always puts no me control. in my place by saying, imagine if it was your family member that got eaten. Imagine that Hannibal ate me. Right. Then you'd be like, oh, what, you're going to become the next Hannibal Lecter because now you're mad because your brother got eaten? So you're going to be like, well, you know, it's like, it's not, he's right about that. It's like, you know, know? I watch SVU all the time, Mm -hmm. Charlie, Mm -hmm. you know, know, and Mm -hmm. a lot of the stories is about like, oh, they are. Yeah, they're ugly. Yeah, they're ugly stories. And stuff. And a lot of the fucking pedophiles and everything are pedophiles because they were abused when they were children. That's very common. I've told my wife I have a hard time watching those shows after a while because you just keep hearing those kind of stories, stories that you're just kind of. And not every single one is about that. No, but but after a a while, it's kind of like, after a while, it's kind of hard to hear those kind of stories. After I watch like six or seven episodes, sometimes I have dreams or nightmares. Like, I, I've told you, I listen I to, to slow that. Down yeah. watching them. I listen to just one but, true crime podcast, but sometimes it's so awful that I'm like, I can't listen to it for a while. Yeah. Like, I haven't listened yeah. to it for a while because it was yeah. already like, like it messes in your with head. you. Yeah, it messes it gets with in your you. Head. And, and it's people that do and this awful is just, shit. This is just us listening to stuff that is not even there. It's in different countries. That's never people we would never right. know. This happened to Hannibal. 
this was his blood, his sister. Right. You know. What would your ideal origin have been for him? If they did um, come in, just him snapping maybe? Just... No, I actually like this a lot. I, I like it. Okay. And in fact, it's funny because we talk about the quotability of the movies. I can't think of any quotes from that movie, the Hannibal Rising movie. But my favorite quote from the books is in that book. I wanted to read it for you guys in this book. So uh, I think it happens towards the end or whatever. Uh, I always keep it marked here or whatever. I think he finally... All that all that was uh, left of his sister that they buried was her bones. They put them in a pot and they buried the pot. Mm. I think he went to go find that pot and he, he buries the pot there at his old home. Once he gets revenge on the soldiers, he gets them one by one. And it's kind of fun in that sense, the movie, where you're like, oh shit, he's hunting them down and he gets them. And it's like, you know, this lady Murasaka can see that he's becoming something else. Mm-hmm. than a man and she's like you can stop and wants him to be like don't be like this you yeah. know what i mean you're brilliant yeah. but she's it, telling him but like he, i love i love you like you have me and we can put this behind us and but he, it's already like he's like no like no i no. they need to all die and he's see, okay, he's and you can kind of understand that part mm-hmm. but then once he starts going off on his own where he becomes well, a serial already, killer. Already, well, yeah, he's already... But he could have stopped right there with those soldiers and, you know, fine, I mean, get I your think, revenge on I would there. think your mind's already so... But now you got to taste for meat. That's the problem, though. <laughs> right. Yeah. He starts like, like, ooh, this is pretty good. <laughs> so let me read this to you guys real quick. And again, I, I keep this marked in this book because this is my favorite uh, part of... of uh, it's the one part that I remember, like, out of all the books in, in my head for most of the time. Oh, wow. nice. But this is already when he buries the bones of his sister, What whatever remains, quote-unquote, were left. Um, and they're, they mentioned uh, Caesar. That's a horse. It says here, he stood at the head of the grave. At the sound of Hannibal's voice, Caesar raised his head from cropping. Misha, we take comfort in knowing that there is no God, that you are not enslaved in a heaven, made to kiss God's ass forever. Yeah. What you have is better than paradise. You have blessed oblivion. I miss you every day. And then it says, Hannibal filled the grave down with dirt with his hands. He covered the grave with pine needles, leaves, and twigs, and looked like the and looked at it looked like the rest of the forest floor. In a small clearing, in some distance from the grave, uh, Dortlich sat gagged and bound to a tree. Hannibal and Caesar joined him. This is the last guy. Dortlich is the last guy he has to get. But man, that part to me. So he's an atheist too. <laughs> well, well, also. You, 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 you begin to see that he says, and we know this, right? Because this comes up in all the versions where he says, "I collect church clippings of, of when the roof caves in." Because what God does that, what happened to him made him turn his back to God. Of course. It made him of course. say, there, "There's no God. No God would allow this to happen." And if he was, you know, this is he. I, when I just been rewatching the show, which we're going to get to next, but in the show, you know, he. Uh, the Mads Mikkelsen version, he brings this up to Will. He's he's uh, like, well, what do you think about the the roof they caved in on these thirty uh, uh, nuns that were you know worshiping or whatever? You know what I mean? Like, where's God in that? You know what I mean? And he brings this up to Clarice also, right? He, he says, I collect I collect uh, roof collapses of churches. I, I you know he finds it hilarious because he's like, you believe this, but yet these things happen to people praising him, yeah. right? Right? You know what I mean? And it's like he's trying to make you see something. Um, give you something difficult to explain why would your most devout worshipers be destroyed by you or whatever you know what i mean so to him he's like you know you don't exist you know what i mean that's the only that could be the only resolution or whatever and i thought it was beautiful how he's telling his sister you have something better than a heaven heaven is a prison you have you have oblivion you have there's nothing there's nothingness (laughs) you know um you know Kind of grim, can be kind of grim. Very grim. Well, you, know? you, you mentioned that there was uh, no specific lines that you can remember. And I think one of the last guys he kills, I don't know if it was the, the soldier that you mentioned, but mm-hmm. they end up on a boat. I forget how. And Lady Marisak is there. And, I think uh, I know what line you're going to yeah, say. Go ahead. What does he say? This is the only one I can remember, even though I really love the movie. And, mm-hmm. um, but he's on top of the, the, the guy and he's gonna kill him he has a knife and she's telling him she's behind him and she's like you know you don't have to do this like you have me you know and he can't do it he i mean he he, he can't do what she's asking he can't not stop killing the right. guy he's like, like he's got that, kill no this is gonna, it's not gonna stop it so he starts carving into in his Ugh. into his chest and Ooh. he he says m for misha yeah that's and the line he, I remember too. Kills. I did remember that line after I said I didn't remember any lines. I remember yeah. that particular line. Um, I felt like that was like a cheap version of this. Really? Like only only okay. because 
the book is really beautiful and it really fleshes out that like the movie is enough to be like i kind of want to know more and it's good but it didn't do the good job that the book did of of like you know and, and i guess it's because it was probably like we're doing it without anthony hopkins it's like a really like a nobody cast although there are guys that you see and you'd be like oh that guy like he's always a scumbag you know what i mean and it was like you know i guess they were just unsure of themselves or whatever and so that shows okay. through in the movie uh that they were unsure of themselves. it's still a good movie it's like it's okay there's nothing wrong with it um it's not on the it, it it's not on the levels of all those other ones left. of the movies to me it's the bottom of the movies. okay so obviously it's below the show as well obviously that's your least favorite mm -hmm. amy where, where is it rank for you um you love the movie i really do love that movie I... <clears throat> you know what it's tough because i really love silence so but would you watch it more than hannibal yes and I would, would you say, watch it more than Red Dragon? Yes. Okay, so that's like your number two there. Yeah, I would say maybe okay. it's a it's it's tough between silence, but yeah, probably my number two. Yeah. I think it's because she likes origin stories this and I, the, the brother well, sister stories. Like, this is like, what I always yeah. see. It's like which movie would you watch more? Which movie would you actually pop in where you know you know and right. I don't yeah. really give a shit what people yeah. say honestly. I mean you yeah. love it. You know, it's like yeah. that's cool. You no, know it, no, you know? I you know, and like I don't I want said, you to watch it just one time. Yeah, I want to watch it. No, that sounds really you interesting. You've got to watch, watch that one. You've got to watch Manhunter. Yes. Then we got to talk about. Yeah, about, gotta we got to we got to sure. at least do a recap of like what because we thought about this. I think I've heard y'all mention it before, but I've never seen it, and yeah. you don't have it, right? I don't think you own it. I don't think I own that yeah. one. Yeah, because I opted we'll for this version from Adamantium tonight, so I can. Yeah, I wanted. That's the reason why I got this one. Yeah, because I have it had it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I always ran across yeah. that version or whatever. You know what I mean? I was like, ah, oh, damn it! I want the one with the Anthony Hopkins ones, like in a in a box. The three, those three in a box, yeah. which you don't really find. You know what I mean? And I'm I was sure they're really, gonna. I was really surprised when I actually came on this one. Yeah, because I thought they were gonna put Red Dragon. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> with this one. Yeah, and when I saw Mail in there, I was like, "Holy shit!" And in fact, me and your brother talked about that for a while. Me and Friday Night at Will, we were like, "Man, where's one with all three Anthony Hopkins one?" And he kept saying the same thing. We're like, "They, they always put they throw Manhunter in there." Yeah. You know, with, not that it's a bad movie, but you're just trying to get the three Hopkins. Well, ones it's weird because his face is on there, right? So you're mm -hmm. thinking that yeah, he's gonna... it's all three. <laughs> yeah, and oddly, his face is not on the one I have. It's just the mask. You know what I mean? Which, uh, which I don't even know if that that doesn't even come to play into the Manhunter one or whatever. No, no, not at but all. It be... That's it's only in that one movie. Yeah, in Silence. It became <laughs> symbolic with him though, right? Yeah. Like they show it in yeah. Hannibal, right? The, you know, Barney gets it. That's kind of cool. Verger puts it on, <laughs> yeah. and then later he makes him wear it at the end. You know what I mean? So it's like it's there, you know, but. Um, I don't know where we're at if we're enough time to start the next thing in the oh, last let's start, Yeah, let's start with, okay. the, with Hannibal. All right, Tell guys. me how, how this series is so much different than... <laughs> so, I'll start by saying Untamable Amy started it first. Okay. It was a... Oh, nice. It's, nice. It's, it's, it was an NBC show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which, Four seasons, right? Yeah, three. Oh, three. three yeah. Seasons, okay. Yeah. okay. If you watch it, when I started watching it, I was like, I cannot believe this shit was on fucking NBC because it <laughs> can get pretty graphic. Uh, but until Amy was watching it, she was like, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. I was like, I'll watch it. I'll why, watch it, I'll watch why it. didn't you? Because you're such a big fan of Hannibal. How come you didn't start <clears throat> watching? Um, I don't know what it was. Was it, it Matt Mickelson? No. Cause I, I, I don't know at what point I liked him already. Cause from being yeah. the chief, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I thought he was cool. And I thought that it was neat that it was going to be. I, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a, a... I don't think you truly started loving him until you saw Oh, him. no, that was... Like, <laughs> like, I, I oh, liked I him, know, yeah. but then it became, like, yeah. really in love. Obsession. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Superman crush on Matt Mickelson. But um, I don't know what it was about it. Maybe that it was... I didn't expect a lot from NBC, like, as a show. And okay, I was like, so you're kind of like, eh, it's going to well, be low. Right. A low budget. Yes. You know, and bullshit. I was like, man, this that would need to be, like... I'm thinking to myself about what I know about Did Hannibal. Did they throw you off that it was Will Graham, too? Did that throw I don't know if Adamantium would like it. No, I think that he would like you it. You think so? I think that he would. You I know him better than I do I, as far I, as movies and, and, and... Well, what about Will? Did you ever get him to start watching it? No. I didn't, and I don't know why I didn't get him to start watching it or not. If I didn't push hard enough, because usually but... he, you two appreciate the same, yeah, same kind of stuff. And, and let me tell you, like when I the re it's all about how you ingest it too. Like you know, like I recently been wa I watched it, started watching it when it was like, I could watch it all together, like with no breaks, like yeah, you we know, had already been out. So you yeah, got like to watch I can watch it like a like an HBO show, or whatever, where it's like the solid 40, 45, 42 minutes. There's no commercials or whatever, because I could see it being kind of hard as a as a um no, watching it like uh on tv 
and having to wait a week. Like, I might not have been able to commit. I actually like it. That's why I, I see. And I think I did start watching it when he was coming out. I can't, yeah, I, I can't binge watch. It's hard for me to binge okay. watch. Okay, okay. I, I prefer binge watching. Oh, I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't. I can't do that. Okay. Um, so, whatever it was. But then, like, you know, I think I watched, like, one or two. Oh, and then I was going to say, is it because it had the Will Graham character? No, that, no? Didn't, that didn't bother me at all. Okay. And, and uh, again, uh, so it's Hannibal Lecter played by Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, Hugh Dancy plays uh, Will Graham. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was fine. And I also think I wasn't sure, like, where it came in, like, where is this it an is origin? Or is yeah, this... yeah. I guess so. I guess they're showing everything before Manhunter, before Red Dragon. Yes. And that got me really psyched. I was like, okay, I want to see it. But but look, I want you to tell your part <laughs> first, sis. Go go ahead. So you started watching it, and what were your thoughts of it at that point? Well, obviously, I love... I mean, Matt Mickelson is like... He's sexy. He's, <laughs> he's just attractive, and he's he's out of a lecture, you know? He's like a younger Look at that. Hannibal Lecter. And he looks good too, right there, just on this picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you see it right here, I mean, he just, he looks like he can be an Anthony Hopkins. Right. You yeah. Know? I'm and sure we're showing just... the cover of the three, uh, the three Blu-ray box set that's out. Well, I mean, you can now. see that you just, there's something about him that you can feel that He's presence, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like you want to know him. Yeah. And, you know, uh, those lamps do look good. <laughs> yeah, I also got gifted for Christmas. I just want to show up really I know, cool. Amy, I know you're in the middle of certain No, go ahead. It's the, I, uh, I, the, we the, need to really get the, into that book. <laughs> the Feeding Hannibal, Feeding Hannibal cookbook, cookbook that came out. Because, guys, I will get into it. And I will tell you why I think Double A would like it versus why you don't, don't think that I might not let you hold that real quick. Uh, but go ahead. Continue saying. You were starting to watch A it. A connoisseur's or... cookbook. you got to be connoisseur to. Did you, did you know right away, sis, like when you heard, like, hey, I'm going to start watching this no matter what? Or was I was it like... very, like, I'm going to watch it, like, no doubt. Because I want to see. Oh, Jillian Anderson's in here, too. Mm -hmm. huh? I want to see what. That's why she's wearing her Scully shirt today. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. um, and Lord Fishburne. She Jack. actually plays mm -hmm. Hannibal's psychiatrist. Oh, really? Yes. Holy shit. So, it's a really... I, I don't know. Now, I don't know. Maybe maybe Adamantium would, would like it. I don't know. It's just... It is a very different story. Well, it's like very... I said, them two were always my favorite. The Will Graham Lecter. That was always my favorite when I saw Manhunter. That's okay. what grabbed me. I was like, wow, I like their this relationship. more. I like okay. their relationship more than, than the Clarice, Clarice. Lecter okay. series because, yeah. like I said, they're, I they're think I like, so yeah. tied together. I know? think I like the Clarice one better, but I really did like the Will Graham. Like, because he was a very different type of detective, I guess, or what yeah. he, whatever he was. Like you say, he, he's like, Cause he's, he did, he's at that agent that Clarice is trying to be. Right, like to you get know, into so, the mind Yeah, of so that he's, he's well prepared, you know. Yeah. So let me tell you, Double A, why I think that you would like this show. A, and this is probably the most important thing, it goes really deep on the Will Graham character to the point that this is how they, they, they show him going into the mind of the killer where he yeah. gets he gets there and he it's very almost <laughs> they show him having visions yeah Bo boondock yeah. saints -ish, okay where he yeah. sees the murder scene okay. and then it, they Which even have they describe i'm glad they show that yeah thing. that's cool they have this almost like a pendulum kind of go by mm -hmm. and then it's like the scene backs Ooh. up and then he's in the role of the killer okay. and he's talking you through it he's like you come down the mm -hmm. stairs he's like I take you out, two shots, boom. He's like, you move to the right. He's like, one shot to the head. I position your body. I do this. I begin, and then it's like, and he's it right. is really yeah. awesome. And, and that's what kind of makes Will crack after a while is because of all this kind of and stuff. And they right, get he has deep into yeah. that. Mind. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, it's a slow progression into that. And at the time, during the time of that, he, uh, forget that it goes the other way. Wow. Is it the other way? It, during the time, <laughs> he meets Hannibal in this. Um, and, uh, Hannibal kind of starts to want to know more about him by wanting to know, like, you know, I want to understand how you how you think, you know what I mean? And and you're able to I see I always forget to turn it the other way. To get into the uh he, he says, you know, Will Graham has like true empathy. He empathizes so much he can get literally like into yeah. their position. So he is he is completely curious and wants to know more about will and no will so it's like it's like they really draw out how their relationship develops even to the point where like 
Hannibal set stuff in front of him, like, you know, without them knowing, because he's like, well, what's he going to do? And what's he going to think? Is he going to be able to figure this out? And he does. You know, you're like, holy shit. Like, it's like a really uh, excellent telling of how he figures, you know, yeah, these things out. Yeah, because I was going to say, at the beginning of Red Dragon, you see how their relationship is super strong mm -hmm. at the beginning, just that very beginning. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's going there like at 10 o'clock at night right. like, yeah. looking for Lecter, you know, because he needs to talk to him. So that's pretty damn cool that they expanded on, on their relationship. Yeah. You know? And they build on it from the very beginning in season one where it's like they're almost like going to, you know, they're not going to like each other. He even tells, you know, Lecter when he's like, he's like, uh, he's, uh, Lecter tells him, he's like, well, I, you know, I find you very interesting. And then he's like, well, I don't find you very interesting. <laughs> Which to him is almost like, oh, well, yeah. then I will rude. make myself become interesting to yeah. you. No, I didn't think that he thought he was rude. I, thought they, he, I think he thought that he was rude. Do they show him doing stuff? Oh, yeah, they do. Okay. They do. And so is he chasing after him, too, at the same time? Not because in Red Dragon, you know, obviously yeah. he's been looking for him. He's been looking for this mm -hmm. cannibal killer, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, in the beginning, there's there's in in season one, there's other killers. There's other yeah, crimes I, I see happening. That. Yeah, it yeah. seems like it says right here that you know while he's he's doing uh, serial killers that Jack Crawford, special agent. Let me stop you real quick. Okay. We'll get right back. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, guys. We want to run into the break. So we, we got too much we into. Uh, we got too much into, <laughs> into for sure. Uh, but the good thing is, is that it doesn't look like there's any comments in here right now for us to run through with y'all. So that we'll let this load up and then we'll get right back you into know, the conversation. You know, I can't think of another. I'm trying to, you know, you brought up like where you would put Lecter in the list of like villains. I can't think of like of that charming, sophisticated kind of killer, like fictional killer. You know, obviously. Dracula? You gotta... Like, I'm like, that's who I was like, there's no one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you think have to go. The only category that you can put him in is like with real life serial killers because he was a serial killer. Yeah, because obviously you have the Universal Monsters, you have the, the Freddies, the Jasons, the Michael. Uh, I was like, where, where, where would Lecter be put? Come on with Jigsaw, <laughs> right? Maybe I don't know Double A, but Jigsaw was smart. Yeah, he was. You he got, was you got me smart. thinking about a point, Double A. Like, you know, while we're waiting for this to load, before we get back into the show, <clears throat> but you know, you're, 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 and again, this is our debate, right? We have all the time, and and, and Tim and Amy's here. She's half, half on your side, half on mine. Yeah. I know it <laughs> depends on the character. Depends on the character, yeah. <laughs> but like, for instance, like, right? Okay. You got a vigilante like let's say the Punisher or okay. the Boondock Saints. You know, what I mean, they're yeah. killing people. Yeah. You know, what I mean, even Wolverine, right? They kill people. They're yeah. bad guys. Mm -hmm. We know that they only kill bad guys. But these bad guys have families. They've got a wife and kids. To who to who to them, their dad or mom or whoever maybe <laughs> was not a bad person. You know, it's like are they are they? Well, uh, kind of shows in Kill Bill, right? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah, that is. That's a very good point. Yeah. So, well, this is what I mean. It's like, that's how sometimes the way I it's view the... It's the lesser the, of two evils. Well, that's what I always say. That's what I view about, like, the Negan thing or whatever. Uh, and, you know, we can't talk about it in front of you because another show that you're not caught up on is The Walking Dead, which has been fantastic. Am I Pretty right? Pretty much, though, it's kind of just... I'm they're, only they're, behind one season no, and the one that's current. But they're current. making it like where he's reformed. And it's just like... Well, he just, was already becoming reformed. But I told, the, I told Tim, it's scene. like, man, you can't forget what he did. He stole food from three communities. He bent them down to, to their will. And I think about that. You know, you know what? Of, you I, know, it would be easier guy, to forgive him if he had not killed Glenn and... But you know what? It wasn't even... Red. like Even before that, that was like the punishment that if he didn't get his... Whatever crops or stocks that this community had, someone was gonna die. You know, the guy had. Yeah, he was fucked the up. The guy had. He, he had. He could have been a beaten. great leader. He could have actually yeah. built all those communities up where they could have helped him. Yeah, he wanted people to Yeah, and he him. stole wives. I was like, man, really? Like, yeah. I, I yeah. tell him, I was like, what if he took Jess from you? I'm like, wow, <laughs> you, you know, would that be fun? Like, this guy's banging your wife. You know what I mean? Like, like wow, you know, like. Turns out he had that bad. Oh no. <laughs> Like, fuck this dude, yeah. Like, you're not taking my wife. Fuck you. I, I just think that yeah. there was some recent interesting conversations in The Walking Dead yeah. that we can't talk yeah. about in front of you because you're not caught up. So like, <laughs> you're busy watching The Crown instead. So I'll get there. I'm but just. We loaded I'm up a quick. Slow roll. Let's get back into <laughs> okay, it before we lose it. our momentum. Oh, where were we at? Oh, real quick. Talking about uh, the Hannibal show, and pretty much again why I think that you would like it. Okay. You know I mean? okay. But, yeah. Um, all right, guys. So we've moved on for all of what they call now. I mean, th this we've is... gone through all the movies. Now we're going to the pretty much the critically acclaimed show. Critically I would acclaimed say. show. Three seasons on NBC. Um, 
I mean, Max Mickelson was yeah. probably the the big standout from whatever he I had ever Hannibal read. Lecter. But he yeah. is not. Let me tell you, Double e, Hugh Dancy as Will Graham is but he outstanding. Was the guy that I just yeah. would always hear about. Max Mickelson oh. was like the true standout. Let me let show. me tell you too another thing well, yeah, about this he show. Was, he played a great. Hannibal He's a fantastic Hannibal. Yeah. By far, to me, the, the right. After Anthony Hopkins, I remember you're it is like, him. I remember he's you're right like, ooh, there. he's right there. He's right yeah. there, which is like saying a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but again, I think that I think based on how much I realize you love the Will Graham character, I think that you would really love Hugh Dancy's portrayal. And after me watching, rewatching quite a bit of season one in preparation for this episode, I was like, man, um, I, I, I really enjoyed him. I did enjoy him. Like, he's fantastic throughout the series or whatever. But I mean, he is a really great Will Graham, and it's really great. Uh, to understand your perspective of the relationship you love with Will and Hannibal, and this is just a much different uh, take on it, on how it slowly starts, how you see a longer progression of how it becomes a friendship, how Hannibal is helping the FBI. Um, Lawrence Fishburne, fantastic as Jack Crawford. By far, I would say, I mean, to me, slightly above Scott Glenn, okay. but only because you get a lot more of him. Okay. You get you get to be around Jack a lot involved. more. He's way more involved. It's a gruff. It's a very Morpheus esque uh, <laughs> Jack Crawford, and that's the only reason why that I put him slightly above. And, and and again, we didn't talk at all about Harvey Keitel's Jack Crawford, who is also that's great. Right, Harvey. I Harvey was going to say who, is, who the hell played him in Hannibal. Yep, that's great, right, Harvey. very greatly, also Harvey. very greatly, because when he's there trying to convince Will, it's a hard sell because that's this right. guy is like. I cannot oh, be around dragon, your shit dragon, yeah. because it's driving me fucking nuts. Yeah. Uh, and there is some very, very intense moments. The other thing about this show, Double A, that I know that you'll appreciate, anyone that's a fan of TV or cinema will appreciate, this show looks beautiful. Does it? Yeah. It looks, number one, Mads Mikkelsen is by far, I would say number two is, <laughs> is number two is, um, uh, Nucky Thompson in Boardwalk Empire, uh, played by Steve Buscemi. Best dressed on TV, Looking but number sharp. one, Mads Mikkelsen as Hannibal. These suits, double A, I mean, the way the guy, they fit the guy. You know, the reason why he's above Steve Buscemi's, uh, you know, in, in that is because he's a better looking guy. But it's like, I mean, I like, damn, Steve who Buscemi. the fuck was dressed? <laughs> These costumers were the best. And guys, when you read stuff about this show, that's what they say. They're but like, I think it's damn, about it how good. the characters portray the suit. It, it, it is. But what I'm saying is, too, that the sets are designed beautifully. It's oh, yes. shot beautifully. It looks beautiful. There's so much things going on in this show that look fantastic. I just showed you guys Double A and Double A and, and Untamed Amy. I actually got two copies of this for Christmas. That Damn. Much of the Hannibal Holy Cookbook. I, I ended up uh, giving one to uh, Untamable Amy because we're both big fans of the show. But the food, when they're eating the meals, they go through how, he, he, like you said, his love for cooking, his passion for it. He says, he says, I took, he talked about how he was a surgeon, but at this time he's a, a psychiatrist. He goes, I took my love for, he goes, I lost patience. He goes, and once I lost them, I didn't want to do that anymore. This is what he tells Will. He said, I didn't want to do that anymore. So I took my skills with, you know, a surgeon skills to cooking, to the culinary arts. Uh, and he prepares some of the most beautiful meals. The cookbook talks about how they brought in like these, like all these like professional chefs. <laughs> like the shit they're eating, you're like, man, that looks fucking amazing. Like right. I want to eat that. That's probably I know. I saw a grilled octopus. I saw table. frog legs. I was like, man, it looks good. <laughs> he does some amazing, amazing things. And again, some of that might sound gross, like octopus and frog legs. But the way this I'm, guy makes, I'm a it, big seafood fan. So yeah, like I'm grilled with you. octopus, frog legs. I've heard frog legs <laughs> taste like chicken. They taste yeah. just like chicken. I've had them before. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so that's nothing. It's a feast for the eyes. As well, but there's also show. there's such beautiful dialogue too. Though, like they they have these long, uh, great conversations. Too, man, that guy has gotten like better and better. You know, I liked him as Perry White. Yes, uh, you a know, great Perry White. He, he's such a strong character. Like even the Silver Surfer. Like Doug Jones does a lot of the body motions, but you know what? Lauren Fishburne's voice for the Silver Surfer. He, it's so commanding, almost. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I can um, probably see me liking Lawrence Fish. In this series, you meet Jack Crawford's wife. Oh, there's a sure. very beautiful okay. um, um, relationship there. I think that you would highly appreciate that. Yeah. I think that you would highly appreciate the type of of uh, cop, you know, policeman, FBI, you know, leader that Jack Crawford yeah, is. Yeah, because they always show Jack and Will in the Red Dragon and Manhunter, like super close, super tight. Mm -hmm. Like Will is his guy mm -hmm. when it comes to serial killers. Like, yeah. I need you, Will. I need you to come back. 
and help us with this, like, you know, in Red Dragon Manhunter, the Tooth Fairy Killer. Right. You know? So, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, another thing is, is that they, uh, so they do, they do take some liberties, and some things are kind of told out of order, so there is a little bit, it's a little bit of a, of a, I want to say like a retelling or whatever, but some things are just kind I mean, of shuffled you're free around. to kind of do what you want, because all you have is really the book, Manhunter, and Red Dragon. Right. And that's already, like, towards the end. That's already the, you know, him attacking mm -hmm. Will and mm -hmm. finding out he's the killer. Yeah. Serial killer, you know? So, I yeah. do feel like in the show, though, that they did kind of put all the movies into the show. Yeah. And let me tell you guys something interesting that I had but read. out of order, like you said. Like, I really didn't care for that part about the right. show. Because there were, I had to, like, <clears throat> I was watching the show consistently and then I was going a long time without finishing it, and then I would go back. So I took long periods of time. So I did have to rewatch some episodes. Okay. But even at the towards the end, I had to. I was asking him questions, and then he had already finished it. <laughs> I started it first, but then he finished it first, and I was like, "What the hell?" And he was like, "I don't remember." And I'm like, "Okay." So I had to rewatch some other parts in the beginning to understand what was going on. In, in the part that I was in. Okay, okay. So yeah. it is a little bit confusing. Like, it's best to watch it all, all together. All together. This is what we <laughs> talked about with Thrones, right? Like, I, I yeah. said, how was oh, your rewatch of Thrones? I rewatched it already, like, two times. She goes, it was better. She goes, because we had to, remember we had to wait those whole years. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, like, you're kind of like, uh, I think that's also made a lot of people hate season eight of Thrones, not to go on a tangent, but is because you were trying to remember. A lot of people don't go do a rewatch. But if you do it, I said, does it, it fits better, right? Because I was able to I remember quite a bit. And I was like, no, it's tying up a lot of loose ends or whatever. Now, still, there were a lot of things that could have happened better. Cersei's death, you know what I mean? <laughs> but for the most part, it was like, there okay, was stuff like... That you don't remember. There's stuff that you don't remember because it just happened too long ago in Game of Thrones. And it's such a... You know, the HBO full 50 fucking 59 minute sh episodes. <laughs> yeah. But but uh, something I wanted to tell you guys real quick, because we're, we're going to touch briefly on the Clarice show. But here's the reason why is that you don't hear about in this Hannibal show, you do not hear Clarice Starling's name. And, and you can't because uh, the Clarice show is a CBS show. The Hannibal show was an NBC show. NBC show. The reason is, is because the Silence of the Lamb rights belong to MGM. They have exclusive rights. So that means when they did the Clarice show, they couldn't mention anything that had come out in other in other uh, of the other properties. So they couldn't even mention Hannibal Lecter. Okay. They cannot say that or whatever. But and then it happened that debuted or appeared in Silence of the Lambs. They have the rights to that. But otherwise, well, but they see, can't say and, it. But they was, do mention. And I was fine with that anyways because I was like, that case was closed. So it's yeah. kind of showing Clarice, kind of showing, you know, doing her own stuff until you get to Hannibal. But what I didn't you know? like, though, was like, like you said, what they did with Paul Krendler, who is a notorious <laughs> dick to her. That's <laughs> a throughout, that's a throughout yeah. the thing. But in this one, played by uh, the guy Abraham, that plays Abraham uh, from Walking Dead, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Michael Cutlets. Michael Cutlets. Michael Cutlets. Thank you. Um, they make him almost like the Jack Crawford to her. And they yeah. couldn't use Jack Crawford's yeah. name because it's from the other property. Because so I didn't like, like the, that. I know it's weird because like in Hannibal, like they just hate each other. Mm -hmm. You know, like she has no love for Paul. Paul has no love for Clarice. No, he's so. a real asshole. Like that's yeah. how the characters like yeah. always portrayed. And and that's why I was kind of like, are they going with that in Clarice? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, are they going with that with Clarice? Like, where they're gonna come to like respect each other because. I'm yeah. like, no, she hates this dude. Yeah, you know, that's that boss that you fucking hate. Well, I mean they. She works under him, so I think at some point in the show that they would have to. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, and now he's not mentioned in the Hannibal show, Paul Krenler, because I think he's a character that oh, came geez. that originated in Silence. Okay. Yeah. So there was a <laughs> bunch of uh, stuff like that. Well, but you don't need Paul in this period of time with him and with Will. Right. You really don't need the Paul. Yeah. The Paul character is more prevalent in the Clarice right. story. Yeah. Not really the Will, so I really don't care if they had included Paul or not. Yeah, but they do have, you know... Uh, because I think at this point, Will is so respected. He's he's almost like a legend in the FBI that, uh, you know... Right. Like, the way they show him in Manhunter and Red Dragon, yeah. he's so fucking respected. I think it all comes, respected. though, from the collar of Hannibal But Lecter. that's what I mean. Like, I don't think him and Paul would have that bad relationship... Like the way he does with Clarice. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I think Paul would actually have respected Will more. Maybe, but he was, I feel like he was just a dick all around. But the, but yeah. he took, he was like the FBI branch and like over here. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. The, he, you know, that was like Jack's, like what, uh, 
what do you say peer uh his his opposite or like right. his, uh, the gamir like the yeah yeah you know you, you know what i'm talking about like right. his you know his fucking opposite counterpart order. counterpart, counterpart. There, thank you yeah <laughs> thank you no 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 i i agree like I agree. that that guy he's a jack over there yeah. you know and what i didn't like kind of like about the hannibal movie and i and i can't remember if it's in the book or not but like they don't really say like where jack crawford is during, i know like yeah you know because he seemed to be the one that had clarice's back and maybe him not being around double eight is kind of it's what put her Hannibal. on the path to that you know like the ending of that book so I need we to never really it. get like a like a jack hannibal kind of like closure do we because you uh, i mean obviously it's just kind of I like well let me tell you in this show to... <laughs> there is some really no but like you really know it's like after silence shit. and hannibal like because you're right yeah. they really don't have jack right right and hannibal mm-hmm. no. right no, but in this, you get to see some of that, what you're talking about, that relationship and how initially yeah. it was friendly because remember, he's helping them. He's yeah, this psychiatrist yeah. lending his, you know, surgical, yeah. you know, knowledge, you know, yeah. and his knowledge of the mm-hmm. mind to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, so it, it takes some really different paths, but I mean, it's not. But I can see them being friendly. Obviously, it's a prequel to. Yeah. Red yeah. Dragon, so. Um also, you know, again, you do get to see uh Mads Mickelson do some stuff as Hannibal and there are moments to me that as I was rewatching it, like there was one episode I was rewatching the other day and I genuinely was like, Oh shit, like I jumped like I was like, Oh fuck, like I forgot that <laughs> like I didn't remember that happening and I was like, It it scared me. And then there's this fantastic part in season two. Season two by far has to be my favorite of the three seasons, you know what I mean, where, you know, there's just these really mo- awesome Hannibal moments. Um, but how about this? You get to see the like truly physical, young and in shape Hannibal Lecter mm-hmm. do some things. In fact, I'll now reference just this one in season one, you know, uh, there's another serial killer on the prowl that kind of figures out who Hannibal is and they go toe to toe and it's like, holy shit, like this guy like can kinda mix it up like, too. Kind of sounds like Dexter. <laughs> Maybe on it, that part. Now that I Dexter, didn't see it, y'all two are the Dexter people. Well, no, no, Dexter goes after like serial killers. Oh, too, okay. Even he's like a serial killer. Okay, <laughs> okay. Are they? No, he's like a serial killer. I know, I know. Again, yeah, he is. <laughs> no, he is actually. <laughs> he that's what's weird about it. Yeah, that's she what's tells weird me about I need to me. watch that one. I didn't know you'd watch the. You know what? Yeah, I want you to watch it, but I've really only seen one season, but it's the one with John Lithgow. Oh mm. man, that one was brutal. Oh, that one was crazy. That the Trinity he Killer. He plays Winston Churchill in The Crown. Yeah. Oh, nice. But John Lithgow, very nice man. He won an Emmy and he deserved it for that fucking season. Oh, what yeah. season he, is that? Season one? Oh. I think it was four. Well, wow, so you watched Trinity one season, killer, but in the fourth. Season. But it was the Trinity Killer one. And, Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, that's when I got that with my wild. wife, and it was she oh. was like huge on Dexter. In that season, and, he kills Dexter's but, wife. But man, it was Wait, spoiler alert. I guess I don't have to watch it now. No, no, <laughs> you would like John Lithgow's performance, yeah. okay? In there, you know, but there's other stories brutal. like that's the thing that I liked about it was that it wasn't just one whole story, but it's, it's I mean, that's what it kind of sounds like with this one, like what Hannibal, that serial killer arc that you're saying. Uh, so does it have like one big storyline? Obviously, it has the underlying storyline, but. Do these seasons kind of have like where he's chasing one serial killer or, you know, like where they actually go into like they actually work together and like or like, OK, we need, like a Buffalo Bill, kind of like yeah. outside of the yeah. lamps. It was the storyline with Clarice and Hannibal, but then it was them working together to try and capture Buffalo Bill. Yeah. The main threat, you know. So the underlying story is more like. Or was that- it kind of like a serial killer of the week almost? I, it's okay, tough I, to say. I, I feel like in the beginning they were kind of trying to find their identity, and it was kind of like that. You know, yeah, it, it like, was like a almost serial... every show. There's always like something like yeah, like X Files. You know, it was right. kind of like you know this different story. But you got the Smoking Man is the yeah. background story. And like, Supernatural was kind of like that man. too. For a while, they say it was Monster of the Week. Smallville, it was like Villain of the Week. You know. So I, I definitely feel like early on it did feel like that, but then they got their footing and then it picks up better. And, and, and you're like, okay, having. yeah, you know, this is what I think shows like Walking Dead and the Game of Thrones did right is that they were like, nope, we're going to just tell you one big story. You really can't jump in in the middle and be like, oh, that was a good episode because you were like, what the fuck is going on? Right. The Walking Dead and, and to me, Game of Thrones, they don't do that. They're just like, nope, we're telling this one big ass story. And if you're not on board, then you're going to kind of not get it. So I think they were kind of trying to not do that. It was kind of like a murder of the week. But okay. then it was like, I think they realized that they were like, no, it has to really be this way. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. It was a very eventful show. I mean, it had lots of twists and turns. Yeah. And like we said, it kind of goes back and forth. But yeah, but things that happen early on play like throughout or whatever. Like right. the very first 
you know, serial killer that they deal with in the, in episode one, it's like the ramifications are felt throughout the season. So that's what made it hard to be like, well, if I just jumped in and I saw this one episode, I didn't really to, get it or whatever. But um, it's got great guests. It's got a great supporting cast that, you know what I mean? Like I said, that are amazing. It's a wonderful Did they show that, the Stephen, uh, the, um, the Freddy dude? Yes. Yes, Freddie Lounge okay, is in there. Because you, you get a sense for Manhunter and Red Dragon that this dude's like a fucking annoyance to mm-hmm. Jack and Will. Mm-hmm. Like, bad. Like, this dude's just like that asshole that's just around. That's the same, except that Freddie Lounge is a woman in this one. Oh. They make her a woman. Okay. She's beautiful. Was she? Was uh, it better? Or and it's she's online. Was it better as you know? Yeah. I think it was equally the same. They were Remember, he's annoying. on the in the paper. It's, it's yes. like the National Enquirer, but, yes. you know, modern. They modernize yeah, it. Yeah, modernize. It's, it's uh, yes. the... the it's the same thing the Tatler or whatever, but okay. it's online. Um, yeah, there's some moments. There's she's still equally annoying. In fact, I can't remember. Does she have red hair? Yes, yeah, yeah. she has red okay, hair. Okay, good. At least yeah, she kept the red yeah, hair. they kept the red hair. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's super curly. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, because that dude who plays from Don't Breathe, he was a big ass one, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the the guy that plays too, the uh, Chilton in this one is like a oh, major. Oh, he's in there too. Yeah, he's a major ass. See, in Manhunter, like, that's what I was saying. Like in Manhunter, they don't really portray him as yeah. an asshole. He actually gives him like a pretty big big clue in Manhunter. He yeah. gives him like a huge clue. Where he's not the asshole from Silence of the Lambs. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know? Children yeah. in that, in the show, Children's actually one of the ADAs in the SVU. <laughs> in the oh, SVU. Nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. So he's a good guy in that show. Yes, he's a good guy. That's yeah. why I was like, oh no, he's a prick guy. In you got to have a little bit of range, right? But he's definitely a major also, prick um, in this one. Mason Burgess in the show. Yeah, I kind of was mm-hmm. going to ask you if that was him right there. Yeah, and then <laughs> so, they take... A, yes, that's him. Yeah. yeah. Yes. They take some... Uh, uh, I feel like that this version of Mason is a little bit closer to the book stuff, Yeesh. I think. Oof. So it's yeah. definitely really? weird. Yeah, it's definitely weird. Yeah. Um, again, like... Okay, well, that's cool so, that they're kind of showing that because it kind of looks like when they show in Hannibal, it would be around this period where he was a respected... Mm-hmm psychiatrist yes so, okay cool so yeah we kind of have that too and another thing cool too is like a lot of the things that they say like that are very touch and go in the movies yeah. like they mentioned like a dr bloom well like wow. dr bloom alana bloom is in the show yeah. like it's like you know she's a major character i think in the books it's alan bloom they they reference dr alan bloom as being one of the other like uh you know, leading psychiatrist or whatever, but here it's Alana. They That's right, they woman. do, they do, and he kind of gets offended by that. Yeah, yeah. So they 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 flesh out some more of these <laughs> you know roles, but it's cool that they keep it within the Hannibal verse. Yeah, you know that's I mean? awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this show is like beloved by fans, and they call them Hannibal. Oh, I remember. Yeah. There's I mean, still petitions. There's still t- they they people thought that with Netflix picking it up that it would have got enough steam to get that season four. They say the season four is still in talks. That the uh, the showrunner, I think his name is Brian Fuller, is It'd be hard to get it. all these characters though back again. I mean, they're getting older, so that's hard too, yeah. and they're oh, doing oh, other oh, stuff. But even then, it would, it would still work out. You don't have to go all the way to Anthony Hopkins' age. You know what I mean? Like he, Matt Mickelson still looks good. Yeah, yeah. You know? They even touch on the Hannibal Rising. Oh, nice. Show, mm-hmm. the movie in the show. So. What's really cool, Double I think all the show titles in the season one are all French. I believe in season two, they're all Japanese, ah. and in season three, they're all Italian. Okay. Uh, and it's funny, if you, I was looking up the name, what the titles meant and from season one, and it's like, it starts out with like aperitif, which is like an appetizer, uh-huh. and then it goes into like the soup dish, and well, like each one is named after remember, something. Do you remember the Breaking Bad? Where fans figured it out, like, uh, yes, they had like some message, like the 1747 yes. was the plane and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it was like a message yeah. in the titles. I thought People that was very cool, kind too. of crafty with the, with the fucking titles. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that I would just say, like, give yourself like one or two episodes and see what you think. But I mean, even in that, you well, get like I said, really... my, my favorite story has always been the Will Lecter series. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's I think you cool. would. I mean, now that we're talking about it, I think yeah, you I mean, would, it sounds interesting. Uh, he, like and care for the will. He's character. a very, yeah, he's a very, he did a really great job. <clears throat> yeah, he's a very likable, very he lovable is. character. Will, uh, and tragic is a tragic, very yeah. tragic, tragic, very, very tragic. tragic. And, and yeah. it goes, and I got, and deep. I was kind of, I was happier with the movie version of what happens to Will than the book version of what happens yeah. to Will. The yeah, the book version of Will is very sad he does not get a happy ending right like right. like he does in the movies <laughs> i don't read the books i really do it goes deep too into um you know uh 
like you said, how he needs to get away from it, that yeah. it's affecting him bad. bad. Yeah. But, but, you know, and, you know, Jack kind of becomes a little bit of like where you're like, he's such a good cop that he wants to stop this, of course. but he's willing to push this guy because so he's bad. the best. You right, yeah, he's the you're best. Trying... He's the best. Because Jack has always been like, we need to cast a bad guy. It's, I'm sorry this is happening to you, but you are our best guy. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I need you to go after this guy so he won't, you know, hurt any other people. And that's, a, that's a, a damned good determined cop, but, I mean, at the expense of another guy's mind. It's just like in any job, know. right? When you're the best at what you do, the... They're going to give you more work than your lease person, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to give, you know, oh, I have this three-order package I need you to build. You're going to give it to your best guy. You're not going to give it to your slowest guy. Right. right? You know what right, I mean? right. And it sucks because you're like, no matter how badass you are, you're the one that's getting the more most work, you know, because well, you can I think do in, it. In everything, in the books, in the movies, uh, Will Graham was just... A unique individual. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. Even though it's he really was, fucking him was, up. He was the only one. Yeah, even though it's really fucking him up mentally. Yeah. You know, and he's kind of like, why are you treating me like this? I'm doing a badass job for you. Well, that's why I'm doing it. Because yeah. you're doing a badass job. And yeah. there's some interesting uh, crossroads that happen, Double A, in the show. Let me mm -hmm. tell you where it's like, you know, eventually Jack is like, you know, well, Hannibal, you know, you know him. You be a psychiatrist and you report to me on how he's doing mentally. Like, is he <sighs> good? Is he getting to breaking? And there's times... Where Hannibal is like doing the right thing, where he's like, "You need to stop, like stop <laughs> what you're doing because it's messing you up." And he's like, "Yeah, but I gotta catch these killers or whatever." Yeah. And it's kind of like you're like, "Damn," he's also trying to be like, "You can get, you'll get off my trail or whatever." And but, I think that's where Hannibal is probably like, oh, "Yeah, you need, you need to get out." Of the you know way. what I mean? But at the same time, too, though, it's almost like he's like, he's like, "Well, you know, you choose to keep going, so you, you're making your own choice, or whatever." <laughs> yeah. Like he also likes and welcomes the challenge. Right. Right? Of course he does. Yeah. So because I think in does. a lot of ways he feels like like well back back again, you know, like maybe he's found an equal an equal, and he's another. like. Will this guy eventually find me out? You know, it's kind of like, yeah. ooh, that's kind of like the, you get that. Yeah. Like, ooh, I want to I want to see where this goes. He's intrigued. Yeah, yeah. very intrigued. It makes me bring up like a kind of a question that I had kind of, I think me and you talked about this, Double A, just on one of our, our road trips over here during before one of the shows, but it was like, do, do people seek, I think that people seek to be understood, but not necessarily understand other people. And the moment that you're understood you're okay you feel, with that because you feel there's someone that knows you and accepts you, know, you. and accepts you. right yeah but but at the same time you sometimes you stop before you say well now let me try to understand that person or well we've had this conversation we yeah had we just had the conversation not long ago I do, I, well it's something i've been thinking about and again I, I kind of make it's not very much different from the you know travolta you know uma conversation in pulp fiction where it's like you know <laughs> do you do you yeah. listen or do you wait to talk and he's like, you know, I, I wait to talk, but I really want to get better at listening. And it's the same thing I think about understanding. Sometimes you're so excited that someone you found someone that understands you, you don't really uh, care if you understand them because you're just happy to be understood. Because you're holding so much in mm -hmm. of yourself that when there's someone actually that figures you out, you're just like, ooh. I mean, right. why do you think there's so many relationships that always happen that way? You yeah. Know? Yeah, you feel like you can be yourself, except this in this case, obviously, you know he's a fucking serial killer, right? You know? Right, exactly. And he thinks he's but it's almost Will. kind of like, oh wow, this one guy figured me out, you know? Yeah, like, he he's such an ego fucking tistical dude, yeah. You know, that he doesn't see anyone being better than him, you know. Even like he still challenges Will, mm -hmm. you know. Even after he's locked up, he still challenges him. Like, you know, yeah. you think you're better than me you think you're smarter than me i mean he know? goes so far as to manipulate the the serial killer that's already serial killing yeah you know what i mean like let me entice them let me get them to be and it, it probably know. pisses him off that he got caught oh yeah too you know like yeah really? like man this fucking dude got me <laughs> like to him it must be like just dumb luck struck. Yeah. yeah and to him he's like what the fuck you know what i mean like i control like nothing happens without his control. Some of the best things in the movies, you know, when they talk about like, oh, you know, he bit out this nurse's throat and his heart rate never yeah. raised above. Yeah, that's right. Whatever. Yes. You know, you're never like, went oh, up. shit. Yeah. And and uh, Mads Mikkelsen does a fantastic job of throughout the show when things are happening that are intense. He seems very calm. Oh. You know, he seems very reserved. Like he is not making a face. It's just like, and I think that's really got to be really difficult for an actor because imagine for it's sure. like someone's like, okay, you got to do this scene where you're like exerting yourself. 
but don't make any faces. It's yeah. like, okay. See, anyway. and I felt like uh, the guy who played Hannibal in Hannibal Rising did a really good job because he's much younger than both of them. Yeah. He's yeah. much younger than Anthony Hopkins and Mad, so I think he just did a great job. No, and, and again, I, I don't really take nothing away from the guy. I just feel, again, like he has the unfortunateness of coming, you know, after Anthony Hopkins, and then later on, <laughs> after him comes this other guy that's, you know, pretty Very much right under there. Yeah. It's like, you're going to be the last of the three. Yeah. You know, I think it's going to be... really, you're you the know. first. Yeah. Well, you, now, you've got to see uh, Manhunter. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's his name? Double A, the place Lecter in that Oh, one. Brian Cox. You got to see Brian Cox's version. You know who Brian Cox is, right? No. Do you yeah. remember uh, Striker in uh, X-Men 2? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's or it. Or you ever seen okay. Super Troopers. But he must be younger than oh, right? Oh, Super Troopers. Yeah, oh, he's way younger. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, guys, I mean, I think that pretty much. But I mean, yeah. how cool is this? That it's like this one character, right? It's you know, you got such a big universe, right? Mm-hmm. Like, this is a, a franchise in its own. You got four movies. You got three guys. You you, you know, a young Hannibal. Uh uh-huh. Uh, you know, professional Hannibal. Yes. And an older Hannibal. You know, I mean, that's pretty fucking cool. Mm-hmm. They. That's how much you can do with this character and these supporting characters around him. That you can make a, a, a fucking TV show for a movie franchise. Yeah. Know, books. I mean, it's a fucking franchise on its own. The secondary show, which is Clarice. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, this is how... And you can do cool you know. stuff. You can come out with a fucking recipe book. Cook, you know, cook, cook right? book, you know? <laughs> and you can have a young version of him a mm-hmm. middle-aged version of him i mean i still think there could be so much of, more that could be and, and that's what's cool about it yeah. is that you can do more and yeah. you can do more with clarice yeah you know you can tell her story you can do more with will you can I, do more with hannibal i know? think i said they were i think i had heard that they were trying to get the rights under one roof so that they could kind of I mean, like how cool you know, is that that this is its own franchise that oh this, my god this, this character that only came out for like 15 minutes mm-hmm. you know is like it spawned a whole franchise of stuff you can do. Yeah, you know? that's how beloved the character I think is, is because you know it. It's such an interesting character, so enticing that they were just like, we want more. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's like more movies. And more, it's like you know, you're shows. really torn. It's like who is better? And I know your body yeah. is are torn really. Yeah. Between Mads and Anthony Hopkins, I'm not you're probably, torn. Only CM's torn. <laughs> and I was gonna say, there's probably some episodes where he's like, man. He's a lot better than Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, but there might know? be. There might be some. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I want to see him as high as the Lambs. I want to see him go up against Jody Foster. You know, you like, know? let's let's go down that road. And I didn't think that Clarice Gal was bad. I'm like, hey, bring her in. Like, mix the worlds or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, but even then, like I said, you can do something with Clarice with yeah. that show, you know? So, pretty damn cool that this one movie, you know, that came out in 91, you know, and this 15-minute character, Mm -hmm. you know, has spawned a whole franchise of stuff you can do, you know. And I can tell you right now. That's powerful. We just got 15 minutes. Exactly. And that's what Anthony Hopkins did with that to kind of spawn this character's career. And that's why he will always be number one to me. But, you know, again, a close second, Mads Mikkelsen. But, and and I also just want to say, too, there are moments that in this show... And I think we can agree in the movies that we've all seen that can be truly terrifying. Yeah. Sit alone in your house at night and watch nah, that, uh-uh. and, and 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 you know, and look into <laughs> Lecter's eyes. Uh, the sergeant scene or the cop scene? Oh um, yeah. yeah, I'm telling oh, you right there. Inside How about out? when he does the face yeah. off? You know what I mean? The, yeah. the you know that's Jim Pembry. This... Damn it, talk yeah. to him. Talk you know, to him. it's yeah. like the music is making yeah. you like. I was gonna like, say just the music alone shit, will give you, you know? like. Yeah. Turn light on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The willies. It gives you the damn willies. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, the, the episodes I watched in season one of the show, I was just like, two times, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I was like, I forgot that happened. I was like, you know, and of course they do the music too, whatever, right. but you're just like, that, that shit jumped out at me. Um, We're approaching our last break, guys. Uh, should we take it and then we'll just wrap it up? Sure. Okay, sure. let's do that. And then uh, we'll wrap it up. We'll see if there's anything in comments and we'll close this one out for Dr. Hannibal Lecter. I'm going to use a lady. All right, guys. Uh, we appreciate you sticking around out there in uh, the watching. Uh, so come on, Tim. There's got to be times watching. when you're just like, man, Matt is my guy. Uh, there I is. I wish I would see him with Jodie Foster. Oh, yeah. There there certainly is, man. Um, you know, there's even uh, a character they introduce as early as in season one. It's played by Anna, Anna Klumski from okay. um, 
My Girl, right? That's what we all know oh, her from, shit. My Girl. Oh, Really? Yeah, and she was Holy in crap. Veep. She came out in Veep quite a bit, oh, too. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, she comes out, and her name is Miriam Lass. Okay. And to give you a little bit, just a background, it's not, you know, I would say spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but it is very spoiler, but, you know, um, they talk about her, um, and they introduce her as, like, this trainee that Jack Crawford enlists, oh. and they show that. So... At first, I didn't like it because I was like, oh, no, they're like, they're kind of doing the Clarice story. Like, I was like, that's ruining it. You know what I mean? But but then, like, the way it plays out, you're like, okay, it's okay. You could see that eventually, maybe in time, Jack would take that risk again or whatever. You know what I mean? You know, later on. But, you know, in this time, it's like a different outcome, obviously. So it's it's pretty interesting, the things that they play with the dynamics like that. But but yeah, there's definitely moments. And and I only say that, Double A, because of the way that Mads Mikkelsen <laughs> plays it. Like, you're like, holy shit. I mean, shit, no, the really dude's good. badass. You know, from, uh, again, Casino Royale to, like, uh, even Rogue One, the little bit that oh, he was I in. Oh, I love him. Is it Galen you know, Erso? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, uh... the, dude, the dude's a badass. I, um, I Doctor Strange. It. Yeah, I mean, uh, Casino Royale was, you know, him and Bond. I I never been more entertained with a card game yeah than I was in Casino Royale. You can feel the the intensity, you know, of you know the bond going up against Le Chief. Oh yeah, and what it really means, what they're really playing for, yeah. you know. And he does a, such a great okay. job, and you know he he looks good. You know? Yeah, and um, I I as much as I lo- and I love him in that role as Le Chief. That's probably my least favorite of his roles. Because I still tell you, you got to watch his movie on Netflix, Polar, That's where he right. plays the That's Black right. Kaiser. Now, this is a guy that was so bad. I rank him up there with John Wick. You know what I mean? I put him in that category with the, the transporter, like... That's how badass that Mads Mikkelsen was in the movie Polar as the Black Kaiser. Like, I was like, damn, all right, they made you, like, fucking pretty cool. Like, this older, you know, <laughs> agent, secret agent type guy, whatever. <laughs> but, uh... Truly fantastic and, and Hannibal. But let's get back to the recording portion, guys, and we'll wrap this one up. Some good old dead air for you guys right there. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, you got a little bit of dead air right there for me as I was uh, moving us around here. But uh, we're going to get ready to wrap this one up in our last block here, guys. Uh, we appreciate everyone that joined us early on, uh, commented in, and talked about uh, the topic for tonight, the man who eats the rude, Dr. Hannibal. Okay, so uh, Hannibal Lecter. who is everyone's favorite Hannibal? I'm going to go, I'll go first. I'm going to just say, <laughs> I put on record, Anthony Hopkins yeah. is my favorite Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, I think I have to go with Anthony Hopkins. Anthony as, Hopkins for me. It's a Yeah, it's a tough... Tough call because Mads did a really amazing job and and close second for me, Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. Who's better, that. Will or Clarice? That you're more entertained with. <sighs> that is that super tough. I've always been a, more of a Clarice. Clarice. Fan. Uh I'm gonna say Clarice, but but I will say that the show makes a very strong case with me for Will Graham. I'm a big Will. So okay, uh, Jack Seward. Who is your favorite Jack? Jack Lawrence Fishburne, Dennis Farina. Lawrence uh, Fishburne, Scott sure, sure. Glenn, Harvey Glenn. Keitel. Do you have a favorite I Jack Crawford? I don't know if I have a favorite Jack no, Crawford. Scott Glenn for me, by far. I'm actually going to go ahead and say Lawrence Fishburne Lawrence on Fisher. this one. Yeah, there's and, some really, yeah. really interesting stuff. I know I haven't yet gotten re gotten to little yet. parts of Scott Glenn. Like I was said, more involved when... with the other characters, so it was okay. really hard. Well, it's for like me. that part, like what, like how you talked about earlier, that part where he's like Clarice. I had to say that. Just to get all the guys yeah. out, you know, yeah, that little bit of stuff that you know he kind of tries protecting her from. Right. Jack Crawford is a good cop, and he's trying to do what's best for right, yeah, everyone, at the expense even I think of sometimes his agents. You know what I mean? So look, he has tough. a job to do. He's yeah, he's got to catch bad guys. He's like the yeah. top cop yeah. in a sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's got to do his job. <laughs> yeah, he's like Tom Cruise in Minority Report. Like, I mean, hey. yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. and the Hopkins films, which one's your favorite and of the three that he did as Hannibal? Like, one, two, and three. Favorite Hannibal movie out of those? Just okay. from the Hopkins okay. ones, the Hopkins version. Uh, I can say pretty easily Silence. Silence. Yeah, probably Silence of the Lambs. And then what about Red Dragon did or Hannibal? Did you agree? Oh, Silence, Silence. for sure. Yeah. And then what will be the next one, Red Dragon or Hannibal? Uh, shit, that's tough too, man. 
Probably I mean, be Hannibal for me. I was gonna say, obviously, you get more of him. Yeah. yeah in in Hannibal than you do Red Dragon. I did I think... love Ralph. That was Ralph, right? In Fine, yeah, from, from Fine. Red Dragon. Yeah. I, in I, Red Dragon, he did a great job. Yeah. See, I kind of want to say that one might intense. be second yeah. for me. Yeah. Is it, and I um, like the story with him and the the woman, the blind yes, woman. Yes, I like yeah. that story. And too. then that it's like you know he wasn't totally. Um, man, I gotta say something. Double A is like you know I know how you feel about the <laughs> Edward Norton one, but how about that scene at the end? You know what I mean? Like, you disgusting little pig. Look mm. at you. You pissed yourself. Yeah. When Edward Norton is really in yes. it, I was like, yeah. oh, Edward Norton, you make me feel uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> damn, you really talking to a little boy like that? Like, But I was like, damn it. Like, he was really like, he I was did like, a good job turned doing on that. the acting, Edward Norton. That's like, what I'm saying. And, he's and, looking great. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I love Edward Norton, but when it comes to between him, just in this movie, him and William Peterson, yeah. I like William Peterson yeah. more yeah. as Will Graham. Than I do Edward Norton. I can't remember Manhunter as well because it's been such a long time. But is that scene in there? Is there a similar scene like that in there? You know, I don't think there is. That's a pretty powerful scene. No, that is. And I think that's pretty close to the book as well. And like I said, I I love Edward Norton. American History X. Oh, yeah. I think it's one of the best performances. We think he's probably was a great Hulk too. We think he was a great Banner. I loved him as Bruce Banner. I would love to have. (laughs) I would love to have seen him and Robert Downey. No, he's definitely better than. um... No, I love Mark Ruffalo though. No, but wouldn't it be cool to have seen? Edward Norton I mean and Robert one. Downey. Oh, Banna? Yeah, I guess uh, so. Yeah. No, that I mean, would have been great. That would have been cool. But, but I couldn't guys. see I couldn't see Norton doing the Ruffalo stuff in Ragnarok. Oh, no. I but know, I mean, I know you hate I know you hate funny mm, Thor. I hate funny Thor. <laughs> Totally hates funny Thor. I do. I, I hate fat Thor. Thor. I hate fat fucking oh, fat Thor. I I was like, come on. Hey, it's so funny. There were some things they took. They went I mean, don't get me wrong. I laughed. I laughed well, at the theater. Well, they wanted it to be but... for the kiddos, you know? I know. I know. It's like, like, man, I know. like a major I... fucking character. <laughs> like, we're both like, that shit never happened in the comic. <laughs> I was like, you never fat Thor. I'm oh, like, give, give me that scene and then where there's fat guys dressing, cosplaying up as Thor. That pissing me off so much. And now they can be Thor. Now. Yeah. Give me that. Uh, give me that scene. Like, what are they... Yeah. And you see these fucking guys with their long hair and beards, and they're just putting <laughs> hey, on an outfit now. Double A. Instead, give me that scene with uh, with g- give me Chris Hemsworth and Robert Downey Jr. with that scene from the book after Civil War when he confronts Tony. And he goes there, he goes there, he wants me to move Asgard off of Oklahoma, remember? Oh. And he's trying to talk shit, and Thor's like, uh, let me show you what's really up. And he fucking fries his armor, like, yeah. all badass. Yeah. And he's like, that was just like a taste. He's like, don't come back here that again with that Thor shit. Thor from the first Thor, that's my Thor. With the yellow eyebrows where he's fucking Viking. Nice. Yeah, Viking, that's my Viking Chris Thor. Right there, Thor. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's funny. I know we Every Thor is my Thor. Hey guys, go, go. <laughs> no, but he looks like real Viking in that first. He's my Thor favorite. Movie. I think he even Avenger. rocks the helmet in that one. Yeah, he does, he's man. I'm like, ooh, that cool. he's he's helmet. My favorite Avenger. Very badass. Um, but uh, what man. was your answers, Double A, on that one? So yeah. Scott Glenn's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Anthony Hopkins is my favorite. Silence of the Lions by far is just that's just that's a masterpiece. Stuff. I mean, yeah. you're never first. gonna top yeah. that one. Like you said, the score, the acting, even like his directing, the, the close ups on the face. Oh yeah, you know you get that so much, and you know just it, it looks feels eerie, looks scary. Yeah. You know you feel the intensity no from one each mentioned of the how characters. Man, multiple migs. Multiple migs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I made him cool. swallow his tongue. I was gonna say, I think I think I learned most of the quotes from uh, your brother Will, who would quote the damn movie. <laughs> he would. I, was, yeah. I always, anytime I'm He's leaving, a sick man. yeah. Anytime I'm leaving anywhere, and somebody's like, "Are that's you a ready?" Part too, right? When he's yeah. yeah. When yeah. I think I first thought, I was like, uh, "What?" Is, uh, in the book, there in the book, there's a I don't remember which book it is, whatever, but there's a part in the book where, and again, this Thomas Harris is pretty you know descriptive or whatever but he, he's uh well i read uh i real quick I, I read where he was like a, a reporter and editor yes i believe so, so. i was like yeah. okay so maybe that's where yeah. he gets a lot of i think shit he from. may have interviewed too the fbi profiler that's supposed to be based on like said, will i was gonna say because it said that he did stuff in the united states and mexico so ah, like, okay okay shit. Yeah. uh but there's this scene or whatever where i don't remember who it is that's talking to jody foster one of the crazies or whatever and he's telling her he's like since you don't have a, a a dick, you know, when you take a shit, does it like look like a tail like coming out or whatever? Like what? that's how what? sick that the I mean these the nut job we're, is. We're, where fucking Hannibal is is probably the worst of the oh, worst yeah. kind of people. Yeah, like like those other nuts have probably their own story, yeah. like where they're he's fucking. In fucking um, he's in an asylum, right? 
Yeah, he's... yeah. In Baltimore, like the it's like the maximum security. <laughs> How fucking funny whatever. is it that Showtime puts on like that that TV psychiatrist, oh, right? Just I to know. piss him off. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking funny, dude. He's that's the he fucking gets worst, yeah. man. He's that's the fucking he worst. Gets he played a great Chilton. In, yeah, he did. In, that guy's an asshole. In, in the show? Silence. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's not. No, yeah. you, you, can't, you can't top that Chilton yeah. from yeah, Silence and Red you, Dragon. Not even the yeah. one in the show does it justice. Yeah, that's true. That, that one is the by far he the had worst. Yeah, that smug look. But this one is definitely a real prick, too, in the show. I know, whatever, but, but hey, you know, that, yeah. he is, that fucking but... movie Chilton. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's that, and again, that's another that's another greatly written piece that's of shit. That's the key where you do root for for Hannibal, like at the very oh, end. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You're like, man, I want to see him like, eat this motherfucker, this man. That guy deserved to get eaten. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, all great shit, man. What a great uh, universe. What a great character, the Hannibal character. Uh, I mean, like you said, it spawned the whole franchise. Yeah, you know, I I would dress as him for Halloween. You, you did. Know, a couple yeah, of years, did. so yeah. uh, pretty you cool. You should do him again. I In think so. Suit. I think so. I think I think your brothers uh, got on me. They were like, "Man, you're like the the you've been eating the, the most, the healthiest <laughs> animal." They're like, "Man, you've been eating too much." Cannibalism. I was like, "Man, fuck you guys." Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, shit, but guys. Man, what a great franchise. What a great like fictional you know character that the Lifter character is. That it's like Amy and you said you can do so much with the the universe itself. You know yeah. so. Yeah, pretty damn cool. I, I hope that we never see a reboot movie wise because I don't know how it could be done unless you get even, Mads Mickelson to do it. I don't think anybody or... would have the goal to do yeah. it. Yeah, like, like this it. is fun. I I love this Hannibal show. It's such a great like like uh, homage. It does it in such mm -hmm. a certain way that still keeps the 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 credibility and everything of the movies. It's not trying to. You know, reinvent the wheel. And again, they say that there could people are still fighting for a fourth season somewhere. They said even the show, the show. Like runner, I said, you, you know, know what? There's still time. They can do it. You know, they're yeah. they're still at a good age. Yeah, they, that they can do it. So totally, man. And I think fans want it. They're the fans. Like I said, they call them the fanables. They're fan so abuse. rabid. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? So that's funny. I mean, that would be awesome or whatever. You know what I mean? Like again, I don't think that Anthony Hopkins will ever do it again. I think he said he was done. Right? He, was, he, would, he, never, has to be. he would never be Hannibal again. Be. It's yeah. pretty so up there already. Yeah. Yeah. Be doing anything yeah. really? You're speaking of all the Thor well, talk, he just, he's Odin. Well, he so. just, yeah, he just Ooh, won an him. award last year or this year at the Oscars. So. Yeah. It's like a yeah. two or three. He was fantastic in that Two Popes. Did you watch that? No, I didn't. Oh, that's a great I movie. The Jeremy Irons one? Uh, no, no. This is him and uh, I. All I know him as is the High Scepter from uh, from Game of Thrones. Oh, Game of Thrones. oh uh, thank you. From Tomorrow Never Dies, Jonathan Price. Yes, Jonathan Price. Yeah, yes. okay, okay, yeah, okay, that's okay, right. Okay. Yeah, and that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're great. Both as the okay, you know, the, okay. the two popes. It's a fantastic okay. movie. Really, really wonderful movie. I love it. I okay, watch it again. Cool. Um, but. Uh, yeah, guys, um, I highly suggest if you haven't watched any of the Hannibal movies to watch them for sure, especially Silence of the Lambs. If you have time, read the books. They're fantastic. And, and if like you said, check out Manhunter. Manhunter yeah. is a really good addition to the I'm franchise. I'm excited to watch that. Yeah. You know, even the stuff, guys, that I didn't like as much as, like, Double A likes Manhunter or Untamable Amy likes Hannibal Rising, I still like both of those. Yeah. I would go home and watch those. I would buy a yeah. copy of those. I mean... I have no problem with either one of those. They're still fantastic. They're better than a lot of the other shit. It's only in comparison. And this is what right. makes this such a great character in franchise, right? Only in comparison to itself mm -hmm. is it. it's just trying to top itself. Like, it's that good. Yeah, know? like for me, Manhunter is easily the number two for me. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. Uh, that's a strong, strong statement yeah. for sure. For and sure. I know it's not part of the, you know, the whole... Yeah. Hopkins franchise, but that's my number two easily. No, 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 by all means. It would almost be like me saying, like, if I could put the series in there somewhere, like, you know, amongst those, like, it probably would We're be pretty that, high up there. Maybe, maybe. I mean, you know, again, I'm not fully done with my, my rewatch. I mean, but as far as I got, I was like, man, this is such a juicy, juicy show. Like I said, that's like it's like you can, you can just feast. do more in the show. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like that's what we love about the Marvel shows. Because you have more you time. Can, yeah, you can actually develop these characters, now, right? You know, so yeah, we, we've learned that for sure. Yeah. Mandalorian, I think, is one that kind of really started that off. And there's a character we didn't even know, but we're like, man, this can only really be done this way now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's so much yeah. to expect. But um, anything else, guys? Any final thoughts before we get out of here? No, I just want to say thank you guys again for having me on. It's always a pleasure, and it really is an honor. I love doing this with you guys. Um, it's so awesome, especially when I'm... <clears throat>
uh, well versed in something that I know about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. But uh, this is really oh, awesome. Shit, you guys to do. educated me too. So. <laughs> hey, man. This is really awesome to do this because, as uh, CM knows, this is something that I really, really love. Uh, you know, the whole Hannibal series. And I look forward to reading the books and watching Manhunter. <laughs> and this is a great cover. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. so sophisticated. Yeah, I mean, that says it all right there. Let me tell you guys, the only reason why that's wrapped up and not out of the package for me is because I think I have them, I have the digital copies yeah, already on my voodoo that's account. how much he loves these here yeah <laughs> and when it was on netflix i was like i'll have to right just on. open it and watch it <laughs> that's only in case the internet fails then we go to the dvd we got yeah, to you know, go to that version whatever but uh before we get out of here guys uh so that was all uh double your final thoughts oh, it's just a cool character that was created in books you know in the 80s it looks like from what i read from your your hard covers Mm -hmm. You know, it's a cool character. I like it. So. Yeah, I believe Red Dragon came out in '81, so the yeah, very early. Hannibal's yeah. as old as I am. Yeah. And I mean, the character wise. How old are you, about sixty? What makes you wonder what the character's age is in the books? If his his it young is, right? life was at the end of it World War II. It makes you think II. of the mind of the writer. Yeah. So what's going on and, there? And you know, you don't. You, you can look for stuff about Thomas Harris. You don't find a lot and of hey, stuff. Hey, you know what? Thanks for Michael Mann too. So yeah, we're introducing us to this totally, world. Totally, man. You know, totally. That they took a, they were like, you know what, man, we're going to do very good, but let's see what we can do with Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And exam that is the movie that kicked it off. That's the first on-screen appearance yeah. of, you know, even though it's Lector with the with the. But I mean, it's Jack you know, and, yeah, you know, exactly. and yeah, exactly. Yeah, Chilton comes out. You yeah, know, so. and take nothing away from that movie. Because that movie is still fantastic. Like I said, it's Michael Mann. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Who, whom we love. <laughs> um, you know, for myself, I mean, I can't just nothing but reiterate the thoughts of these two here. And just clearly, uh, I mean, I own three Hannibal Lecter shirts or whatever. One doesn't fit anymore or whatever because I've had it so Who's long. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, there you go. You know, like I said, uh, Anthony Hopkins, Mads Mikkelsen, um, and even the, the young man you said, Gaspard? Gaspard? I'm not sure. But the young man in Hannibal Rising. Hannibal Rising. Rising. Also a great, also a great <laughs> job. A, a movie that I think you can watch and, again, you can approach it and just be like, oh, this is fine. This is a great movie. So, uh, But before we get out of here, guys, I think that it just deserves us to take off our headphones and, and do a little something oh <laughs> for, the, for the fans here. Uh, guys, before we go, we like to always say two things. We're just going to put this one up uh, in the face because... We like to say really to though. you to uh, <laughs> make sure that you uh, can you hear me? See, can you still hear me here? Mm -hmm. There you go, like that. You got to make sure, guys, that you seize the day, like Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter did. <laughs> when he saw something he wanted, <laughs> believe me, he got it, and he seized the day. <laughs> uh, he seasoned the day. <laughs> he definitely did that. And the other thing is, is that. Uh, you got to do like Captain America says and do whatever it takes. Uh, and certainly Hannibal Lecter had no problem doing whatever it takes, uh, including taking people's lungs, livers, yeah. whatever it was from their body and making them into a fine, delicious dish. So, guys, for myself, CM Chuck. Uh, uh, that's me. I'm Amy. <laughs> Double A. The Untamable Amy. This has been another episode <laughs> of Just Another Fire Night. And we want to remind you to go out and get yourself some delicious uh, liver fava beans yeah. and a nice Chianti. Everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, guys.